this morning. I thought it was arranged that the meeting started at eight. Yeah, that's a blow up. Oh, where do you think it's on? Not a blow up. I was in my bedroom. Just the hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I, know. Know. I don't know what the point of a blow up one is. Yeah. Curly and I was a little Yeah. That's the thing I've told Tanya. I've never been able to see her because I'm like, he's always you had red, red hair. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. All right, it's nine fifteen. We're gonna get started. <laughs> the city council priorities and strategies. Strategies, goals, workshop meeting, Tuesday, June 27, 2023 at 9.15 a.m. shall begin. Are there any citizen comments and reports, Fran? Yes. Okay. We'll move on to item three, reports and general information. General financial overview, finance director Darla. Darla. Here's my Five minutes. exciting report always about the structure of your budget. So um, I know it's a review for a lot of you, but the budget is set up in um, the city finances are set up in funds. So each bond kind of works independently as its own entity, if you will. So the general fund is where you have your main source of revenue or property tax, franchise tax, sales tax, golf cart permits, building permits. And that takes care of all of our health, safety, welfare type and library, parks and rec. A lot of the parks and rec, some is RDC and finance, all of your um, general services for the government. Hotel motel fund, 7% of hotel motel tax is collected on every room night for under 30 days. And 3.25% of that tax is given to the chamber um, each year for sales and marketing efforts. And then the rest of that money is divided into hotel motel special, which also gets 3.25%. And then the facility fund gets a half a percent. And the facility fund goes to take care of mainly the civic center and community center operations, maintenance, et cetera. Um, the beach fund gets its money from 2% of the state's hotel motel tax back to us to clean and maintain the beach. Um, we also sell beach parking permits, and that fund supports all of your lifeguard operations, which we've really um, ramped up this year. We have more guards than we've ever had. So I will be coming to you with the budget amendment for this year's budget because we did not know we were going to be able to hire that many. So it's been a great effort this year by that department. Um, also, our beach parking code enforcement is paid out of here and all of our Beach maintenance crew, Doug's crew out there on the beach is supported from this fund. And then we do take and we track all of the hours the police, EMS, fire spent on the beach. And we take the money from the beach fund, reimburse the general fund for those hours, personnel and equipment. Um, nature preserve, just what it says, it's used for construction and operations of the nature preserve. And it has no revenue source. So its funding is either from grant revenues or Hotel Motel Special takes care of its operations. We transfer that money in. Debt service, I have a listing here of all the debt issues that we have, we have outstanding. Um, some of them, the first little set there, listing of debt on tax rate, all of that debt will be taken into account when we calculate our tax rate which will be broken down in two portions. And then we have other sources for debt. The 11th Street bond that was issued in 2012 is paid for by impact fees on one. Of course, the Marina Harvey bond is paid for by Marina. And we've also gotten reimbursed FEMA funds to repay that debt. And we will be calling that when eligible. I think it's 28, 10 years, 2028. And then Beach Access Road B, we issued that debt last year. 
waiting to construct that fund and it's paid for the impact fees from zone two. Construction fund, just said it says, the money's sitting there from the bond issues, it's used for street and drainage projects. Street maintenance fund, we have some monies that we've put aside from the general fund to help us with small um, road projects and possibly if we can build it up bigger for some future larger projects where we would not have to issue debt. Court technology, court security required um, to be kept separate. $4 from each ticket can go towards technology uses for court. $3 can be used for security, such as cameras, bailiffs, et cetera. Airport fund, just as it says, supports the airport, harbor, gas, and sanitation. Those are all things that are kept separate because they are what we call enterprise funds and they can make their own money. Impact fees zone one and two are collected on building permits and for the uses that I stated to pay off those bonds. Park dedication fees, we charge a fee for each new dwelling unit that can be used for park projects. RDC gets a half cent sales tax kept separate, supports all of your park operations, the pool, and et cetera. The CARES Act, COVID-19, that's where we have our money from the CARES Act, which is about gone now because we have purchased the um, ventilators, the ambulance that we just got. We've got another ambulance on order. And as a matter of fact, it won't even cover that whole ambulance. Hurricane recovery fund. That's where we are tracking all of our hurricane recovery projects. So that is how your budget will be broken out. Anybody has any questions on any of that? And then the next page talks about the fund balances in these individual funds that we're starting the year with. Um, the general fund, we try to keep six months of operations. We are well over that with 226 days of operations, sitting in an estimated balance of 14 million at the end of the year. That 14 million does not include our CDL that has now been forgiven. It needs to be put in that. So when we put that in there, we're, we're sitting more around 18 million. So court technology and security, you can go on down the list to see what, um, what the balances are to start the year is the far right column. And the construction fund, um, I have down 10 million, but I failed to add in the new bond that we just issued for 6 million. We've received those funds, so we're actually sitting at about 16.9 million in that. Then tax rate. So one of your biggest things that we'll be doing this time of year is setting the tax rate. Um, of course, y'all know everybody's gotten their preliminary values. Um, have no idea. I know there were many, many, many protests. So I have no idea where, I don't think it's gonna be close to where the preliminary estimate was we got from the appraisal district, but it went up about a billion. It was 4.8 last year and it went up to about 4.7 this year. I don't anticipate the certified role will come in that high because I heard a lot of people were successful with their protest. Um, but then your tax rate that you're going to set um, is going to be in two portions. You have the interest in seeking to go towards those bonds that I listed on the page before. And then you have MO, which is your maintenance and operations. And that's the part that's going to go in the general fund to support your operations of the city. Um, there is a tax rate called the no new revenue tax rate. That rate will give you the same amount of revenue that you collected in tax in this fiscal year, plus new construction. So any of the construction that's new, that has been brought on to the city, that increases demands for services. So the state allows you to increase your tax revenue to cover those demands. Um, the voter approval tax rate is three and a half percent greater than that rate. That is the maximum you can increase your rate to if you go one one millionth of a penny over that. There is a mandatory election and you actually even have to know that. I think August 26th and we're not, we're not going to do that, <laughs> period. And uh, unused increment rate really is never going to apply to us. So as I mentioned, there's two parts of the tax rate. Our current tax rate is sitting is at 22 cents with 15 cents for operations and seven cents for the bond payments. And 
we're going to drop, it'll go down. Last year, we were at 27. We would have dropped to 18 without the um, debt needs that we had for these new facilities. So I anticipate we'll be 18 or lower, probably lower. But we won't know that till 1st of August. Last year, I looked. Um, I didn't get the things I needed to compute the rate till August 2nd, even though they have to certify July 25th. So I'm glad we did push that that um, budget workshop back a little bit. The next graph shows you the tax dollars that are spent by a Puerto Rico citizen. We're at a dollar fifty four per hundred. And of that, the city gets 16% of that dollar fifty four. Nueces County gets 18%. Farm to market road is pretty minimal, but it's 0.22%. Hospital district gets 6% and the school district is at 58%. So the county actually gets more Puerto Rico citizens tax dollars than the city of Puerto Rico does. As an FYI. Because um, of all their services. Yes, because of all the services. The next, um, the next graph just shows you the tax rates in the coastal bend area percentage gets statewide but as you can tell we're even lower than Fulton which is not a city that I think has really very many services so we are by far the lowest in the area and I dare say one of the lowest in the state so, um the next article I enclose the whole article of what cities need to know to administer the hotel motel tax I'm really probably not planning on going into this because I know we have some meetings this week um, on hotel tax. And um, this has not been updated for the last legislative session. If there were any changes, this was done. It's only written every two years. So it is the same as what you had last year. And um, I think I briefly mentioned it, but our 7% revenue on the very last page, which is um, page 66, talks about the disposition of revenue. The 7% is broken down with 3.25% to the chamber, 3.25 to hotel motel special, and a half a percent to the facility fund. And in the paragraph above, um, 2B, there tells you what we really spend the hotel motel special on. Um, Parks, civic center, civic center buildings, auditoriums, exhibition halls, coliseums, marinas, cruise ship terminal facilities, hotel, motels, parking facilities, golf courses, trolley or trolley transportation system, and other facilities may be considered advisable in connections with these facilities that serve the purpose of attracting visitors and tourists to the municipality. So that is kind of an overview of how everything is structured. You have any questions or want to talk about anything else? I think questions for Darla. It's okay to ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hearing none. Thank you, Darla. Excellent job as always. And we'll move on to item four, which is an overview update on hurricane rebuild and recovery projects. And yeah, just to let you know that in your binder, it's kind of small. So we put an eight and a half by 14 in your place. It's the same sheet, just easier to read. <laughs> Good morning. Well, not a lot to address. Basically, we had the council meeting about two Thursdays ago. Uh, we you guys an update on where we stand on the projects. Uh, there's only a few of the big ones that hang out there still. The sheet you have in front of you captures all of the costs. To date, you're about $103 million obligated. That's for all the projects. And that, that's not received dollars. That's money that FEMA has allocated and obligated for the recovery. Uh, there's a few, few projects remaining that need to be obligated, only about five. Uh, we work in those. One of them, of course, is the fire station. The other one is the Another big one is the public works facility and the nature preserve. And you, you know, I'm sure you're all aware of what's going on out on the uh, continuing work on the Harbor Master building, which is not FEMA related. It's an EDA economic development administration project. 
Um, so that, again, there's, there's just a few hanging chairs out there, big dollar items. That's really it. The, the sheet in front of you captures all the costs associated with the projects. That's about it, really not a whole lot more to, to state on, with, on the state of the recovery. It's going real well. We're real happy with the way it's turned out. We've had some good wins. We expect to get another one on the fire station soon. Um, that's about it. Any questions? The fire station, what are the new FEMA discussion or mediation dates? Trial? We don't have a we don't have a date yet. I'm still so working on it. Won't know anything before yeah. we finally Correct. finalize the budget, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's gonna. Oh no, no, we'll know. We, we should know. Well, we expect we, to get a date we, we, any we, time now. Yeah, we could find out that number in August. Okay, that's right. what I was yes, wondering. Yes, like, we if could. the new dates were going to be in, in time. To, yeah. They could have 30 days once they go to mediation, I believe. Yeah. But, they, you know, we didn't need it last time. Yeah. If we're lucky and we get the same, same outcome for the public safety building, they'll roll over before we actually have the meeting. Yeah. I mean, that's best case scenario. Yeah, that's best yeah. case. So, got to think as cross that that'll be the case. Cool. Anything else? Any other questions for the team? Thanks. So. Congratulations on the LSU win yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Item five, fiscal year 2023-2024 budget funding requests from outside agencies. Item C, so the discussion on hotel motel tax support for um, some various Members of our community, the Port Rains Arts Center, Port Rains Preservation Historical Association, and Port Rains Community Theater. I'm assuming it looks like all three of those groups are here in the audience. All right, so we will give you um, some time to come up and give some presentations. So who would like to go first? Please come up, state your name. Um, and we're, I know you haven't seen our agenda, but it goes real long and real deep. So we're going to limit your presentation to five minutes, please. Good morning. My name is Gary Cosmos. I am the vice president of the board of directors for the uh, Art Center here in Port Aransas. And um, we presented last uh, week, the 23rd, a letter to the city of Port Aransas. I'm hoping everyone has a copy and has a chance to, to look over that. Um, I think the most impressive thing for the Art Center is twofold. Number one, we have outgrown the facility that we built five years ago, which is kind of an amazing thing to, if you stop and think about it. The reason we've outgrown that is uh, in a large part due to the increased um, campaign that we have for marketing uh, that has come a lot from the grant monies from the city. Um, our visitorship for last year was almost 11,000 people walking through the door of the art center, which is an amazing number when you stop and think about it. Our numbers for this year are up over 53% above that, and we're only in June. So um, I don't know how aware you are of what our imminent plans are, but we've already started the first phase of our expansion of the facility. And we hope to continue with our marketing campaign that we much expanded for this year into next year to uh, help facilitate that. We are waiting on renderings right now from our architects so we can start and kick off our major fundraising campaign to um, add over 5,000 square feet to the facility that we are in now. Um, along with the information that was with that letter, it shows what our hopeful uh, allocations are for our funding for next year. Uh, we're looking to increase across the board all of our advertising. Uh, we are currently teaching over 250 classes a year at the Art Center, which I think is a phenomenal number. As part of our expansion, uh, we hope to uh, continue to increase that and reach a much broader audience. Part of the new facility is going to entail things that we do not have the ability to present to, to the public right now. And um, we feel like the uh, hot tax funds can be a very, very big part of helping us attain some of those expansion goals. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Does the Preservation and Historical Society want to come next?
Morning. Well, good morning. Good morning. Liv Strain and Ashley Harris, our Chief Operating Officer. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your past support and including us in the conversation for this year's budget. And, uh, you know, this year we're kind of focusing on our general operating budget. And I'm going to let Ashley give you the numbers in a second. But I thought we've uh, kind of we've been focusing on building our up our building fund for the last couple of years. And, and we've got a healthy fund. And after some some slowdowns due to permit issues and dealing with FEMA, closing out with FEMA, we're really, you know, in the final stages of, of the final design and, and seeking hopefully in the, this month a, a, a building uh, a uh, request for bids for finish. Yeah, request for bids and hope to get open by January 1st. Um, we have done a few new things this year. We added a Farley Boatworks manager, and he has designed and started several new programs for summer programs for kids that are visiting to uh, do uh, build different types of builds. Uh, we plan this year also to continue to expand our Wind Boat Festival on a Fort Ramsey space. Uh, to increase the tourism in the fall, in the fall. and uh, but we really believe we've become an integral part of the tourist experience. And rather than just give you just total numbers, although I will mention that when uh, last month alone we had four thousand six hundred and three profile views, uh, twenty one hundred and seventy two searches uh, for the museum. Out of those, most of them were looking. Uh, Eight hundred and ninety eight were looking for attractions. 167 were looking specifically for museums, and then 162 were looking for things to do. And, and we're noticing that people are starting to use these lists and searches more as during these hot days. Last week we had over 52 on Friday, which is typically one of our slow days, and it was during the heat of the day. But we are in the top 10 by TripAdvisor. We are uh, solo trips, 18 fun things to do in Port Aransas. Uh, totally Texas travel, 24 awesome things to do in Port Aransas, 26 uh, best and fun things to do in Port Aransas by busy tourists, uh, Planet Wave, 15 top rated things to do in Port Aransas, and Hotel.com, uh, 10 best things to do in Port Aransas. And we're number one in vacation ideas of top 10 things to do today. So, you know, tourists are, are definitely considering us to be part of their vacation visit and and, uh, and they do so in searches before they even plan their trip. So we really feel that that's not really even a measurable part of how we affect tourism, but we do know that, and especially with these hot days, that, that we've become increasingly important to the tourist experience. Um, I think, that, and also uh, I mentioned, you know, that I th we think that we've seen an increase in visitation due to the heat, and uh, at, at this point, I think I'm going to turn it over to Ashley to give you the more of the specific numbers. Okay, so I don't want to just keep y'all going here, but the what cities need to know to administer municipal, I think y'all have seen that. We're number five in that, so I want to reread that. Um, as far as our funds, like the 300000 that we received last year, we have, um, and our expenditures for our building, we paid out $686,792. Um, that has gotten us to where we are right now. So the 300,000 went towards that. Um, the remainder balance we have kept paid. We have um, a Ed Rochelle Foundation, 500,000 that we are allowed to tap into and we have to keep a balance on that. So we have about 20,000 that we owe them. That'll be paid in November. And then we'll make another draw to go towards the finish out. Um, we also have 400,000 in savings to go towards the building in addition to those. Um, our operational costs have been a little bit more difficult this year because we didn't have any funds from HOT to go towards that last year because it all went towards building. And then we also had a lot of our donors that strictly wanted to donate just towards the building. So our goal this past year was 217,000 for operational and we're short about 130,000 with added insurance costs that brings us to 147,323. So that's kind of what our operational is short at the time. Um, and I can send any of these reports to y'all if you want. We still are holding all of our events. We're doing our golf tournament, Puerto Rican's Days, Tarpon Run, the Gala. Um, we've got chapel tours through the um, Aline Carter. They allow us to do the chapel tours. So we do get donations from that. Um, it's minimal, but at least we, we can take the public and show them the facility. And I think that's really important. Um, we still have Starfish Recovery, which is the 1967 boat. 
Uh, the schooner still has some recovery. We've kind of put it on hold until we get the business uh, building finished and then we'll go back. Okay, sorry. Do you have, can you email us something? I email you so, something. Okay, yeah. what, whatever you had if, in a written form, if you could email Numbers. us. Yeah. yeah. And what, what, what was their ask? ask? What yeah, was the, what is your ask? Do you have one? Yeah, sorry. This is the 147 number? Yes. 147-323-61. Thank you. Okay, and I kind of have a separate item for consideration for the, the council that's not really part of the nonprofit, but something that we certainly both the council and I are, and, and the, the Porter Ranch Preservation Association uh, deal with, and that's preservation issues. We do have Scott Jostler coming to talk to our organization before it comes to you. Uh, to talk about preservation spending using hotel occupancy tax. And we really can't give you any particular numbers, but we'd like to consider to think about having some money set aside from hotel occupancy tax for preservation issues. We've been spending a lot of man hours, a lot of time and effort. And so with some people on, on the council, and, and we really feel like the ambiance of, of Old Town is part of the reasons why some people, not everybody, but some people come here and, and we feel it's it's important to preserve it. And, and that is, there are provisions, specific provisions for that in the hotel occupancy tax uh, tax laws and rules. So, uh, and but we don't really have a number because we haven't met with Scott to really kind of investigate that a little bit further. Uh, but I think after this coming week, or this actually this week, we should have be able to be available. And we feel for, like it would be a separate, it wouldn't have anything to do with us, but right. it would be a separate fund that y'all could set up that could be utilized by, you know, a building that was going to be torn down or something. Yeah, we, you know, kind of like, we feel Other like. Other cities have done that and it seems to work. So. Yeah, we don't want to set aside for us. We want it set aside for y'all for preservation issues. And we feel like if you don't budget it in, then we'll be caught like like we have. You know, with like say Liberty Hall, you know, we're, we have some really good options for Liberty Hall, you know, that hopefully will will come about. But sometimes I think it's going to take money. Like you know, with one of the issues is storing a building till something's done with it, or having a place to move the building staging to, it somewhere. staging or the cost of moving. Those are the kind of things we want you guys to consider. It's it's included. It's it's an important part of of a whole community that has a very rich history like ours. And, and as a separate line on, just would like to consider in your discussions for budget to, to set some money aside specifically for preservation. Okay. Maybe we can, after today, after those meetings, yeah. set up a separate time to kind of hear out what okay. you're proposing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think the theater is next. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. I apologize. Okay. No one takes away from the camera. Who's running the shop? The office. Okay. <laughs> All 52 of them. Oh. <laughs> well, we are uh, we're honored to be part of the trilogy here, the museum and uh, with uh, Boatworks, it's just, it's great to have so many opportunities for our visitors. Port Aransas Community Theater, uh, make it short and sweet. Uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, and we have done so many things this year. We estimate right now that to date, we've had between 11 and 12,000 visitors to the theater. And that includes our Winter Texans, that includes the performances, the live concerts, on and on and on. I don't know if you've driven by lately and noticed the new slab that's been poured out by the trailers, but we are getting ready to complete our golf cart drive-in. Um, that'll be in the parking lot uh, and in between the theater and the cemetery. And the screen will be uh, put up there and that'll be up hopefully um, by the end of summer. Um, but uh, we're ready to announce our uh, season for next year. Gonna marquee titles, Mama Mia, Still Magnolias, The Adams Family Musical, 
um, and starting the year off with the play that goes wrong, which uh, right now just opened up a sister show on Broadway, Peter Pan Goes Wrong. <laughs> so we have, that's our four main shows bringing to the stage. We're going to supplement that with more live concerts. We're finishing off our concert series this year with Queen Legacy. Um, and every one of our concerts has sold out. Uh, we're on, if you go to any of the trip advisors, any of those sites were listed. And we're, we couldn't be prouder of what we've been able to accomplish this year with your partnership, with the hot tax funding, being able to market and put our, our being out there so that when people are preparing to come to town, they're able to search. They're able to see what we're doing and purchase their tickets. And uh, we just hope that you'll continue to offer your support just as you have in the past. Do you have a number, Ken? Uh, the same as last year, the 100,000. Does anybody have any questions for Ken or the theater? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very you know good. where to find me if you need me. <laughs> I like Thank seeing you. all the activities going on there. It's cool to share. It's not going to change. Good. Thank you so much. Run. All right. Item D presentation from the Port Aransas Tourism Bureau and Chamber of Commerce President and CEO, Brett. All right, thank you all. Five again. minutes, same Actually, thing. Five minutes, five, <laughs> 39 slides, five minutes, we got it. Um, but just really thank you for letting us be a promotion, your promotional partners for the city and really an extension of your staff. Uh, we work with each and every department um, in many different ways throughout You're the year. You're an extension of our staff? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get the pension, but it's all right. I don't see um, <laughs> Kind of our promotional goals, since we are your promotional partners, you know, we've really expanded and now trademark traditions anchor here for Port Aransas as a continuation of generational uh, visitation, as well as new traditions being made each and every day here in Port Aransas. We're diving deeper into our key markets. I'm on slide two already. Um, you want me to do that? Oh, man. We're going to real quick do these. Down okay. Um, you're going to expand uh, into our key markets, which I'll show you in a minute. Conquesting, meaning going out and getting new visitors, all those new Texans that are moving in from other states, welcoming welcoming them to Port Aransas. Driving our website traffic and bookings. So we got a great number to share shortly and salty stories. Uh, the 2.0, the video storytelling series we've done. Uh, promote more. We've always promoted birding and fishing, but more in the shoulder seasons. You know, those are the seasons we can really help promote and extend our tourism seasons throughout the year. Stewardship, you know, our buddy Flynn and the Respect Our Island Home campaign is still kicking off and um, doing well. And we've uh, really boosted our travel rider visits this year, as well as an influencer campaign that we're in the middle of. In fact, one arrives tomorrow on birding. So these are just some examples of our creative refresh for 2023 that we use on digital, we use on display, we use on um, print, you know, we use you know, all sorts of different mediums and focuses. And then, of course, there's our buddy Flynn. Uh, out of home creative, we've done some things in key markets that drive traffic um, in Austin, Dallas um, area as well. Um, culinary campaigns, we love our food here. Uh, we believe it's one of our key destination drivers. Uh, looking at Restaurant Week, Margarita Madness, continuing those. We did special events like the Austin Activation, going up there and at the um, Domain North side for a day and brought the beach to Austin in February. And then also Whooping Crane Fest had another successful year for its 20, I believe, sixth year that we've done. Um, we support Texas Sand Fest directly and give them a lot of um, advertising support and funds to promote their events. And we have a lot of performance. So each quarter, our ad agency, which is Madden Media, comes down and gives a report. This is just an example of the one they did earlier this year for the spring. Uh, so just showing you the... 7 million plus video views, 69 million plus impressions, 782,000 clicks to our website and so forth. You can go through all of those later, but they're each broken down by the different markets in which we're in. Again, that's just for spring. We have summer running right now. Fall kicks off July 15th, believe it or not. Uh, and we'll be pushing a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Salty stories. You've seen all the, the videos, hopefully, but really getting into the personification of Port Aransas, you know, showing this is a real place where people live and work and of course people come to have a great time on vacation we're going to continue all of those things as we go through respect our island home is really kicking off if you've been in iga lately you might have seen our bags for sale at the end of the uh, end caps as well as the 
plushies at a few retail outlets throughout Port Aransas. We've also started twice a week beach cleanups from the pier with our stewardship development specialist. So she's been out there. I think it's Mondays and Thursdays. Is that right, Ronnie? It's not Ronnie who does it, but uh, Cameron in her office does it. 9 a.m. of uh, when we're getting the word out to visitors to come out and participate in that, at least through the summer and fall seasons. Um, these are just examples of our digital. We do support our partners like PACT and, and uh, the Art Center in helping them. We're able to leverage our advertising agency and we've done some great things with them um, independently. And then we did a great economic study that came out just about a month ago, showing that we had the increase in visitation since 2018, more than 1 million visitors coming to Port Aransas. Their uh, spend is more than 372 million, I think, or right around 372 million in direct. Of course, there's indirect and, and other sorts of spins that take place, but just really showing the vibrancy of the visitor economy here in Port Aransas. Signage and wayfinding, you'll be hearing about that later, but we've been helping, we've actually um, led that effort to this point and we're happy to turn it over to the city for implementation and uh, further, um, further studies. Broadband, uh, we did during spring break, a broadband study on Wi-Fi as well as our outside plant audit. So we had a firm come in and really mapped every single terminal we had for broadband connectivity, who are the providers, what they're doing. Also speed tests, a random speed test throughout town as well as the Wi-Fi or the cell signals. So we know where every tower is, we know where everything is, and we know how good or bad it is, which is not great. Um, <laughs> so a couple months ago, you asked me to do a hotel and conference study. That's in the very final phases right now. And we're just about ready to turn that back over to you within the next probably a few weeks uh, that shows you know kind of the feasibility of, of a, a conference center redoing our civic center and, and maybe a hotel attached to that. So that'll be coming in. We were just a couple of weeks ago in the largest um, international trade show in the world, came to our front door at San Antonio, and we partnered with Travel Texas, as well as the rest of the Texas destinations to do a magnificent event. Uh, we brought back 20 or so uh, visitors from that show and gave them a fam tour here. It's great. Uh, Wendy had lunch with us. I think we went on the Red Dragon. We went on Beach Bonfire, and we only had them for a day and a half, but it was great. This is our booth we had there. And then our performance, looking at what we did, you know, these are the heat maps of where our visitors are coming from, looking at it through the lens of a short-term rental um, bookings and majority of our short-term rentals subscribe to this as well as Airbnb and Verbo. Moment quick. So good news, <laughs> revenue up 10.54% over the past 12 months as of yesterday, uh, as well as guest nights. So when you look at Porta guest nights up 3.11%, you can see slight dips in April and I think it might've been December. Um, so. Other than that, our website traffic already this year. Last year was 1.1 for the entire calendar year. This year already we're 1.03. So we're going to smash last year's records tremendously in unique visitors to our website. So continuing to push all that. All right. Um, so 2024, looking forward. Um, we want to expand our promotional goals, uh, kind of look and help the city establish a EDC in partnership with our organization, support that wayfinding, visitor experience, broadband development sales service sustainability beautification, all of your comprehensive plan goals, and to con consistently monitor and shift. One quick story on that monitor and shift. We noticed summer was slumping a little bit, a lot of late bookings. So we had to push additional um, funds into advertising to get our summer back. And for the first time as of last week, July is now pacing a little bit higher. We were lower um, up until last week for our July forecast. Same way with June is actually going to be a, a tremendous June, but we are looking in the fall. We see some drops in August and September um, compared to where we were in the past, but we just have to do more to continue to fill those beds, seats, and beach bombs. So that's all I got. Keep us funded where we're at, and we are happy. Thank you, Brett. Anybody Thanks, have sir. questions for Brett? That's okay, stick around. Okay, so we have questions. Around. All right, so we'll move into our capital priority by city council, which is item six, and we'll start with item E, discussion on the citywide wayfinding signage funding, which is comprehensive plan goal LHC4A. Want to come up and talk wayfinding? Yeah, see, I said, stick around. Yeah. So um, I think all of you have maybe through the months and through the years we've been doing this met with RSM, out of Dallas who helped us kind of put together this plan. 
In addition, they've got a bid ready, you know, so all the different elements of our plan are now to <laughs> a point of bid ready to go out for RF, is it Q or P or D? RFQ, RFP. <laughs> yeah, so they are ready to, to go out and ready for funding from the city. Um, we did some cost estimates of the variation of signs from three different vendors um, based as a part of the work from RSM, and it ranged anywhere from yeah, 1.9 to 2.6 million, roughly. Uh, so I think that's kind of a ballpark of where it was probably six months ago. Yeah. And then we are, you know, what questions? I'm not leading this part. No. Right. Well, I, <laughs> so I mean, I think that's kind yeah, of where we are. Yeah, that's good. Did they ever do any demo signs? I mean, did they ever make some demos? They well, no, it's in it? the, I mean, they're all in the, not not physical makeups, but oh, they're I thought all, they were going to do that at one time. They did one at the um, at the Roberts Point Park, and it was early on um, when we were kind of still doing the public meetings on that. Um, they are going to do like sign color, you know, so that we're still able to change colors. So before we go into full production, right, uh, part of the process will be like, how does this blue really, you know, stand out on 361 and, and is it the right yeah. shade or do we need to tilt those shades at all? So at this point, it's going to be variations of type, style, and color um, and or a graphic within it. Um, but the actual materials, I think, and all of that would be the same. Uh, we'd be able to tweak those um, uh, color elements per the wishes of the city and recommendations of the firm. So the process, obviously, is we need to get it out to RFP so we can get yeah. our bids back and see what the realistic numbers are. Um, and then, uh, you know, from that point, we can determine. Yeah, and what we can do is what, when we put out the RFP, I think what we'll do is is try to break it into like three categories, you know, like the big entry size. So you guys will have a menu to pick from. So depending on where that number comes in, you guys could say, hey, let's do group one and two let's push group three to next year. So you guys will, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll package the RFP so that it's not just one, just big lump. We'll try to, you know, it's going to take a while to implement yeah. all the things yeah. anyway, but you, you will have some GLO work to get through there. Yeah. And yeah. Some also um, property, um, you know, negotiations yeah. to work on for the big gateway signage with Textot and on the South side as well. Yeah. So I think we've got to really, um, plan for it and there are there's definitely some things we can advance um this year and maybe all of it it all goes together well but it is ready for that stage okay that would be good <clears throat> why well, it's on the budget time to budget anybody have any questions regarding that okay item f is discussion on citywide rebranding come on back <laughs> so in doing all this wayfinding obviously you know there's going to be a lot of new city signage th throughout town and um the chamber obviously did some rebranding a while back the school rebranded if y'all recall it's probably been what 10 years ago maybe or so yeah yeah so I was talking to Brett and, and David, but what I wanted to see, since we're going to be putting up all new signage and kind of starting over, is working on a citywide rebranding as well to be able to establish some continuity um, amongst all of our citywide projects. We're going to have a brand new public safety building. We're going to have a brand new fire and EMS building. We're going to have a brand new Harbor Master building. Um, we have all these wonderful new EMS vehicles and things like that. And so we kind of went out and started, um, Brett helped find a consultant that could start a little bit with that process. So what I would like to see is once we kind of get some examples of that, then we come to city council, obviously a little bit later with some ideas, but to put the money in the budget to do and start that rebranding, because I mean, this is our time, right? We don't want to put old logos or yeah. inconsistent logos on brand new buildings. So, and plus departments, we yeah. we have you know like police has its own uh, logo brand, EMS has their own Parks and Rec. I mean, Maybe we have like sure. gas. We have like Probably six or different seven departments. different brandings just within departments. And and what we're examining are ways to keep the badges you know specific to the departments, sure. but right. also connected to the city, right. as well as leveraging all the work that we're doing with the as your destination marketing organization, so that they all kind of seamlessly work together from a a resident and visitor experience. And I think um, you know, so who we're working for or working with right now is the firm that worked on our brand back in 2020, 2021 as a and kind of taking 
elements of that, which were all taken from your elements of your parks, existing park signage, and some of the other things you were doing as well, um, and blending those color palettes into an extension for the city to use, as well as different type styles that connect all of us really together and are, are really complementary to each other, rather than um, just all over the place. Yeah, so, and I mean, you go to different cities throughout the state and you can, you know, when you see their branding, it really pops. You recognize that that is the city of Fredericksburg branding or the city of Hutto's branding. I'm throwing stuff out there or whatever. Mm -hmm. but San Antonio I mean, does a great yeah, job of yeah. city and tourism yeah. kind of together. And we want that to be on those monument signs yeah, when people money. show up, right? And so it's now it's time to make it all happen kind of at the same time. So... Any thoughts on that discussion? Questions? Again, we'll just be trying to put an estimate in the budget for that, and then we'll obviously work on the selection of what we, you know, what they propose. Yeah, what we've um, scoped out with her right now, and we'll deliver to you, is really, um, you know, your brand book that you can use as elements to build out. Uh, you know, so we will have Canva accounts that Park and Rec can use, or whoever, whatever the department, as well as maybe business cards made up. But that's all. You know, be handed over to you guys to take it and, and really and do finish yeah. off. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Okay. Adam G is a discussion and creation of a marketing or public information officer position for the city. Um, another just idea <laughs> that David and I have kind of been talking about, or, or I know we've all kind of talked about it, but um, creating a position within the city that that person could be. Kind of a communications officer or marketing representative, just that public information point person um, to assist city staff on all things related to the city. Um, and so that was an idea I threw out there. And so I wanted to see what y'all's thought was on that. It does not have to be someone that sits at City Hall every day. It could even be a consulting, you know, firm that does it, um, which obviously means that it could be funded a little bit different than a traditional employee, but. Just having that point person, I think, would be helpful. So, not not for tourism, but for communication, right, within the no. city, <laughs> not the for city staff, right. for the public, right, the exactly. running of the city. Yep, yep. And the department heads obviously do a great job of reporting to David and and getting a lot of that information out. But it still seems I get comments all the time from people in general that say I don't know where to go to find something. Right. How do I get the information, particularly for like second homeowners that aren't here all the time that can't run to city hall and ask a question? You know, they'll say, well, who do I call? Where do I get that information? And I know that it's on the website, but it would be good to have um, kind of that manned more 24 seven to get it out there, not only for citizens, but for the second homeowners and have a direct relation, obviously, with Brett and his staff on some of the stuff kind of tourism related, but more specific to city, you know, emergency services, um, just day to day questions that, you know, would be good to have out there. Would so, they be responsible for the website? Then? No, ask. no. Okay. I mean, they might they might have. A, a tab on the website but no they wouldn't be they wouldn't be a website administrator we already have that that'd be a position that could be shared with the chamber um i yeah. don't know i hadn't really discussed or offered that up but um i, I'm, I don't know i just yeah, listened to I, what you're what, what I, you're, I didn't create a job duties okay Whole yeah, so yeah, yeah, a lot of people ask me, what do I find this on the website? What do I find this? And you know, you have to go to this department and this and this. But if it was something like Chuck just said, maybe help him do that. They, I mean, I don't envision them being in charge of the website, but it could be no. someone who helps well, like monitor said, the yeah. content. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, David and staff. Right. Does that yeah. make sense? Oh, right. Yes. So, yeah. The content, because if people are having difficulty finding stuff. The choices are, yeah. okay, a phone operator that knows all the answers in the world right. or website print material. I mean, those are your choices and in information mm -hmm. um, and disseminating it and then checking the results. Like, is it performing as we intended it to do? Right. Well, and, and, you know, requests for information when you get it from the media, from the newspapers, or, you know, just 
in general, sometimes it's nice to have that point person um, so that they're not going through every single person at staff or me or a chamber or, you know, again, consistency on the information starting with one person, I think would be helpful. Um, and maybe that person could do, you know, part of this new wayfinding city branding. Maybe they could have a little bit of that experience too and be that person for some of that information. Well, that's a thought. <laughs> That idea. Or they can get correct information and not through Facebook. <laughs> right. That's fun. That's a good idea. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, hmm. have further discussion? Any comments? No from staff? A lot of I mean, <laughs> are we doing budget? Are we assigning a dollar figure to what? where this position would lie in our <clears throat> pay scale since we're working on the budget. No, I think what we some point what staff will do is we'll we'll take the information that we're getting out of this conversation and we'll go out and figure out the hows and whys and a cost association and bring it back to you guys. Because if there are the day-to-day -day questions that are answering and kind of your one-stop know-all, it'd be hard to not have them here. That's true. Mm -hmm. Because it's constant communication with They're staff. gonna be in my office all the time. <laughs> Two so, hours a day. Staff, okay, so right now somewhere all of this information is hitting staff at all different departments. Yeah. Can staff sit there and put back feedback and say, look, this is some offload to this person we want, and let you know, rather than our idea, y'all come up and go, man, here's 10 calls I get or 10 pieces of information. We'd love to put it out so it's useful and doesn't detract from the work, you know, we're trying to do on the city. I think staff input would be great. <clears throat> well, you're going to, you can't eliminate staff. Input. No, no, not eliminate staff, but, you know, somebody calls and wants to know what the number is to 911. You know, you want to be able to help that, with that answer. So, um, but it would be good to get feedback. So staff's like, hey, this is a good idea and we'll support it because if they could do this, 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 not the work, but the information, getting it out to public and people that are asking or whatever they're allowed to give, that would help. And maybe it's some, the role of that person is not specific to these two topics. Maybe you can find some other useful purpose so that it's a <coughs> position that assists. The whole point is trying to provide the information to the public, the people, the citizens, the second homeowners in an effective and efficient way. Maybe it's not a full-time position at City Hall. Maybe it's a different avenue. but. I just think that we've had discussions over and over and over again about an app, about a Facebook page, about hiring somebody, you know, and so there's got to be a way to fix that. There's got to be a way to find a solution so that we can provide that information to people in an effective and efficient manner so that it's not to city council or to trying to call Dave or to trying to call Rick or to try, you know, I mean, that, that that's a lot of people well, trying to come up with figuring out how to. And implemented on their website or something. I mean, I don't know, you know, what kind of questions they're getting, what, you know, what. It's a lot of cities have this yeah. role, like as yeah. a full-time person. And maybe Port Aransas is not ready for one, but I just think there's a way that we've got to figure out how to better disseminate no, information out there. Yeah. So I don't I know what that is, but that's why I put it on. <laughs> I agree. Not trying to make extra work for staff, right? <laughs> trying to make it easier. <laughs> to make it easier, yeah. So we can work through that and discuss it and just see what, okay. see where it falls. Yeah. Okay. All right. Item H is discussion on. I like these words, beautification. That's probably my word. Uh, of city main streets to include lighting, landscaping, 
arts, et cetera. Um, so again, in keeping with some of the comprehensive plan goals that were put out in the comprehensive plan, and really kind of in speaking in turn with some of the ideas, you know, that I guess the Preservation um, Association was talking about was I would like to see the city come up with some budget dollars and initiative for this year to help the main streets throughout the thoroughfare yes. of Port Aransas, right? Yes. And so, and I know we've talked about this for years, but just to try to clean up the streetscapes, you know, focus a little more on beautification, fix some lighting. I mean, can be simple things that don't have to be millions and millions of dollars, but, you know, just some ways to kind of clean up and beautify the city. We have a beautiful city. We do a great job, public works, everybody, parks, everybody, but there's some probably things we can put into the budget to kind of make it new and better. Um, so that that's that item. I don't know what anybody has additional thoughts on that. I, I think you would, I, I think it would be like a two year, your first step is going to be probably hiring a landscape architect to come in and do a study year one. And then he's going to bring something to us in the spring and say, you know, here are your options. And then we would attempt to, you know, come up with a, a menu for you guys. So I, th I think year one, you're looking at, at, you know, like we did for signage, you're looking at a professional coming in and really looking at what we can do to, you know, do all this gateway beautification stuff, whether it's landscaping, uh, you know, new street designs, sidewalks, trash cans, you know, they're going to look at everything. But I think that's what you need to do is go through a landscape architect. The new park would be a plus. <laughs> What's that? The new park would be yep. a plus. Lighting, trash cans, something along there. Yeah, I mean, Oops. obviously you want to incorporate all that in there, but it, 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 again, in conjunction with some of this new signage and stuff like that, I mean, you, you don't want beautiful new signs and then 40-year-old streetlights on poles that are leaning and about to fall over because <laughs> they never got put back up. From the party. And that's not necessarily yeah. the city's fault. No. I'm just saying... So I think that if we look at the major thoroughfares, you know, Cotter coming in off the ferry, going down through Alistair to G, you know, cutoff road. I mean, kind of the main right arterial, you know, roads and streets, we can do a lot. I mean, we, you know, Christmas time, we put a lot into money in the budgets over the last couple of years to put up Christmas lights. And that looks really nice. And we get lots of compliments about that. But just things like that to kind of improve the streetscape and, and make it look a little a little nicer. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. What about uh, restriping all the streets, the main streets? That's coming up. And making larger, brighter crosswalks that are more uh, accessible. Mm -hmm. um, maybe even putting uh, something that says no golf carts going toward the highway. We can put things on the street, big arrows, stuff like that, other than just striping. But people are driving and you've got all that chaos up there. Uh, it's pretty nice when you're driving along and you see things on the street and you read them as you go and it it directs you. Plus, it gives it a little color and uh, makes it a little more uh, familiar for people that haven't been here. And and more distinct crosswalkings instead of people going every direction. If they've got a big, nice, white, painted crosswalk, cars know automatically, we got a crosswalk here. And, and I think... I think painting and striping the streets, any town you go to and you see that, it just has a clean look to it. Uh, I think we ought to think about doing a little more than just some yellow stripes down the street and make it a little more. Uh, so it's right there by American Bank, it's school kids. Mm -hmm. So there's, so just, just, so the striping is already in the street bond. And then all new crosswalks is in the, is in the signage package. So they're all designed. They're not just white. Some of them are fancy. So they're all in the uh, the wayfinding package. And some of it, I think, does include some stuff specifically about golf carts, which will be good. I, I think that. I think to the beach or just, you know, there's a lot of things when you're driving in an unfamiliar place and people are driving around and it's so chaotic with traffic. Uh, I think we could, we could work on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Those signs that, like I was... I uh, copy waves the other day, getting ready to go over one, uh, 361. There was a golf cart in front of me, and I rolled down my window. I was getting ready to say, you can't get on the highway. And they saw the sign. The girl pointed. 
and then made a U-turn. And so those little signs are really And then drove helping. down the sidewalk? No, they <laughs> no, they didn't go down the sidewalk. <laughs> they went down behind Whataburger. So I was like, okay, good. So when, when did they start on the friends. streets, Dave? <laughs> uh, they're still, still out yeah. serving and still in design. I, I noticed they were on Ross um, two days ago. So they're still cranking it out so those are certain streets that we're doing in the street bonds right yeah there. yeah so but citywide it, there's a citywide striping though. okay yeah okay. that's citywide when would that happen same project okay yeah but it's yeah getting over, hopefully. oh yeah 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 it'll be winter so okay for this item um what you're envisioning as far as budgeting goes <clears throat> would to be able to go out to RFP for a firm to do a study yeah we'd get an rfq yeah we'd rfq it and hire someone to hire Give some it's most likely a landscape architect okay but would, would cover things like lighting landscape architect, yes you know things like yep. that and then to mark's point i mean the street the striping i think is a great plan and that will come we just in conjunction yep, that's the in the street and drainage stuff. and then the wayfinding is doing like kind of fancy smancy crosswalks at um at a lot of the big intersections, but I think in the striping project, we'll also redo all the school ones that are, you know, years ago we were doing using this, um, this glue down, highly reflective, real thick, it's almost like a kind of a super industrial uh, heated glue down and you can pressure wash them really good. It, it's just so much better than the paint. Mm -hmm. And recently we got back to using the paint and we really need to go back to that really good glue down reflective stripes so um yeah there's 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 gonna be a lot of improvements to crosswalks and striping and coming up so it's already budgeted budgeted for this. yeah yeah the striping is okay does anybody have any other thoughts about that question <clears throat> okay Item I discussion on the Jerry McDonald field parking concept along avenue seven. <laughs> All right, so when we did the purchase of the Jerry McDonald Field a couple of years ago, uh, Chuck, you were part of that team back then, but um, we there's a little bit of money left over in that bond, correct, Darla? Yes, in okay. the bond. Um, in the bond. So one of the things that I asked to be put on the agenda was to look at actually taking that parking lot that's currently used primarily by the Island Cafe patrons, um, but others, I mean, you know, um, and going ahead and, and doing a real parking space there. Um, that's really the only designated parking for Jerry McDonald Field. Um, certainly, I'm sure on softball nights, people park everywhere. Um, and then some of them park in the church parking lot. But in light of the church's plan to do a demo and start rebuilding their facility, which I'm Assuming from everything I read in the South Jetty, I, don't, I haven't talked to them. I would imagine that the parking lot that is being utilized is probably all going to go to construction land. So I think it's important for us to get on the agenda and then to get going on proving, improving that surface and making it a real parking area uh, with those leftover funds. So yeah, when it rains, it gets muddy it's a muddy, there. mucky mess it, when yeah, it rains, it which is not very often, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that that's that's important. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if anybody else's thoughts, but be a hundred times a better. Great. Okay. All right. And then any further discussion on that? Okay. Item J: Discussion on signage plan for the city, which includes uh, Highway 361 golf cart signage and speed limit signs. And I know this looks like a tag team agenda item, uh, Councilman Kruger and myself. So. I know there was a recent meeting you guys had with um, TechStock, so maybe that will update some of the 361 golf cart signage information, David. Rick, you want to? Or Rick? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I did meet with TechStock last week. Prior to that, uh, at, at uh, Councilwoman Kruger's request, I reached out to to Mike Walsh, who's who's one of the the senior TechStock uh, representatives in the area about the speed limit issue, Joel, and and and. Uh, you know, just said that there was some interest in, in the, the response we got back was that with the traffic study, he felt, uh, and this is an opinion from, from Mike, mm -hmm. but he felt that the traffic study would probably 
as I feared, would indicate raising the speed limit rather than lowering it between G and 1A, anywhere in that stretch from what we've got <laughs> now. I, uh, yeah, Maybe I'll you be need happy to come to over and the, come out Avenue J every day. <laughs> I'll be happy to forward the email, but but that's typically text dots mentality. They look yeah. at, at the road, what it can carry. They've done all that money on widening uh, the, the the passing lanes down 361. I, like I said, he was he was very confident that the, that if a traffic study was was commissioned, that that it would indicate raising the speed limit. Uh, but that's that's so typical mm -hmm. of text dot in, in that area. So, but good news. So the good news is after probably five years negotiating with, with TxDOT over signage and, and our golf cart issue. Uh, two things came about. I'll preface it all with uh, uh, several months ago, you, uh, the council passed a resolution requesting TxDOT find a solution for the opposing turn lanes and the problems at Waterburger and CVS. Uh, they've got one. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll probably uh, bring it to, the, uh, to one of the meetings, but they've got a solution that, that is going to prevent any, any of those turns in there. Um, it's going to create uh, what they what they've done is it, it's going to create pretty much a, a barrier of uh, much like the intersection. If you guys are familiar with Everhart or Sam's and Best Buy, where they created that raised median for those that use Sam's, you, you can't go in there. It'll be similar to that. They, they won't go to the raised median immediately. They'll use a, a traffic control uh, process. That's a big plastic um, uh and it'll follow the double yellow lane, which technically, legally, you're not supposed to cross anyway. Um, but that'll be their solution. It's gonna, it's gonna require some probably uh, uh, re-education of how to get into CVS and certainly uh, the the alternate entries into Waterburger. But you ask them for it, they've got it. So uh, I'll give you more details. Uh, like I said, probably one of the next council meetings for that. Um, golf carts. So I just continue to to to, to badger them about about needing some type of physical barrier. I mean, we can stencil, we got approval to do that, all sorts of, of, of signage approval to do that, which I'll, I'll touch on in a minute. But the, to me, the biggest problem we had is that once, it, that it was too easy to get on what looks like to be a perfectly sized golf cart path. Mm -hmm. uh, they finally agreed that if that the sidewalks are 10 feet, so if we were to put something right in the middle, and, and David and I call them candlesticks, it's it's actually there's a different term for it, uh, but it's a it's a plastic uh, uh, breakaway flappable about that wide that will be able to put no golf carts um, and put it right on the ramps at every uh, at every entrance onto 361 and any one of our arterials that hit 361. Uh, <clears throat> They'll physically have to run over it uh, to to get access to that sidewalk. If that doesn't do it, I, I besides arm guards that just shoot the tires out, I don't know what else we could possibly do. Yeah. Uh, but that's that was a that was a huge win. They uh, they they really uh, resisted it for the longest time, but they see the problem and they see the safety issue. So, um, like I said, uh, I'm waiting on. They have a representative. Uh, it's sure tight. If you guys have a chance, uh, S H U R E hyphen T I T is the is the company that they use for a lot of these products, uh, these traffic control products. Uh, they've got a representative that they were very fond of, uh, so she's going to get with me uh, here next week. That's something that really uh, is a simple installation, and uh, we could start pretty quickly again, subject to budget. Uh, but I'll get those numbers in the ring else. So that's a big one. Uh, the second part is the golf cart signage. Uh, uh, David actually uh, sat in. So we are going to, uh, I'm waiting on them to send the official uh, specs. It'll be on our nickel again. So it'll be a, a budget item. But what we've been asking for for a lot of years, which is, is golf cart signage up on the mast arms for the traffic lights. And again, we're focusing on Avenue G and, and, uh, and, and cut off uh right there that's the intersection that causes so much of the problem uh so we know that they'll allow us to put signs up on three of the mass arms there's one that we just don't know if it's going to be as, as functional actually the the southbound on uh on alistair uh to that intersection it may be a combination of, of a sign there forward to the islander you know back back from the islander and and a mass arm but on the other ones they've agreed to put them up there they're really big and bold and and, and again um that's that's the plan right now. Uh, 
I think that's their fear when I asked Rick Daly about lowering the speed limit. I think their fear is that it's if it's lower, the golf carts would be on it more, you know, or, what, or we would let them be on it. You know, what, so what they indicate is, that, you know, they've never said that they just they're all about moving cars. I know. And, but and the Dave's, faster we grow, the more they want to move cars. And, and, and I think that's our dilemma is that um, is we get more and more visitors and they're keeping those traffic counts and they know that those cars are coming. They don't want to slow them down out of town. They want to get them. They don't want to move. And if their traffic studies show that the highways will support it, I think that's it's it's that's them it. coming in all the way to G Street at 60, you know, and you can't even make a turn in or out. You sit there for ten minutes. But the speed limit goes down to forty-five. It hits thirty. Oh, I know. They're thirty-five. Sixty. Oh, it goes to thirty-five. It goes forty-five to thirty-five, and they're still flying in here. Yeah, they're still flying. 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 Yeah, but that was the first comment that I kind of got. So anyway, I, that, that's a huge step. Like I said, uh, you know, that, that uh, uh, I don't know that I've even had a chance to talk to, to Chief about uh, about that meeting. It was just late last week. So, um, and it seems pretty positive. Any questions? I, I like the pole things on the sidewalk for sure. Well, I think, I think the signage is <laughs> yes, way overdue. Great. And I think it's great that they were able to finally come to our belief that yes. it's necessary so i think that'll be great and i'm glad that we'll be able to put that in there because I, I do think on the master arms is critical because i do think people sit there and they'll see it you know i mean mm -hmm. our sign our little signs are good but i just think that <coughs> so looking up will be helpful <laughs> anywhere that's appropriate so. okay. i did I, did, I, I drove by yesterday i went into corpus for a core meeting and i drove by all the white things oh yeah <laughs> I think there was maybe five percent of them up. Yeah, oh, and ever harder. They're just laying. No, it. Uh, yeah, it yeah, they're all just laying down, smashed. Tell I mean, give us extra. They rest. haven't been cleaned up. I, I'm just shocked. Yeah, I mean, have you seen the trash on the highway? Good. Yeah. 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 The city was out cleaning this morning when I came in. We do a great job. We we handpick, but yeah. in Corpus oh. they mow their trash. Yes. They did, yeah. and that's the policy of TxDOT is to <laughs> mow your trash because they don't want people. They don't like the large items because the guy might get bit by a snake or a coyote. Meet you. <laughs> no, I was happy. So they so they'll mow a they'll mow a twenty by twenty tarp instead of uh, picking it up. Wow! <laughs> and claim they pick up the pieces, but they don't. I, I mean, the, the, the Corpus the Highway looks horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, that's not a topic. I don't want to give up on these poles on the sidewalk. So we would be the ones installing that. We're buying it. We just had to get approval. Correct. I understand it. Okay. Yeah, because they don't like anything vertical. And so, taking out a bicycle. Can we move on that? You think? Uh, if there's money, I'll. I mean, I'm I'm planning on getting everything set up to move as quickly as you guys can can direct us to. This this won't be a summer wait. Anything else? Because there'll be some installation in the <clears throat> in the sidewalk that allows for replacement of these things. Because they'll like David said, they'll get. Yeah, you just gotta. It's probably four bolts. You probably drill epoxy your base in. And then the thing probably has a locking mechanism and it locks in and that's what's going to be replaceable. Ho hopefully the bases stay. And we'll have some inventory. The The separation for the to, to fix the CVS Whataburger, they'll pay for that. We'll end up being on the hook for the, the candlestick pieces. But uh, but we do got to custom order ours because they're going to be specific. Our little, little they're, they're about six inches wide. They're probably about that tall, but we got to figure out exactly what the verbiage is we want on it, and get them, get them custom printed. Right. But we can start the installation, the sidewalk, the locations, kind of, you know, kind of what we need. And, and you know, somebody. I, I assume you're wanting to move quickly on it. Not, you know, somebody not texted me yesterday. last night that they were coming out I, you know, Avenue I, and that they were just getting up to there, and this golf cart comes off the sidewalk just right in front of me, and they were so upset because they almost. Just creamed them, and it was a whole family of people. Mm -hmm. well, he said that golf cart didn't stop. Thing, it, 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 they, don't, they don't. They don't slow down. Right, they right. they come around one of those arterials right onto the ramp and up on the. Oh, they're, they're yeah, fine. there was a bus on the sidewalk yesterday. And they a big huge RV bus yeah. on the sidewalk. And they find out the faster they go, the more air they can get when they hit the. Yeah, ramp. Yeah, 
I was like, I've seen it Thank all you, now. All <laughs> right. Great tickets being in front of my seat. All right. Okay. We'll move on to item K, discussion on security on all the city facilities. Um, just another comment I had, an, an idea. Um, I, I know we live in a very safe and secure little town, but um, I, we don't we don't really have a lot of security on any of our city facilities, and it could be very basic as just cameras to be able to see what's going on. And so I just think that's important, again, in light of our new buildings, which will probably all have that. But on our existing facilities, City Hall, um, the Civic Center, the Community Center, down at the park, the nature preserves, if we don't have some cameras, I think that's important for us to have um, and just to be able to monitor our city assets. So. Just to, what anybody else's thoughts are about that, but and I don't that doesn't mean people have to sit there and look at the cameras all day, but um, I just think it's important, you know, for us to be able to have. Well, I think not only on our facilities, but in other areas in town, because I know we have a lot of cameras on our businesses, and the police department can ask us, "Hey, did you mm -hmm. can your camera pick this up?" Mm -hmm. So that might be nice. Did we didn't we budget last year <laughs> for two cameras, one on the bridge? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, that, we've got we've got some that are going in for light reflector stuff. Right, right, right. So those are going in head. now, yeah. right? Ones at the bridge, <laughs> or where where are they? I didn't even see Jeff back there. He's behind Daniel. I didn't see him. <laughs> yeah, we've got <clears throat> the proposal we're working on right now is to put five along Highway Three Sixty One. So it'll be at the city limits, um, northbound at the cemetery, northbound at Waterburger, northbound, and then southbound acro across the street from Waterburger by CVS and across the street from the cemetery. Um, to catch the so that we cemetery. budgeted those last year. It was right? a grant. We, we got, we're got working, we working part, grants can off, offset some of it. We have to mo modify the grant a little bit, but we're, we're right in the middle of that project. We're, we're hoping to hit it by the 1st of September. The problem we've run into is uh, the vendors were, have been so, so back ordered, um, and we were originally going to purchase them, but we found an option to lease them, which is going to be going to be much better for, for that project. Okay. But those will be specific to license plate readers. Well, they're, they're, they all have cameras in them, also, though. So for monitoring, right? The cameras, just the, traffic, the, the cameras and other monitor things. Okay. Our those license plates. So, okay. But you'll be able to see the whole vehicle. We'll see the whole vehicle. Okay. But it'll, it'll be the. Yes. Yeah, I think that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have really good in and out of town coverage, yeah. and we can we can expand that in the future if we want to put some on Eleventh Street or down on one of the beaches yeah. or or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I will say later under administration, we have some information on this. Okay. We've done some research. And so, okay. Good. We haven't. I mean, oh. at least Sparky did. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I use we as a loose term. Wow. Well, I did yes. not do that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, item L, discussion on Charlie's Pasture Bulkhead Park Design. Um, so <coughs> this is... <clears throat> I told David to put on the budget and David, this is really his, his idea, but um, you know, we're getting these new bulkheads and redoing obviously everything down you know, near the Charlie's pasture pier and preserve, but these are big areas that are used, utilized by a lot of people for enjoyment, but right now they're kind of a disaster. Yeah. So I wanted to try well, to, they have been, they have, yeah. that, I mean, even in years yeah. past, it's been just a mud bog. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we you know we put in the nature reserve road back in 2008, but everything to the you know to the north of that road is basically basically just stays a sand mud pit, and we really need to parkify it if that's a word. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Beautiful. you know, I th I think it, it's it's a long stretch, so I. I I'm not sure we want to grab it all at once, but I definitely this budget season, because I think the length of this thing is about, it should be about right around 5,000 feet. 
Is that where that picnic table and that one little? Yeah, that was an old Boy Scout project. So, okay. so it, 5, it, it's four thousand. It's four thousand linear feet of of of. Actually, it goes down a little bit past the nature reserve. So it is about it's about five thousand linear feet. Um, past the nature reserve, there are some picnic tables, but it's all beat up and chewed up um, since the hurricane. But everything back from the nature reserve turn off all the way at the end down there all the way back to Charlie's Pasture Pier. It's just, a, it's it's been a mud pit ever since we put the bulkheads in 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we really need to come up with a design. And, and I don't want to eliminate the, the, you know, the great fishing along there. I think <clears throat> you can kind of see in this drawing, we just need to um, come up with a design. And I, and I think, again, this would be a, a two-part process. I think this year, we it's it's a it's a landscape architect and have them go out analyze it and come up with come up with some you know and maybe we do it and you know and break it into phases and you can do chunks at a time over the next years but we we have to start doing yeah. some improvements out there to get the you know to get the driving and everything under control so we're not just in a in a mud bog and we have the opportunity with the bulkhead project finishing up in the next you know, five months to come in directly after that and have a, get a design this, this, this budget, upcoming budget season, get a nice design and bring it back to you guys, Can we you know, at the same time we're doing the study with the other landscaping. Already? Yeah. I mean, you could bundle them or you could, you know, keep them separate, but. So with this new bulkhead, the new bulkhead, these ships coming by, are we getting waves coming over them still splashing over them? Yes. It's even it's topping the yes. I mean, I, just, I haven't seen it. You have video of it. it does. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. the parking would need to go along the road and not the bulkhead. It's not as bad. It, yeah. It it makes a significant difference. I, I promise you. Yeah, but if we put it once but, we once we put in the the rock rip wrap with the Kepper project, yeah, it'll make a big difference. It'll make a huge difference because it'll really right right now. There's nothing stopping the you know the the waves that are coming working their way down the the bulkhead they're just in they're in six to eight feet of water and nothing's breaking them up so once we get the kepra rock revetment out in front of this bulkhead it'll <clears throat> it'll act as a wave attenuator and it'll it'll break up that swell i just don't want to wash somebody off the sidewalk down and wash them off the sidewalk oh. well that's it's what you had before it has yeah, yeah but it was, with multiple it lawsuits wasn't encouraging though yeah you know, what was it because right now it's a sand pit and water oh yeah it was and, and part of the right right but if we build this beautiful place and people are out there walking then they get washed off because of the weight coming over the the bulkhead is pretty high yeah and so if you get right up next to it i mean an average person i mean it's there's also special spots where it's bigger than others. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah it's yeah. It, I mean, if they're gonna get behind it and if they're gonna stand behind and fish over the bulkhead, I mean it's you know what I mean? It's it doesn't come down to their, you know, low waist. So they're not gonna get washed over. I mean, they may get wet still because of the wave, but yeah. it um I don't it won't topple them over as it did before. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah it was very dangerous yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, it'll help. Especially if they put it in the right areas where we have the worst. Yeah, well, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's slated to go the entire length. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we need signs there that say beware of the highway? Um, we used to have, we used to have them up there. Um, are they? Yeah, the, 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 remember the old tsunami so. signs? Yeah. yeah. Your guy will be there. Oh, okay. No, they're gone. Yeah, they're, I think they're gone. gone. I don't. They're I don't all know. gone. Everything's gone. I think we need to on the. On the bulkheading, when we get it done and complete, or maybe even temporary now too, I think we need to have some signage that says "Do not climb over the yes. bulkhead," because I've seen people climb over the yeah. bulkhead yeah. and get to the inside mm -hmm. and try to stand along the wall. Yeah, you know, which is extremely dangerous because when a ship comes, you there's no easy way to get back over the bulkhead. Before, you know, that you could see a ship and you could see this massive tsunami coming, and then people would most of the time be smart and run. Sometimes they well, except we there. had stairs that went down into the water. Right. Yeah. The stairs, the stairs disappear. Yeah. Oh, they're not going. Yeah, back. some parts that where the where the bulkhead is not finished, they can still climb. Oh yeah, stairs, yeah, but yeah. I mean, yeah. We just need to make sure that there's some signage there and tell people yeah. do not climb over yeah. it because 
sometimes they try that. I'd definitely be for making that area look nice. So I'm not yeah. against that at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, item N, discussion on a citywide lighting improvement plan. Again, comprehensive plan goal LHC1. So um, again, just trying to pick out parts of the comprehensive plan that would kind of work in conjunction with others and try to you know make some minor improvements, what would should be major improvements within the city long term. So I would imagine that this item also would require some comprehensive study yeah. to be able to go around and do a lighting assessment. But you can drive down Alistair right now at night and not all the lights are working and there's yeah. different colors and it's just you know, it would be nice to kind yeah, of yeah. I think work this into that other agenda item. Yeah. You can have the same person do the same study. Okay. And some on some buildings are really blinding. Yeah. Yeah, you could work on another review of that. So does anybody have any questions or thoughts on that? Okay. All right. Item in discussion on creating a staff ferry shuttle, <laughs> comprehensive plan goal T F S. Um a lot of our staff is coming over the ferry and it's a park and ride situation. And what um, I have witnessed a lot with them is they walk uh, back to the park and ride every day and every morning and every evening and um, all kinds of weather conditions. Sometimes they're on like a little shuttle. Sometimes they walk. Sometimes someone gives them a ride. But I talked about with David, um, you know, maybe there's even if it's a simple golf cart or something. Um, that we could help with city employees that are coming over and gives them a, you know, gives them a, a ride because they're not having to wait in the ferry. And that would encourage maybe some of the other ones who are driving, um, you know, their cars over to maybe not drive and utilize park and ride. And yeah, just to, we've got to try to find ways to help get people across that ferry. So this might encourage that. So staff maybe come up with a plan for that. I don't know. If Anybody else has any thoughts on that? But so we idea. buy one, or do we have one to get? Okay. Dale could loan us one. No, we don't have any. I mean, but, but if you had a bus, whatever band, whatever yeah, size it is, yeah. and whatever time it leaves, it leaves from here, or it does a pickup route, goes across the ferry, and then it just stays over there. For the next morning as opposed to a route i mean is it 20 people or 25 people what could it encourage to me that would be beneficial well oh, public works ride. comes earlier though they come earlier so you want to catch parks and right yeah. Yeah. about how many oh city employees do we have that come across the ferry we had a lot. Two, what did I say? Two hundred forty-seven employees active on the last roll, and I'd say you're looking at sixty to seventy percent minimum that are mm -hmm. coming across the ferry. City Hall, you're probably at about seventy percent. Just my staff. Yeah, mm -hmm. just staff. Right? We did a study. We did a staff survey. Yeah. About a year ago. Most, I think, that we did at one time and place was like maybe a minivan, seven people. There were so many altering times and locations that not everybody was able because there was yeah, yeah, yeah. The city hall girls walk because it's close enough, mm -hmm. yeah, but That's, but not everybody is this close. Mm -hmm. Very rarely did they not walk, right? And they were all thankful except one did not yesterday, and it was bad in both directions. Yeah, it was really bad yesterday. Yeah. And Lawrence said he would come in 45 minutes early every day to <laughs> shuttle people. He would drive for us. And then you're going to And then leave 45 the late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, like I said, I just wanted and I mean, I think it's great that there's a study, but if there's any that, you know, any any kind of benefit or way to, you know, help, I think that's important because I know that you know, sometimes that's a deterrent to hiring people, it is. you know, because of the ferry. So if there's a, you know, something else that city can provide to say, hey, you know, I know you live in Aransas or Ingleside or Rockport. Yeah. And they get tired of it and want to run away. Gloria has that. <laughs> what did she buy? She, she bought a, a little scooter. sit down scooter. Yeah, she did. That's dangerous. But, yeah. yeah. Where's your little helmet, though? She, she doesn't wear a helmet. Ferry when go up this road and come in the back <laughs> way. <laughs> we might. Yeah. We might. Yeah, we'll we keep working on it. Okay. Just something. Any van for the city. 
Okay, item O, um, discussion on recruiting strategies for an urgent care facility in the city. So I feel like this was in the comprehensive plan somewhere, but I don't see that um, listed on here. But, oh. and we've talked about it for years. Um, you know, I don't know what that is from a budgetary. Oh, there number. it's, yeah, it's TFS 2.D, two, two I'm sorry. Okay, it's okay. Oh, TFS 2.D. Two, two TF is in French. Yeah, TFS. TFS. Two dot D evaluate and demand the demand for medical services and or urgent care center. Well, we have urgent demand for medical services, and our team does an amazing job. <laughs> but I feel like um, it that would be beneficial if, and I understand all the reasons why it makes it difficult um, to have a facility like that. But if there is something that we could do from a city standpoint to encourage someone to open one or have one even for a peak season you know even if it was something during the peak season i think it would be beneficial um citywide so i don't know if you have any thoughts daniel you're looking at me <laughs> right you need it's to recruit to something yeah it definitely would that'd be helpful And if that's an option, I mean, I think that's, you know, that if, if that's a viable option for the city, then I'm I'm on board with that. I just know that your, yes, your demand is crazy, especially during this time of year. And I know that sometimes you don't have enough manpower to take calls. And I would hate for you to be on a minor emergency call and there being, you know, a critical situation and, and you not being able to get to that. And I know you guys did a great job, but there there are a lot of, you know, minor emergency needs. And it would be great if we could have a facility like that um would it be an emt or a nurse practitioner or do you need a physician is that what were you yeah. thinking on a cortical free bass but at the same time if we end up where you don't want to see some like sutures or something like that i mean it's not something that's out of the question it's just it's a kind of emergent and making kind of making an urgent care that our guys that our, our physician would check us all on so, or if he wants to bring in I mean, and and if that's you know if that's happening from you know from the private sector then that's great but i just think yeah we if we can try to work to I get something but to what level of urgent care well i think for the most part i mean someone has a major heart event they're going to call ems ems right. is going to transport but i think they get a lot of calls where you know someone cut their finger somebody got you know stingrays someone got i mean a severe Hooks. burn or you know hooks or just something you know and then you know our winter texan population when they do show up you know in the winter time if they had a facility because they you know don't have primary care doctors here i mean i know that it's been attempted multiple times <laughs> many many years but i feel like we're probably reaching that point particularly during our peak visitor season that it, it would get utilized Again, there's a financial model to that, you know, to be yeah. successful as a physician. And I know there are a lot of rules and, but, um, you know, if we can do something as a city to encourage that, I think that'd be important. Is there a treatment room in the facility? Yeah, there is. Yeah. Lawrence. Maybe we identify some property. We, we got little tracks here and there. Uh, we can do an RFQ on a fee out there specifically for what the city's looking for. So we have any lights on that. Were you meaning more for the city to do this or like for a private city. sector? I, I, I'm not I'm not suggesting that the city go and own and operate an urgent care facility. 
What I'm saying is <clears throat> there are probably some things we could do as a city to maybe incentivize, you know, somebody to come because I know that there are, you know, it, it's all about cost, right? Purchasing buildings, leasing buildings, having space. I mean, if, if we had something, again, I don't know what that is, but I think the first step is to talk to people, um, you know, who are in that business and see what it would take to recruit them you know, what opportunities that they would have to come. And I think we could provide them numbers, data to show statistically why it would, you know, be good for them to be here and then kind of work back into the numbers, you know. Does and Oasis County have a health district or is it the hospital district? I mean, they have one, but it's all, they have a health department in their baseball. Yeah. Um, I think this, whenever you go from EMS to, to, or even like the doctor's office to an urgent care, the, the facility is so dramatic as far as they may have x ray, CT, right. MRI, all that kind of stuff. I mean, if you're not going to have that in an urgent care facility, it almost is like, yeah, you go to Dr. Belcher, you're a first day you know? right? Um, so that's that to me, that's going to be where your cost is. You know, you get somebody in here where you can just offer a few of those, even <clears> x rays that make them, you know, you do all your splitting and, mm -hmm. and, and verify there's, you know, the hook's not into a major artery or. You know, low and mm -hmm. like that. Um, but uh, you know, then if you have an urgent care, where they're offering that, I mean, you know, why everybody, any other doctor goes out, just won't go there anymore. You know. Yeah, and I'm not certainly not trying to compete with Dr. Russell's office or anything like that. But um, and maybe it, that's a you know something we can do. Meet with him, meet with you guys, to see if there's a what would be the best fit. And maybe it is a. Like you said, maybe it is some kind of modified first aid station or something to where in the peak season when there's a lot of people, people know, hey, I don't have to call 911 to get my, you know, stingray. Even if you know, during the day, you know, yeah. the, during the day there's somebody who's always in there for eight to five, and then at night, you know, of course we do emergency, but somebody's not just staying in there. Right? Yeah. Even if it was down the highway, like maybe between Corpus and us, you know. Maybe we could work together with somebody to get one closer to them. Okay, we've got three urgent cares on Padre. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. There, are, there's. Yeah. You're right. There's access. There's yeah. Sure point. And, or something like. Yeah. yeah. I think if they can mm -hmm. add mm -hmm. extra to their facility already, that would be yeah. great. The, I think so too. That people know they can go for take a minor emergency. Would they that require some kind of modification into the plan the on the building? Yeah. I know you said I need, to, I need to look at it and see what we what we allocated for that space. I mean, it's still under design, so right. we still have time to look I mean, at it. There's a room down there, but I mean, it all depends on how you want to go. If you're signing an agreement with the doctor where he's going to come over or have an MP where he's going to do x-rays or some kind of thing where we actually have that in our mm -hmm. facility, then I think we probably need a little bit. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not not uh, operations. I wasn't yeah. talking like no. full-on no. heart no. surgery. I <laughs> <laughs> do I do an x-ray and decide if they need to go further. Yeah. Be, yeah. It's be something good for us to add on. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on that? Okay. P, discussion on creating a street cut tracking bond management program. Hmm. Council member Winton. Okay. Mark <laughs> brought this to my attention a while ago and, and um, we looked up our code. So our code says if you want to do a street uh, a street cut for a utility for a new development. What, Lawrence? What was it? A right now, our policy. Or yeah. Do you remember what it yeah, said? Get a permit, get a permit, get a right. So, right. But the the issue is, is that you know a developer comes, gets a street cut, cuts you know a five foot swath through Eleventh Street, sells the houses, and then he's gone. <clears throat> We we have no one to really go after when that street cut starts to sink, and we don't have a policy in place that um, has like a timeline or any kind of bonding or any kind of you know. Yeah, so the everywhere. the thought was is what can we what can we do through code to 
get these street cut people on the hook so that, you know, after a year, whatever the time is that we set, you know, can we, is there a bond? Do they put up some, you know, do they put up money? You know, how do we? So, <clears throat> so I do, a couple of years ago, I, I do have a, a form <clears throat> other than for the water district and our, our right. metal partners, an acknowledgement. I have to, I'll, I'll pull it and get it for you, but I do hold the developer and or the property owner responsible for five years. I get them to sign it. It's a, Right, but yeah, I know, but I think Mark's issue is is that we're not following up too much on it because we got street cuts all over town that are just yeah, sunk and they're settled. Yeah. Or they're settled. The, the the issue is 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 how do we go after that person that signed on the dotted line four years later? So I spec. Yeah, it's there's a spec. Is there? So I asked you about that before, and you said you'd let let them settle for a yeah couple they years. typically settle and there's just not a whole lot of follow we don't go back and yeah okay so if we follow up or up our spec we upping will upping our spec help no spec? we need a better follow-up process because a lot of times these i mean these are what if the i mean right they said might be some guy from austin right you know and mm -hmm. you, you call the phone number no answer then what do you do so you're at you're at four years and the guy who signed on the dotted line is gone. Well, because he developed a piece of property, he sold it, and he's out. So yeah, he's out. Right. So, so it, somebody in my uh, Arlington area told me that they're making them go underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we, they we just quit letting them get yeah. the road. Well, that's not practical, and it's expensive. But, but yeah, financial is an issue. If they can I mean, maybe we maybe we up our fee. If we put a, we just say, all right, a street cut's going to be twenty five bucks a square foot. You're going to cut it four feet wide by by fifty feet. You give us, you know, eight thousand dollars. I think that's a good plan. Yeah, you I, know, I mean, I think the street got to do something. Or put yeah. up a bond, and you you know, you got to we we get. We sit on it for two years, 24 months, and then we assume at some point we assume it, right? They're everywhere. I mean, right. Yeah. There, there's going to be more of them. And from what I've seen, within six months, they're already sinking. And then you got to fix them. And then six months later, you got to fix them again. So it's a, it's not a one time fix. And I think we need to think about uh, what kind of, what kind of money it takes to fix it, however many times is reasonable or the, or the lifetime of the road. I just think we need to put something in plan that no, I agree. That maintains our streets a little better because we are a town that has golf carts. When golf carts hit big bumps and somebody gets seriously injured, then who are they going to look at? So, I would suggest maybe we look at uh, city certified contractors that we only allow for this particular issue. I've heard of this before, uh, you know, reviewing other projects that basically we've got contractors that we know get the street cut to the picker repairs done correctly per our soil conditions here, right? Uh, all, all this outside investment, my people can their own contractors in, they're not familiar with the sand, use of clay and other early things. And it's just what they do doesn't work out here. There's just different compaction rates and material usages. Um, so maybe we we could come up with, these are people we know, which we do have, we know who we know, uh, that do follow our spec and have successful programs. Um, maybe we can just, Kind of try that way because we know that their their product works. Maybe so we don't. Maybe we just offer that list uh, be now uh, a mandated list of what we call certified street approved contractors along the lines. I think somebody that knows what they're doing for our environment here is who we need to specify. They need to use, or either they're gonna or. or we're going to do it and they're going to reimburse us and we pay the contractor however but i think that's a big problem because you know we're all sand and uh you know you can throw a patch over it and people don't understand it's gonna mm -hmm. it's gonna compress and we got a problem so um i think it's going to be an ongoing and bigger problem as we grow if we don't take a good look at it because all the repairs we're doing by those roads and that bond some of them are going to get cut again we want to have a new road. 
No cutting in the new roads. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. no. It's in the new roads. The perception has fallen. We're going to call those contractors that we know fix it correctly to go on and do it anyway. So maybe we can just get the right by saying, here's your list that you can choose from. I'm sure you can do it really. But 75 bucks doesn't get you a long time. No. Um, no. I like the idea of the raising fix. the fee. And then how long are they going to maintain too after, after the fact? Mm -hmm. Well, if you charge them a if you charge them a set fee, and then you also make them, you know, fix it to a certain spec with a certain contractor. Well, I think that contractor would be on the hook. Then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we don't have to worry about that person. Yeah. We can't get a hold of we get a hold of the contractor. You guaranteed it for six years. You got to go fix it. But you you could do a bond, like you said, where you hold their money until the street. You know is actually repaired yeah um for correct the streets that have multiple cuts already and there's a lot of street failures which i know 11th street has yeah. a lot of that is is that in the street in new street bond to go no portions of 11th but no not all of it no uh-uh -uh. some not of those cuts are just a year old <clears> yeah less. we should be able to follow up with race some information. Yeah. Is, yeah is that something yeah. that we could put in the budget to fix or would we want to put in the budget to fix um i don't think we need to budget it i think um there's enough in the street and drainage bond that we could go out and go go back and target okay these older street cuts and and get them corrected okay and then the new ones but i think anything under five years if we have the signatures we got to go after them and then I think, water I think, good. you know, water district did it. Uh, they're good about going back. Our gas department has a lot of those cuts. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you got one on 11th Street, let us know. I mean, you know, like, um, streets. huh? Yeah, just like, like on Alistair in front of um, the new. What were the new townhomes built kind of close to the road? The cottages at Old Town? Yes. Their oh. street, their street cut right across Alistair. Okay. It's mm -hmm. been low for six okay. years. And you just drive right there's over Thunk. Jarrett, there's some on channel over yeah. there. There's some on a lot of streets. Yeah, Old Town Cottages. That cut right there. I think if we can make a comprehensive list of those in town and, and identify them. That one right there. Then maybe we can come back and see what the estimated expense is. And if, if we have enough money currently in the street, and it's fine. And if we don't, then we can maybe make it a budget amendment for this you know fiscal year to put more money in there to fix all those throughout. Yeah, it'll probably be coming up in next year's budget because right. we don't have enough time this year. Um, that, would look, that would look like a sewer town. Yeah, but it's theirs. It's, yeah, but they, <laughs> they, might, they, they have their contract to do it. They may be able yeah. to look for it. You need to let them know. <laughs> and then be pro proactive with new cuts. If they're failing in six months, you know when somebody issued a street cut, somebody inspected it. If we can know where those are a year later and we have about 350 there right now. Okay. Let me ask you this real quick. These people that have already pulled permits to do that, I'm sure there's building that's going to go on that's going to going to happen again. Can we do anything with with them or are they already pulled their permit and they're good under the conditions we have or we can I mean if they're still actively working in the city, we we can still hold them accountable. We don't get that many though that, that are that are beyond that are that are above beyond the water district. Water district has a lot of them on for the development. They charge them. So the water district oftentimes will be the ones that are on the hook for it, and, and they've never they've never shied away from responsibility. So I just you know, kind of drive around town. I, I guess I balance and don't even think about it after a while. <laughs> and, 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 no, I think we get on place. So <laughs> I'll I'll do a do a drive around and bounce around and, and, and make notes. But. 
I think that would be helpful to do. I mean, obviously you have a proactive program moving forward, but I think if we had a comprehensive list of those and, and to identify which are water district, which are, you know, other, and then we can maybe come up with a, a plan. With Scott, like I said, they've never they've never shied away from from holding their contracts. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts or discussion on that? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I don't know when lunch is, but how about we take a quick five minute recess? Okay. Yep. Five minutes. Five Here, minutes. can we when we come back, can we move to six Z while Andrew is here? Yes, we sure can. We'll okay. turn down from five minutes. You don't want to right. say, Andrew. <laughs> I mean, we're only on P. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I know, man. I'm feeling better. Jesus. Good, good. Let's try to help out. Some here sausage. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't look. Oh man. I know. I'm just like a snippet. <laughs> Right. Was there a candidate earlier about camping? No, he just wanted to with the bridge. He was afraid with them doing their field trip on Thursday that they would have trouble with the So they're going to go across the ferry and want the ferry quick. You want to help them get them back over. Can you do that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I told him just so down. Remind me on Thursday. I'll just say the map of the day. So that I can keep just right. going anywhere in the northbound. And I don't think you're going to be able to do So, yeah, but I would like to. So that's that point of distinction. It's failure. It's failure. All the way to the bottom. And the bond was 2011. I went under breath. So I'm like, I'm I can feel his resentment pulling it back. And I'm like, 
I have to be the first person there, of course. The next guy, I watch what happens. They they put in the wine. Oh, I just drunk out of that. People are all probably terribly worried right now. That's what I get for. Right, I remember when the important one. You really want to feel it. I had to do it back then. Yeah, yeah. You know, he talk about wine. That's cool. Let's get a little service. Yeah, that was what Miss Elliot did. Thank you. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yes, James. I think he plays the guitar. All right, all right, let's go. How about yeah? Yeah. Oh, never? Yeah. I talked to a friend who was bringing an out at Palmina. Yeah. And uh, and he brought to the panic that was wrong. Yeah, where'd you go on vacation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do a free kick. That's where you're out of there. Like, we went to the same time. Michelle and I, Dana, we went to the same time. Right. We went down there. Yeah, 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 like July, like, 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 like a month ago, we were not turning on now yet. You know, there's some late. Miller and John had a lot of late books. Like like yeah. yeah. In June, they were there. Like, I don't know. I was thinking, like, 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 you know, I know a lot of places they do big paintings. One of the paintings, they do, they do, they do, they do different things yeah. on the road. Yeah. 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 What, yeah. 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 what do you think? Yeah. The late, all these late books. I do you think it's a result of? Well, well, I saw those two fire off even after already. Where the yeah. intersection is, yeah. up there is being yeah. out. Yeah. You know, if you could even yeah. put something across yeah. there, they get more cars every time. We look down all the time when they're driving. So, yeah. so, yeah. 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 so yeah. Yeah. hopefully, it's a weird building. Our side of just off. Yeah. 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 Right. You see, sure. I've heard from her husband, it's going okay. Yeah. Those look good. Yeah, she's working hard. Yeah, working hard. Okay. Where did you go? Oh, there. So I was like, what? okay, sorry. <laughs> Heavily oh, there you go. I don't know. My house is unlocked. Uh, don't have any answer for Veronica. You didn't think we were going to be done at 11 30, did you? No, but they've been planning on coming for six months. They're supposed to be what here. What time did you plan on being there? Five o'clock. <laughs> I said six. <laughs> okay, we're going to, uh, Mayor, we're going to jump to 6 Z. Okay. Reconvene item 6 Z discussion on funding for the development of a sporting event. Venue Recreation Center using the 2% hotel motel tax funds. Okay, so just to give you guys a history of this, this is this has come up um, over the years. I think it, it went to the voters, I can't remember, 2020 or 2021? 2020. 2020, it went to the voters. Um, lost by, I don't know, a handful of votes, 11 or 12 votes. Six. Um, yeah. it was slated to go to the voters in November of 2017, but the hurricane hit and we pulled it. So, um, then it took a couple of years after the recovery to get, get a little bit of steam. So here it is a third time. Um, several council members brought this up. So including in your packet is just kind of, a just a kind of a general schematic of, of what the facility might be like. Um, it would house parks and rec offices. It would house nature preserve offices. It would have some meeting space, um, some breakout room space, some art space, classroom space, um, exercise and exercise and movement space, and a events um, 
event center sporting you know competition gym with um and in this example it's almost 600 seating and some team rooms um we had i think in the in the in the parks and um open space master plan that we just completed it it cited this facility to be you know near the pool complex possibly you know in this in this area right in here so somewhere right in there we definitely would would use the the clark fields um down at the bottom of ross to make up for lost lost parking but uh andrew is here to discuss how the two percent additional tax would come into play and how we would go about uh um, initializing that that the run for that tax good morning mayor council andrew friedman with samco capital markets financial advisor to the city um as Mr. Parson said, we've kind of gone through this, um, I guess, a couple of times now over the years. Um, if the city wants to move forward with um, getting that venue tax in place, that's an additional 2% uh, hotel occupancy tax, which is then those revenues are directed exclusively towards the designated venue. So for the rec center competition um, area. The first step would be a the, the city council adopting a resolution uh, for your bond council uh, to send a letter to the comptroller's office in Austin. Uh, they do an economic uh, study uh, of the proposed project. Uh, they get an answer back roughly in 30 days or sooner. Uh, and we went through that process back in 20, as recently as 2020. So I don't expect any issues uh, with that. Once you have that comptroller letter, um uh, approving the the project then you take it to the voters and so um kind of a tight time frame for this november election uh, given that we have to call uh, the election itself by august um but uh, i think the the plan that uh, we had discussed with david uh was to potentially if you all did want to proceed to bring that resolution forward at your july 20th meeting i think was yeah. uh, the dates that uh, had been discussed as far as that venue tax revenue itself, once assuming you have a successful election and authorizes that additional 2%, um, then levy that in place. So if you consider that we have a successful November election, canvas the result for 30 days, and then get that uh, levy in place uh, and collected maybe starting in January, uh, we'd be in a position to sell bonds to finance the, the facility. Um, sometime in, in, I'd say, early, mid-2024. Uh, what we don't know at this point is, you know, what the cost of this project is. We know, uh, in general terms, what your existing 7% hotel occupancy tax revenue is. We divide that by seven, multiply that times two, and it comes up with that revenue. Right around three million a year. Yeah, and that's, I was looking, I think, 3. 1, 21 maybe. audited results. Um, yeah, we hit nine and a half last year, and I really think we're going to get 10... North ten and a half this year, okay. between ten and a half and so 11, that's I what the two percent is is about three point one million. Yeah. Um, so a year we don't we haven't done really much of any analysis relative to you know how much we could finance. I think it's going to be a number that far exceeds what y'all actually intend to uh, finance, and so we continue to look at you know what what that structure would look like, and then as soon as the the debt would go away, um, that'd be finally matured that hotel occupancy tax uh, would go away. It's authorized exclusively for this venue itself. Uh, no general fund revenues can be used to support that facility. Um, it's standalone and has to be solely operated based upon the venue tax revenues. When you sell those venue tax bonds, the general fund isn't supporting. Um, and the INS tax rate, the, the MO tax rate, cannot be pledged and is not pledged toward the repayment of those bonds. So when We've sold for McLennan County. This is going back uh, to, I think, 2018. Sold a very big venue tax project for a rodeo arena there. COVID hit and no one was traveling. So there was a concern. Uh, these represent a higher risk to bond investors. So, um, you know, when you have something like COVID or Hurricane Harvey here, where hotels shut down, uh, investors, there's different investors and fewer investors 
uh, who like the credit profile uh, of this. This isn't going to be based upon our AA plus credit rating is that we enjoy as the city of Port Aransas. They're going to look at it from the perspective of what type of catastrophe could hit that's going to pause or eliminate those revenues. So there's a lot more credit work that we have to do um, in order to kind of ascertain what those interest rates would be um, and what hurdles there may be. But legally, you know, you can proceed. And, and I think that there is absolutely a market for this. Um, just how costly that is, we'll, we'll have to determine. So I'm happy to answer any questions. I don't know if I've kind of veered off subject there or not. No. Andrew, how many, I mean, do you see this type of process happening all over the state for all kinds of you, we, right. we, especially when we started looking at this in 2017, I think it's it's a great tool um, because you're getting the you know uh, an economic benefit to the city, um, and it's paid for by the people who are, are coming from out of town. So this isn't a, a burden borne by the citizens you know who live in Port Aransas. Uh, you see them you know most often. Uh, I would say probably in your much larger cities. Uh, think about the the venues like professional sports stadiums and things that have used. Uh, hotel occupancy tax revenue stream, probably in combination with a lot of different things to support projects. Um, haven't seen as many with smaller cities, and we haven't seen as many since, you know, really 2020 with COVID hitting, took a long time for, um, you know, kind of the hotel industry to uh, to bounce back um, and kind of the, the pitfalls of COVID. But certainly, I think this is a, a great project. We went through all of the legwork, um, you know, I guess really five years ago and kind of ensuring that the project, the, the end use of the facility kind of met what the citizens' expectation was, you know, relative to being able to have a place for the community to, you know, work out or exercise, but actually meet the threshold of this being a venue um, so that we could, you know, pledge those revenues. When you said build, and then you also use the word operate, you're not allowed to use any general funds to operate this? No. But we can use other funds. I mean, once it's built, paid for. So those venue tax revenues at 2%, yeah. it's going to be used to support the debt service payment. It's also going to be used and will need to be used to support uh, the, the operations of the facility. So, okay. In combination so, with ticket sales and then but, some other But various, staffing, right? if we hop office our parks and recs in here that no longer comes through that i i, I believe the we, intent there is for to have a, a carve out of maybe those not being considered part of the venue that is maybe a legal nuance okay. that we need to maybe uh revisit with bond council if this is the same plan that we yeah, had going yeah. back to 2017 yeah. um you're just housing staff there uh that would they would still be paid out of uh out of the your general operating Okay. Okay. So then if council wants to move forward, then like you said, July meeting, we are presented with a resolution, which we would then vote on, send to the comptroller, comptroller letter comes back and enough time for us to call for a special election in November. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> So, Dave, I don't. Where, where would the rec center and the nature preserve people be in this? Um, it's kind of small. Um, at the very top of the page. Okay. Um, the right hand side, where you can, where the main entry is, the right hand side is parks and rec. The left hand side is nature preserve. Okay, where it says youth center. And yes, that's the rec. That's the parks and rec side. And then the other side would be uh, this is like MP display. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is this would yeah. be nature. Yeah, this is nature reserve. Right. This is parts of that. So that would take the youth center out? Or no, no, no. That's that still stays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just talking about this little area here. No, uh, you mean what, what they would carve out mm -hmm. as far as funding? No, there's no. offices and office stuff like that. Resources. Yeah, yeah, that's that's all the office space. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> and if we're going to do, okay, I guess that's a part of it. So if we're thinking also having a hotel convention center, <laughs> are we putting too many big areas into the city in a short period of time? Or 
how do we go through the process of finding that out? Is this overkill, Brett? Having a seating area or two different things. Rec center is not going to replace somebody like office. Right. Well, this still has to go. To but it has a big meeting area too. I mean, yes, this has to go to a boat. Okay. Well, not just a gym, but basketball courts. When you put stuff back, is a big, a large venue. That doesn't hurt us to have. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, they wouldn't be competing with each other. Well, not competing, but. Would it's it be too much? too much? Would we have all of a sudden too much space? Too much space to try to fill, you mean? Fill a hotel convention center area, a civic center. center. Um, and a you know, a big gym, a, a big auditorium or a gym or that's, that's what I was just. I think that um, they like to, to Brett's point, oh, Sporting events center meets a different purpose than a conference center. Yes. It's a it's a gym, right? It's a competition gym to hold events. Not that you couldn't push seats back and have some kind of assembly thing, but it's still just a gym. Okay. You're not putting a thousand person conference in a gym. But this facility could go a long way to be utilized by Nature Preserve, Parks and Recs, with all the other meeting and event space that's here for smaller nature preserve parks and recs or you know events related more to like the sporting or something nature preserve wise i mean um i mean as far as a conference center i think that's a whole nother yeah that's a whole nother venue um you know would a small conference want to utilize either or maybe but you're still looking for different they're different sources of people so to speak and also i think the conference center state center you're not going to be like this place going away, right? Right. <clears throat> this facility goes to a vote to the people. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The facility. I mean, this the funding it, mechanism right. goes to the vote, not the facility, okay. right? But well, the whole point of having the funding it is board, the yeah. funding board, right? Right. Yes. If the voters approve, we proceed, and we're collecting the taxes. You don't wait two or three years and just you don't have stack pallets. You don't have to levy that tax immediately. And once you do, it sets a clock. And you'll have to forgive me. I don't remember exactly what the parameters of that are. Uh, but the intent would be that you levy that and, and start it going. Um, because I don't think we'd be trying to really maximize or you know entirely leverage that revenue stream. I don't foresee it being an issue on uh, one deal we did. We needed to establish a six month collection pattern of the new tax to satisfy the bond insurers of what that revenue stream was before we started projecting that it would be going forward. Uh, I don't think that would be the case here, um, you know, given our long history of collecting a hotel tax and we're just adding to it. This would be really nice for the kids in the summer too, right? I mean, couldn't you use that for, that would be, and to be by the pool. Yeah, after school care. After school care. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm just looking at that thinking of what you guys do now and yeah, having to transport them from the school to the pool and this would be yeah, because right now, like from Marlin Academy and, and all that stuff, we're still utilizing the school. <laughs> However, the school could at some point say, We don't have any room for you, or we're doing something else, and then we 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 don't have any <laughs> space at all. For those programs. Like, uh, summer maintenance. They have right. training. We get to shift it around where we can't use the gym, we can't use the cafeteria. It's not our facility. So, yeah. I think that would be great. So, you really like this idea. <laughs> it's in my section of the budget. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more I see a little grand. Ideas. Yes. Um, yeah. And it was, uh, it was what, number two in the in the master plan yeah. yeah that'd be great to get something going that's not well that'll be somewhere right yeah. what you can put it's it for, what number is that yeah it was in the two, top, top 10 it was number two in the parks and rec open space i was talking to mrs clark the other day while i was doing her hair and she's excited for us to bring this back on they that was something her husband envisioned and oh yeah they really want this to happen so brett there's no tourism data when a city raises 
the hotel motel tax. It's not a gift. People don't notice it or see it, or they just make a comment or. Or more was put last year. There is no monetary issue because of that. But we had, I mean, I think, you know, we have high, high cost rentals in Fort Worth. So we know that it's going to be a lot of different for any of our guests coming in. And people can stay. That's all. And I want to just verify they cannot layer so in the inside contact. It's, it's uh, not for the venue itself. No, I mean it would in certain places you've got car rental fees. I mean, there's other revenue streams you can look at relative to Port Aransas. But on a on a two hundred dollar a night room, you're talking four dollars. Yeah, and I, I know in his in tourism. Yeah, are there any case studies like oh some city did this and it. Yeah. I think if it's a study, uh, it, it's like when we initiated impact fees. <clears throat> the prediction was everyone was going to stop building in Port Aransas. Okay. So the sky is not falling. All right. The, do you know what the total square foot was? Of and the, ma the max that hotel can be is 17%. I can tell you South Padre is at 17%. And we're at 13. So against your competition, we'd still be 2% lower. Yeah. I believe South Padre is at 17 with total because they have a county hotel tax now and That's they have a new tax. So there, there's how 16. much? I believe South Parker is at the max 17%. McLennan County saw they've only gone up and up and up with all the Chip and Joanna Gaines um, economic oh, yeah. power. And the awesomeness at Baylor is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that in there. I missed my phone in there. What's <laughs> Corpus? Yeah. Well, I just booked a room at La Quintera in Corpus. I mean, in San Antonio. The fees there mm -hmm. were $180 a night extra just for the extra luxury tax and resort fee. Hotel motel yeah. tax. And, and those are self imposed fees. That's not even yeah, a city. Yeah. 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 And it yeah. hurt me to fill that in, but I did it because I wanted to hang out there. So. Mm -hmm. Y'all didn't notice the dead tourism after the lakes. That's essentially what it is. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Right. Everything you Everything going up to like people in there. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. want to come there. They're gonna. One of the things to point out is the first process of this, if it were to be funded, would be feasibility, architect design, programming, the rendering in the master plan, Davis rendering. They're just conceptual, so we would really work out with community members. You know what's important to them. What. Um, feasibility is there for bringing in special events. There would be an event coordinator. It's um, easy to like pick something and say, I don't want this. Right. I think that's maybe what our shortfall was last election. Um, but we'll have a whole design team to work on what the best fit for our community is. Fair. And we really need to impress upon the, uh, to the community how beneficial this is going to be for our community, not just <clears throat> the events that are there, but day-to-day -day things and you, you guys have an offices and what we can do for our children in the summer so at someone else's expense right i, right. I would add yeah well yeah the community isn't gonna pay a dime so yeah i think that's what we had a hard time i think you're right last time conveying to those voting very good any other questions for andrew Thank you for your work, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Happy to see these. Right. Happy to play a part. <laughs> Thank we you. We appreciate you yeah, coming Gal down. Galveston's at 15%. And yes. South Padre is 17. Okay. And you said we're 13? No, we're, we're 13, 13 right now. This yeah. would put Thanks, us Andrew. 15. Very well. This will be right up Thank you, right. Andrew. With everybody else. Yeah. San Antonio thinks it's at 17. Okay. All right. Now we're jumping okay, back. We're going to go back to item Q. To which cube. is discussion on Alistair Community Park Construction Comprehensive Plan Goal LHC 2A. Colleen, that's still in design, right? I mean, it's not. Huh. Yeah, current contracts for civil engineering and landscape uh, design and architecture. Yeah, they're so underway. yeah, they are underway. They're estimating. Uh, total 
that include just the park portion or the parking and the park? Parking and park, it does not include utility relocation. That will be an additional cost. So the utilities are additional cost and everything else is power poles and lighting. Yes. Underground is uh, like drainage is included. I know it's to me, it'd be part of the beautification of Alistair Street. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people are excited. You know, you do Christmas there every year and it'd be nice not to have to go through the ditch and through over the road and the Robert's are you yeah. uh, okay? It's expanded. Gone back. <laughs> the new. Yeah, that's actually. Oh, that'll be beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, it was pretty last year. Even even though, that I think a lot of people are excited about that. I think the tourists will use it. I think the citizens will use it, and I think it look awesome. To you get come it. up with a name for it because the community center part is too close to the community park. Yeah. Yeah. I always call it the Old Town Park, but y'all call it the Alistair Street Park. <laughs> so, well, maybe, maybe we'll take suggestions from everybody, the citizens or something. You know? We'll see. So, anything? I mean, as far as budget item, we've already we're already in the process. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yep. need to be, yeah. Anything? And that's hotel motel, right? Yes. Or, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Anybody. That pot that's got a lot of uses. Yeah, it does. Thank goodness it's a big pot. <laughs> yep. All right. Item R discussion on adding a part time code enforcement officer position for weekends. Well, I know we kind of added that in our last budget to hire, or the was it 2021 for extra code enforcement? Yep. On the beach, which we yeah. have. Yep. Well, no, we were doing the extra code enforcement. Oh, yeah, yeah, we hired them. They're hired, yeah. yeah, yeah. But we were hoping to have somebody on Saturday and Sunday. or So I don't know if that's something you're, you know, part-time or... Wait, let me grab one. No, Rick's out there. Sorry. <laughs> Get in here. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> well, you know, we budgeted in a year or two ago for the extra code enforcement. And I think at that time we were hoping to have that person for Saturday and Sunday, but that didn't go that way. But so what are you thinking? I mean, I, I saw the agenda item. I mean, certainly whatever Dave directs me based on, on what you guys say, the, the the opportunity we have right now is that we are we shifted our current second code enforcement officer to the the, to the short term rental position right that was created that's right so we are actively getting applications for a code enforcement officer and I have no problems you know finding out about and and, and maybe if, if so directed basing the selection criteria on that availability. It's just always been difficult, um, and again, that the the concern I have, and Chief can weigh in, is that the after hours weekends is one thing during the day, but We're the after hours evening. After okay, hours. so just weekends. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if it's not after hours, then I, I think that's, I think that's a scheduling, uh, just a scheduling issue that, I, that I we need to find the item. Dangerous on the weekend after hours. Well, that's true. <laughs> so. um, but I, I think a flex a flex schedule, and you know, and again, I need to talk to Darla, you know, about all the ramifications on the employment side. But certainly, if that's if that's what we're directed, I see the I see the reasoning. Um, you know, like I said, I I do a lot of unofficial code enforcement on the weekends just because I'm here and I see stuff that you know can't get overlooked sure. and I have to deal with it. But so, uh, and no, I don't get overtime. You know, I don't know. <laughs> You know, I don't know how difficult that would be. I, I think it's just a it's just a it's just a flex schedule. Is that the right term, Darla, uh, Darla for for something like that on a on a weekend? Uh, I mean, we wouldn't necessarily have to pay Tuesday, Wednesday instead of right. So we wouldn't it wouldn't be like an overtime issue. No. Right? That would just no. be their schedule. No. Um, like I said, we are you know we're we're, we're actively soliciting and have uh, have it posted for this position. Uh, yeah. I'll certainly talk to my existing you know code enforcement officer see if there's an interest in a flex schedule, but. Uh, uh, I'll absolutely. That's what you 
want us to do, we'll do that. Anybody else's thoughts are on it, but um, <clears throat> or as far as the weekend, like what what do you you just want someone to be available or someone to drive around and okay. look for violations or what? what I mean, when you get all the cars parked on the sidewalk and they're just everywhere and there's twelve cars at a house. Yeah, I I think okay, I guess so you're right. It ramps up on code the enforcement person do go up and knock on the door and tell them to get off the street is that what or or would they just contact the short-term rental people or or i mean Mo most of it, i think what you're what you're concerned about probably are short-term rental issues specifically yeah, but i mean could uh, they, although a lot of our locals tend to have their parties and events and things on the weekends too so we do. do have some some, some but most of it's short-term but, rental but it's a lot of short-term rental uh could that be something so that, i don't have too many locals I could but i thought it, the process with the, that was called the, the hotline, hotline or the police were called and that it was addressed that, so that was uh, is that solution. is that process going to change if we have a weekend code enforcement person <laughs> tell me it, well, I, I mean, I guess I'm, twice well, I don't know. Again. You know, it's just it's like there's a lot of things that are going on. I mean, it's called the hotline and they fix it right away. Both of them. One of them was parking. I couldn't get in my garage. <laughs> they parked right behind my garage and somebody moved it within 30 minutes. And we like those stories and, and we're holding them accountable. Like I said, we I, I think I've told you this. We, we've had we've issued citations to companies that didn't respond in the hour even though what they were responding to didn't end up being a true violation. But the fact that yeah. it, it got our attention, they weren't responding is, is an issue because we want them responding within an hour. When, when um, were we getting those the notices out to the short-term rentals about the extra parking? Weren't you sending something out for that, Dave? Or? About the, uh, the, the extra advertising the requirement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we Basically, we're using email blasts with the, all our contact information based on our registration, letting them know all those things. But it, you know, that that's just one one more step, which is all we can do is just keep taking steps towards fixing that. But whatever whatever your direction is, I'm I mean, usually on weekends, some of the infractions we see are, you know, people will put up signs that yeah. shouldn't be up. People will, you know, sometimes businesses set up little outdoor things that shouldn't be there those um flag, those flags are i mean parking on sidewalks that's police um you know so any anything anything that's traffic related or is police um yeah But you know, it's certainly a question that I'm, I'm more than happy to ask the, any of the candidates too if they're available. That's you know, and maybe they do, and maybe they just work Saturday and not Sunday. You know, maybe they, maybe it's yeah Monday through Saturday during this and really during the summer during the fall. It's probably not necessary because usually the infractions you catch are Saturday. You know, by Sunday they've yeah, and and I, and I'll get with I'll I'll get with Darla and we'll look at the the. Uh, there obviously would be some budget constraints, but if it was just like a Saturday, for example, maybe it's a few hours uh, overtime instead of a whole, you know, flex schedule. On Sunday, could they be a traffic control at the fair? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Sure. I think we're in uh, we're in a uniform and having a badge. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. That's... It was a thought. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, S, discussion and funding for the research and development of future housing projects, including additional apartments, detached condos, or single family residences that could be used for workforce housing. I don't know who put this one on there. Doesn't have Where'd this one come it. from? You did. Huh? That's you did. Post my contact day part. Yeah. It's a carryover from last year? I mean, I think it's a good idea. We, right. we probably ought to keep researching keep it, and keep, keep that on PFC yeah. going. Yeah. We got our first payment. We did get our first but payment. Uh -oh. okay. No, it was a banker. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Not a <laughs> banker. I, <could> just, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I do. I mean, I was somewhat excited to see this because I do think we need to continue to look. Yeah, at, we, we do. Know, research it's it's ideas, ongoing. Putting it on there. So I don't know what from a budget standpoint you know what where that falls we but um we need to keep i think it's important yeah i don't think we need a it's not a budgeted item just 
something we need to keep talking yeah. about. So we make yeah. it happen. <clears throat> Have there been any other discussions with Palladium? I know originally when the current facility was open, they were like, we're ready to build again. I mean, oh, they want to build another one. Yeah. Palladium 2.0, huh? Yeah, they want to do yeah. another one. Yeah. Although, you know, it would go out through the process, right? Same it process. would go to them. <clears throat> yeah. But no, they think there's, they think they'd fill a second one up as fast as the first one. Yeah. Filled up fast. I have so many employees that work there. Almost everybody that works for me is open. So, I mean, in order to do that research, do do we need to put something in the budget? No, I, I don't the... think we need a we need budget. Okay. It's just more so staff just time and land. Yeah, land. Yeah, where? Yeah. yeah. I need to wait for them to get in their Please. facilities. Yeah. I see ambulances there a lot. And police. Where are the problems? I mean, what not problems, but what's getting <laughs> called? Crazy people, name it. Crazy people. You got a lot of people in one spot. Yeah, yeah. there's just a lot of people in one spot. And then the, a lot of stuff the, going the on. biggest issue is no elevators, no moving, moving these patients, some large patients up in the stairs. Ooh. A lot of risk to injuries like that. Uh, you want to call it that? Yeah. So next time we want them to put an elevator in. Emergency. Yeah. About that. Yeah, All that acreage way down there. Yeah. No, we'll keep working it. Okay. Here, we're going to check on. All right. That's right. All right. Item T discussion on funding for traffic studies on Highway 361, text dot speed limit reevaluation and proposals to reflect times at the intersection of Avenue G. Allister. Highway 361 and cut off to include adding extra lanes or purchase of land for bypass. Where'd this one come from? You. you? These are these are invented. I didn't... <laughs> it's probably in the comprehensive plan on transportation. You probably do have an item there. Was there a bypass that was supposed to go 361 over at one time? Well, there's a there's there, there's a bypass right here. I'll draw it. There's a bypass down Sixth Street that does this. There's that one. There's that that bypass. That's the idea. But also with this one, and I think the bigger one for here is generating a turn lane right here that's the bigger yes that that one would probably help more yes. than anything yeah i agree um agree. big time <laughs> yeah which would take a lot of that that's a pretty heavy lift I, I i think there's enough room to squeeze it in but it would require a large um lift from the water district yes. because of the there's a very sizable uh oh, yeah. one of their main lift stations is is right in here um and i don't know if you you know also aep there's probably enough room there there's probably enough room in there to get that lane in that grass area right there but it would require a lot of poles moved um so it, it's a heavy lift but i think that's if we could get something in there that would hold about five cars, it would be a huge um, benefit to moving traffic. Because a lot of times, if you have someone, you might have one car going straight and you have 10 that want to turn and they just sit there and stack up. Where if you had a little bit of a turn lane, you could bleed them, you could bleed them off. <laughs> and David, there's not. That is still the the best possible option outside of um, to Daniel's point or suggestion is going behind the CBS. Yeah, we point. can't go behind CBS. There's no it's deal. all private property. Yeah. Well, yeah, making deals requiring. Private yeah, property. there. You know, we talked about stuff like that. Before. Yeah, we we actually that one that idea came up in last year's um, budget workshop, and we did run the traps on it, but. Right. 
you know, the owners were like, no, we're building X, Y, and Z. Okay. So plan B. in order to get funding from TxDOT, because that is the highway, right, to do that and to get the water district on board, AEP on board, we have to make it a priority and we have to go through the process of making it. Yeah, it would probably be a year of just strictly negotiations and right. deal making and not really require any budgeted item, but just be a, a priority because you probably have a, a year of talking to pull it off. But we need to pass some kind of resolution yeah. in order to have that. Yeah, in our yeah, plan, yeah. Right? Okay. <clears throat> right hand turn lane on Port Street. <laughs> Come, coming out, going that way. Oh. Is it back up there, Wendy? Then? When you coming, came, what you know, if you're coming out and you're coming oh, from Charlie's coming, pasture, yeah, yeah. You're coming down Port Street to try to take yeah. the right. No, no it's it not back, back up there. Does no, it? you need a just, you need another, just down there straight arrow to get through with the ferry. Yeah, it just didn't the master plan here. have traffic suggestions, or that was further down 361, not here in town. No, it has in town stuff. Yeah, okay. Did they identify that as an issue? issue? I mean, yeah. it's in our comprehensive yeah, plan. Yeah, that's in the plan. We've, we've been told yeah. to have a better yeah. chance. Yeah, of, yeah. You know, people yeah that, that, uh, that 361 turn lane, that's in the comp plan. Oh, no, yeah. So if we push that or adopt that as our as an issue to get the ball rolling, that'll help us get, yeah. get there sooner? Yes. Is that a resolution we do in the next council meeting? Yeah, sure. Is that what you're wanting, Mayor? Yes, I think if that's if that's a desire of the council to start, I mean, if, if it's going to take a year to yes. even get it on the books, then we need to pass oh, a resolution. Yes, yeah. Yes, we need to get going. On. We need yeah. to get going. I think that's a priority. I'm on the next term. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm working on the next one. <laughs> well, so, who owns the land? Right, is Textot on that land? Which one are you talking about? Right here by a Paradise Bay. No, we whatever. do. We own it. Which which land? Well, okay, I, I, pull, I pulled it up. Which land? It's the the excess spot that's just sitting right here. Yes, yeah, that, that's Textot. That that's Textot. Right. So why yes. can't they make that the entrance into the ferry? Orig originally, that was my design. My original design. Carve that out as the ferry entrance. I remember it was right past Avenue A. Yeah. So a lot it of was. electrical <laughs> utilities there, right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, all their boxes, all their, you know, it's it's in that main section. But we could probably talk to them and see if there was a way to move some of that so that you could utilize that as an extra lane, a lane to, get to get in. To, to to reduce the flow. Just we get a rec center at the other side of the street. That's why. There you go. <laughs> well, and and that is even more. You're right. I mean, that to me is even more critical to expand Port Street into a three lane. Because if you bump that out, then you could. So if you had a right, a center, a straight, right. and a right and right. a left. Yes. Right. Exactly. And especially if you redo all your Charlie's pasture, those people want to get more traffic in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you Along can't get near this intersection on the weekend. That's, no. that's just really, yeah. Oh, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> which which we, we, well, yeah. We knew that the, we were moving the problem. Yeah, sure. And, and it, it, it it's made a dramatic difference. Yeah. I mean, you're, there's not cars driving all the way down Cotter. Yeah, there's yeah. Not cars on, you know. I mean. So what do we got? We need to talk to text out about this or what? Yeah. To get that. Yeah. Moving. Yeah. I don't live there, but I wouldn't drive down there. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> just just to help with the ferry congestion yeah. congestion traffic flow. Sure. I mean, regardless of anybody living down there just to help with that corner would mm -hmm. be tremendous to be able to get another access. And again, if we don't start putting it on their agenda, then it'll take even longer. So I think it's something that we probably ought to look at doing. 
You could do them on one resolution. Yeah, you could do the same resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Going to the same people. So. Same people. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Item U discussion on funding for boardwalk installation on Highway 361 to provide recreation and eliminate current sidewalk interruption. I think this might be from last year. Yeah, these are all leftovers. Yeah. Well, we didn't sell them. <laughs> but that one we deemed that we couldn't do, right? Wasn't there? The well, area? it's this missing piece that would have to be like a bridge. Yeah. Where is it? Right there, that missing piece. Right there. Yep. Kind of long. We, you met with, you had extensive meetings with TxDOT, didn't you, Colleen? We met with uh, someone to talk about potential funding Right. I thought it was in favor of it. It's definitely a safety concern. Yeah. So for folks to cross white there, uh -huh. um, there was an original estimate of like back when we started looking at was probably five, probably three RV. Um, it was going to probably be three hundred thousand dollars. It's going to be a great project, and KPAB had money that they could use for right. it. Now with like the cost of building in wetlands and the utility line, I think it was estimated at like a million over a million dollars for it. So and there wasn't any like real obvious um grants. So it kind of just got put on pause. <laughs> Can you go down off the road and turn it into a boardwalk and make it a way? Well that would be well, yeah, okay. the, the, the boardwalk. I don't know how much lower the elevation would be if it would be up at the same street level or I'm not sure the details of that, but it would have to be a boardwalk because it's through all that place. Uh, logistics of like how you would construct it too were complicated. The first step, I guess, would be a engineering. Yeah, I mean, it, you would probably use something like we used out at the birding center. That new surface. Just it was a big. Yeah, it's a big it's a big chunk of money for. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Part of the nation take it down. Yeah. Yeah, there is one. Mm -hmm. We'll keep looking at it. You can bump it back again next year too. <laughs> we'll bring it back again if it doesn't get it's traction by anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item W. Oh, excuse me. V. Discussion on funding for Christmas and holiday street decorations to include AEP repairs at the leaning light poles and power hanging devices or decorations of special occasions. Gee, Dave. Again, I think this was last year. <laughs> when we did do a lot. And we got some That's progress. Fun. The poles are still leaning. Mm -hmm. But we just kind of need to know how much money you want to. Well, I think leaning poles is AEP. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so this, yeah. there's kind of two different agenda items in this. The, the leaning poles is um, well, something we brought to their attention. We haven't heard oh, back. Um. But yeah, we have a lot of leaners in town. Colleen, did you have it, or in your? Do you have a budget for additional Christmas items? I have Christmas items. They're not specifically street decor. So if we want more of those um, lights on the utility mm -hmm. poles, I would need to um, put a chunk in there for that. What I have is um, more for the um, 
light things of it at Roberts Point Park, mm -hmm. expanding what we're doing out there. Mm -hmm. And then some of the um, requirements for having a choreographed music and light show, um, some new materials there. So the, the two holiday things and I ask, but I don't mind just those light pole things as long as we have the outlet point pole that's very easy. I will say storing them is difficult. We are out of storage. And so those are you know, pretty big. Um, they take up a lot of space in the store. Yeah. Um, but I got to figure out if those need to be taken up. Okay. What did we budget last year for? If it's an item. 20. Five or something, maybe. I think it was right around twenty-five. I'm sorry to bring it with to me. Buy them and put them up. Well, we Just did last year. We kind of did a hybrid, so we bought some new light poles, but we um, we contracted the light show at Roberts Point Park was a contract where we got a vendor to come in. It was their lights, so they had to storm. They set up the display. They took the display away. That's so that's yeah, that's yeah. Home, that's that's lot. great. Yeah. Uh, like for an extra fee, they might be willing to take over the utility like this work. We should look into that. That's a great idea. Yeah, that worked out really. It was a great deal that Colleen set up. I think it was eliminate storage and yeah, and it's just all the staff time and now our big cost in that was we had to put electrical in the medians. And we had to cut across and that ended up being more than we had anticipated, but it's done now and it can be even done for Colleen's original vision, if I'm not stepping on it, but was to, to go on to other holidays, like July 4th, get some red, white, and blue lighting and different yeah. things versus sure. just, just Christmas. But, That's already been established. Because mm -hmm. so the electrical the is there. They, they, it looked very good. This what you did last year looked great. So if you, there's additional yeah. money for that, that's awesome. So yeah, yeah. can we look well, into? Like if you want more on the streets, I'd like to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I feel like we'll mm -hmm. definitely be out of here on time today. Um, what, as far as lunch, do we want to reconvene at, say, 1230? Yeah, 1230. To, is that a long enough lunch break? Melinda, since you're yeah. so good at public speaking now, could you, what, what's on the menu? <laughs> huh? Green beans, rolls, salad, and cake. All right. Okay. Is it ready for us or should we start? Can All right. Make it yourself? I did not. <laughs> 12 30. 12 30. Yes, ma'am. I'll be there. You know it's going to be good. It. All right. Everyone, help yourself. Get the puppy. No, let's try to go. I got it.
came out of it. Man. We've been trying since like September to get our businesses in there just one day after that. Wow. That we're getting there, and then the guy that we're working with took a job somewhere else, and we just got lost in the shuffle. And then we got a new guy, and now he's sitting there back ordered maybe by August. I was going to say, how long are they back ordered? Because how big? I mean, you're talking. You don't, in your commissary, you don't have electrical grids. <laughs> freezers and. Oh, yeah. So you have two freezers and two more computers inside there. Bear's nervous because we have a ton of fish for our fish fry that we do in October. And he's starting to worry. We can't lose this fish. Stressing about it all the time. Yeah, we put up. We put a freezer out there for the deep sea roundup shrimp because we have a generator and they wanted to you know if we keep it going in case that slow brought a whole I told him I've been enjoying that shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> and now bring me some more <laughs> storage for you. I've been doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I did. I was quick. It was quick. They were very appreciative that they got to go outside. <laughs> my pets. Wow. I didn't help okay, my dogs out. out. Yeah. Do you have anything on? Uh, I ate a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, Callie's gone this week. So, you know, body's home. It's, it's someone, yeah. What kind of puppy? They're, they're, they're miniature doctors. I mean, it's not I'll like they're suffering forever. Yeah, we, do they know, kindle or crazy. run free? Huh? Do they kindle or run free? No, we keep them um, usually either on our like patio porch areas, which it's air conditioning, but it's like a mm -hmm. color sun porch because it's like on the or in um, my laundry room, you know, to where I mean, I don't let them run all over my house. Oh, so. free rain. I mean, they do at home, but not with not without the rain supervision, right? <laughs> so, my go to kennel when we're not seeing them, they love that. Yeah, absolutely love that kennel. One of them goes in there all the time and just lays in there. And I think if you kennel train them like that, yeah, they don't know any different, right? So it's good. Yeah, they feel like it's your brand. Yeah, yeah. they just feel safe. That one of mine, she's an old, she lays on the couch. Yeah, she doesn't do it. Yeah, that's her spot. She's 15 and she just lays out. She just lays out. And it's so nice. She's so easy going. And she'll let you know when she wants to go out. But she can go. No, it's not. Yeah, 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 it's
high schooler versus South High. Oh, they have kids now. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably time. Those aren't ours, though. <laughs> Right, the, 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 the displays are individually owned, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, so did there each? Not maybe the restaurant. So like, there's a little bit of restaurantage and whatnot out there. If they want to donate a placard of whatever those the material is with the picture, then it went on into about a public story. And then we can have a mayoring constantly. That's the word. Chamber has one. Have you yeah, updated yours lately? Yeah. Actually, haven't talked about that. That's, that's next. Yeah, that's on one of these items. All right. Yeah. Tanya comes back. Yeah. Can you remind me when you're going to need to put you that Oh, yes, for that. Okay. Did you see her? She looks like friends coming down. No. She didn't let them in. No, no, she was standing up. Oh, she was? No. <laughs> Get another hour mm -hmm. we're going to get to the start slide <laughs> but we can not clap and um <laughs> Bashley should be able to help with that there she is well, it's just a different tax id number so i think oh we count that's right it's it's not think, not under did we talk about this last time Wasn't well we haven't been with the pfc before 100 people viewing waiting all right we have a lane john i was there uh us over to more stuff to do Sorry, Lawrence. Okay, we'll reconvene. Twelve thirty-six. <laughs> Item W: Discussion and expansion of the renovation of the Civic Center building. Comprehensive plan goal TFS. So we just threw this in there. We have another item that is the convention center. Um, so this kind of ran with that. It was kind of a if we don't move forward with a convention center do we want to expand some of the space around the civic center the existing civic center and so the drawing you have is is a expansion idea and i'll pull it in here but basically the expansion idea uh is in this this area of grass right in here so you know, I think we could, you want to kick this idea to the convention center topic and just do it all at once. Sure. No, I mean, I think so. Because I think standalone wise, I don't know if we, I don't think we move forward with both. Right. Okay. Well, we can do that. So let's, let's punt this one to the convention center. Topic. So we'll, do, we'll just move on to item X first, which is discussion on the expansion and renovation of the city hall building, yeah. which is also a comprehensive plan goal. So that one there, and I'll draw this. So that drawing is basically pushing out the back of the development services area about 30 feet or so. And then, you know, again, it's it's in the courtyard area and then coming down this grass area along the side of the existing um, city hall. What this gives us, it, it gives us extra space for the, um, the sh right right now we have the our temporary building our portable out in the parking lot mm -hmm. and we have uh two of the court clerk people that th they'll eventually move over to the uh, police station but what's remaining is the str person doesn't have a home um we do envision the str program growing um we talked about it last year that it probably was warranted more than just a one person show that we eventually definitely wanted to grow it. Um, so this expansion, what it does is it, it gives the county, they would, they would get a little corner office down there. Their existing room would turn into the, their lobby. So it would get the county lobby people out of the city hall lobby. Mm -hmm. um, it shifts records and uh, the records area over to the next office that's right above the county office. That frees up <clears throat> um, the records room so we could potentially put a, a sec a, another addition to the finance office into there, um, which is needed. 
now. And right now we have code enforcement is are kind of in two little nooks and crannies mm -hmm. back in the building department. So it this expansion would push them into this <clears throat> into this back area also. So this is one way to extend the life of the current city hall without rebuilding. Um, I know there's been talk of looking at, a, and we might discuss it in the convention center, but looking at redoing, <clears throat> you know, redoing a new city hall kind of back behind the library area. If there was some type of, you know, potential trade with office space, but <clears throat> this project right here gets us more life out of this current building. And from a budget standpoint, this comes from general fund. Yeah, right? this because is a, just yeah. Okay. Now you can um, you can pay for a portion of it out of you can assign a piece of it to the STR program because it's their office space. Mm -hmm. um, you could sign a portion of it to building permits. Which is general fund. Which is general yeah. fund, but yeah, you know, so it's not. And the STR registration actually is general fund. Yeah. And has right. garnered a lot of, a lot of money. And we have our general fund, as I said, when you put that CDL into it, we're looking at about a seventeen million. Dollar. But what we'd like to do is at least get a cost on this, and then we'd bring it back to you guys with a with a cost estimate. Um, this next to Peggy at IT, the kitchen, that's not existing, correct? That's existing. It is the existing yeah. kitchen right now. Yeah, the way it's drawn in the civic center. Yeah, it is. It does. Oh, the exist. Okay, in the yeah. civic center space. Yeah, that's back the, yeah, okay. that's, that's back in the space. civic center space. I get you. All right. Because I was just thinking, yeah, I mean, if is there additional build out space, you know, to have a bigger conference area or something to where you're not your city employee kitchen is not in the chamber council area? Didn't have one in there. Yeah, yeah. you'd have to go. Sure you'd have to go back to this other idea, this civic center space expansion, and build it into that project. <laughs> Could you, Unless you took up more so, of the courtyard. Well, or you, and I'm not trying to micromanage your build, but I mean, you took, unless you took Peggy's office out, put her somewhere else and then built off a kitchen for city staff there where you weren't coming all the way down here for your rec room, break room, kitchen, you know? But I mean, the whole point is yes. Is this something we want to consider at least get a pricing on in case we don't move forward yeah. on any kind of conference space this year? I think that long term planning, we, we have to do something because y'all are mm -hmm. busting at the seams. Yeah. And we can't add the staff that we really want. Right. Exactly. Need. So we, we need additional space, yeah. so whatever that solution is. Okay. We'll keep working on that one. Okay. So item Y, discussion on the hotel conference center project request for qualifications. And then we can circle back to the item W in that discussion. What are we building? <laughs> we have options. Um, a few months ago, a couple months ago, you asked me to go back to the permit and to get a feasibility study. We're in the final phases of that. And it's all, you know, it's going to show that, yes, Port Aransas can sustain a conference center. Um, you know, it's it's looking at the attached hotel, you know, being as high as 250 room, you know, count. So, you know, there are there are a couple of developers in our town or with the known property that are interested in seeing the conference center idea move forward. Um, what else should I say? You know, the big thing is how the conference center versus, um, you know, just the, the civic center here, having the breakout rooms, having the ability to actually host conferences with updated AV and equipment, all that, 
meets today's standards um, would actually impact um, Port Aranthus year round and kind of continue to give us place for people to come enjoy and experience our city. So what, what do you want to know from me? <laughs> so, well, let's let's talk process and timing. Right. So we would have to, if this is something we were interested in, um, the biggest hang up is the is the 2017 legislation where the city got in on the um, hotel motel qualified project legislation. The problem being that the 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 comptroller you have to get a letter of private ruling, and he said go build it, and we'll see about me giving you the letter. So that really stymied the cities that were attempting to get built under this legislation because you know any any partner that a city gets to build a 50 million dollar um complex needs guarantees on the on the money and they're not going to get loans if the state isn't saying this will be a qualified hotel project so by the comptroller saying go build it and then I'll see if I give you the letter of private ruling it ran everyone off. So whether or not we can use the 2017 legislature and recapture this. So, so what the 2017 legislature did was if you built a qualified project, it would the state would rebate its portion of sales tax and hot tax back to the project for, I think, 15 years, was it? Yeah, 15 year period. And then the city would also kick back their portion. So it was a pretty decent pot of rebate money that would go back to the developer, if, you know, for their for their hotel motel qualified project. This with the state backing out of that, it it it's less attractive. Um, however, there are plenty of cities that are getting some of these things built without any. Uh, agreement or any attraction whatsoever they're just doing it on their own would that be the case for the city i don't know that's kind of an unknown um so if we if we can't do the hotel qualified project we need to figure out what's the next best thing and that would be a you know a, are we 380 or 381 lawrence we're 380 so we could still do a, a 380 agreement which allows the city to enter into a contract without the state, and we could put in rebates. Um, you know, so there's still something that we could throw on the table to and entice someone to build. We just got to figure out, you know, what that is. And um, I think the QAP or whatever, whatever the initials are acronym, yeah, I think that still is um, on the roll. This in terms yeah. of the opportunity for the developer. Right. But our hotel guy will be here on the 29th. You can ask him directly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, it does boil down to a couple of things. You know, you know, however, if we were to move forward with it, how you structure the RFQ or the RFP, you know, what part of town you want to see it in it's here? Is it down there? Or, you know, what are we really looking at? Um, how we develop it? Um, you know, there's definitely a, a void in Port Aransas for um, quality meeting space. Um, been that way forever, but I do think it's a nice um, addition to our our growing destination. But so we'll have our study in what about two weeks, right? And the study will basically tell you what size the hotel they think it needs to be, how many rooms, what size your convention space is, your breakout rooms. So it'll it'll have everything in that study of what they think is the is ultimately the perfect fit for our community. And they even they can scale it back or up or down. So let's say yeah. it's 250, you can look at 180, you can look at 150, and look at the profit models or the margins for where that's expected to be over the next you know, five to 10 years. Yeah. So did you have a study before? There was one done. Yep. Uh, we did one back in 20, it was, po it was post hurricane, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was right around there. I think it was 18. It's been a while. And this is the same firm yeah. that kind of took that one, dusted it off, and really focused it mostly on demand um, rather than the last one really got into location specific. Um, you know, so looking at the Senate Shore uh, agreements and then 
think Palmia was involved last time. Yeah. We had some stuff even where the Red Roof Inn was under consideration, uh, as well as maybe another location that. Yeah, it was, didn't they look at the 67 acres? I think 67 yeah, acres yeah. was the other one. So um, this time it's really kind of just laying it out there of what the market can su support. Um, and then talks a little bit about location, you know, so like here or down the road, basically, but um, it should be ready in a week or two. Yeah. So that that plays into decisions on this, as well as how the rec center. So I think that those three buildings really play off of each other uh, in, a, in a formal sense of how we structure it all, you know, and how the, the things can support one another or add on so that you know your rec center could end up being big banquet center also for the gym that holds your big events like deep sea roundup or um, papa or, or not papa um, pave you know some of the bigger events or we can redo this one but then you don't have the breakout rooms you don't have the connected hotel necessarily upgraded as well uh, which is sorry I think the study though is gonna, I mean, it's the study is not again for a convention center, it's conference. for a conference center. Big difference, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, there's yeah. a big difference. So while this building supports a lot of our community events and events that bring tourism right. as well, clearly, because it's booked all the time, it has a capacity that you know we are many times overloading. Um, and so I I think as a community tourism and just community we certainly need some kind of larger conference space i mean like daniel's emt conference perfect example i mean busting at the seams couldn't put another person in there which you could probably grow and how many people do you think that was that that were a conference attendees and i mean that's not very many you know people in the grand scheme of things right so I mean, we are talking about a conference space that could possibly hold maybe what seven hundred, maybe double that. Yeah, depending on the setup and design yeah. or something like that. But um, six to seven hundred comfortably, because again, with the breakout rooms, you're able to push them in there. But then eventually, they want that big banquet area to host <laughs> an opening reception or closing dinner, whatever. I mean, even like the deep sea roundup, I'm certain they could probably. I mean, it's super packed in there, right? I guess yeah. it is. For every, yeah, every time, so. <laughs> um, With QHP, we would give up the 2% sales tax, but we still get the hotel motel tax and lodging. Correct, yeah. Yeah, if you pass the 2% hot tax? No, what? from the QH, oh. from the hotel so if rebate. State oh. oh. Just be on those keys attached to that hotel, you know. So, like, if it, if it was here and they built a 250 room, it would be those two different things. Yeah, you're not you're not using hot tax from the other parts of the city to pay for it. No, uh, you what, don't collect from them. What yeah. did you rebate, or is everything negotiable? If the state won't give the the six and a quarter, there's a there's a bunch of different tools, Dale, that you could. I mean, you can do um, you could do like a you could do some utility rebates. Um, you could do, uh, of course, hot tax, sales tax, um, mainly utilities and, you know, you water, sewer, uh, parking, any, any kind of drives, lighting, electrical. And what do developers want in return? I mean, they don't want us to just give them back all the tax money for 15 years. I mean, they, they have want, some. They want everything they can get. They yeah, yeah, they, they, they want so anything they can get. Stand firm on this is what we're yeah. going okay. to give, okay. we want to give, or we don't want to give. You know, yeah, like I mean, other I mean, we've never given anything okay. historically. I do think, you know, so, it, and the question becomes is it a conference center that the city wants to own and, um, you know, lease it back to a management company? Um, or is it, um, you know, something that, that they own independently, which is a really tough sell for most of the hotels. So typically it's a joint partnership between the city and a developer where the city owns the land and the conference center um, and then leases it back part of the bigger complex of a, a hotel area. At least that's what I've seen. 
what what size track of land are we talking about for a facility like that with parking and all? That would that would <laughs> that, that, that would do it. So when you look at five acres plus, yeah. Right. When you look at the, the corner here, that you know, there's there's obviously two owners yeah, in that whole circle. circle. Um, yeah. You know, so that <clears throat> from the place hotel back, you know, to our area and all of that is is city owned and one person owned. You know, so that whole area could encompass city hall along with um, hotels and a redefined conference center. The other one, you know, um, obviously I would like the Palmia types and Central Shore types, um, you know, they would have other land that they could acquire. Yeah, that, like that area right there is seven plus acres. And you can throw in the, con what, isn't that our building right there? Yeah. Maybe we could be part of the solution to that. I know we're talking about the dog pound soon, <laughs> but that is part of this um, consideration as well, long-term, you know, where does, where does the animal shelter eventually fit in the long-term range plan of a city? And um, yes, I won't go too deep into that. That's another agenda item. <laughs> but I think, you know. Talked about moving that for a long time. Yeah. A lot of people said. Know where to move it. And where to move it. I don't know where to move it. So. Anyway, the conference center is said it'll be done. I'll deliver it to y'all and you can kind of evaluate it. But I think you evaluate you know, at least the two things, the civic center here, as well as the conference center idea and, and come up with something we can move forward with, you know, still this coming yeah. budget year. I don't think right, and I don't think it's a budgeted item, really. It's really, uh, if it, if anything, you would just develop your RFQ and put that out. <clears throat> and I don't think this upcoming budget season you'd have any expenditures on it. If you did, you could do an amendment. Or a yeah, yeah. It's... But moving forward on that uh, does play into back to item W, which is talks about the expansion and renovation of yeah. the Civic Center building. So, I mean, this building has been here since 1980. Yeah, 81. It needs, in my opinion, no. <laughs> a facelift. <laughs> <Terrible. laughs> not a re reboot. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, the kitchen and the bathrooms are lovely, and it's not horrible by any means, but I mean, it needs to be painted on the outside. I mean, there are a lot of Yeah, we need to redo all the stucco. All the stucco yeah. painting. And well, there's trim work. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of TLC that it needs that I feel like should at least be in this budget cycle. Yes. Um, just to make it looking like a better facility. We're not going to have a new and improved conference center and or civic center overnight, but we could aesthetically improve the way this building looks on the exterior until and, our long-term plan is better defined. And interior, you know, your AV equipment in here could be upgraded. It needs, if we put that in last year's budget, Rick's still That's working right. on that because he's, he's going to have it done for this. Exploded, just how we, how we and soundproofing some of the room, you know, or yeah. do it so that it's usable for our maintenance. Yeah. But I do <laughs> think long term, I mean, David's sketch, um, back to item W, your sketch, David. I mean, if if this is not, the end all be all new and improved conference center. Um, I mean, I do think just the schematics of what you propose or what this is proposed by staff, um, you know, maybe adding some meeting space, maybe adding some storage, extra storage and in, in, in buildings in the back could help with some of your overflow with city staff and facilities crew. And, you know, e even if you did, Long term, keep this building, which I'm assuming we would keep until unless we decided our plan was demolished all and start over. You could add some meeting rooms. Where you're going to build new, if you stayed here, where you're going to build new, maybe not on top of this, but the new construction, which you go two stories and put put the support staff. Oh yeah, if you were building a brand new city hall, no, no. your expansion into the parking lot and the green space. No, it's all one. You can't go to if you're yeah, gonna build. Well, you, you could, but I mean, this, if you expand back here in the civic area, I don't think we'd put staff up above it. 
we really need staff over there. Or two stories over there. Yeah. With an elevator. You would have to put an elevator idea. <laughs> yeah. It had to be Required. small expansion. Um, okay, so. So I think I'll come back with a hybrid version. Okay. Of, of city hall expansion with the office space. And then with not this full blown civic idea, but at, at least um, staff break room, some extra storage, perhaps IT movement, moving IT, but kind of a scaled down version of W. Okay. What if were you talking about putting a building behind the library? Could you have an extra small building over that, there with STRs and coaches? Well, that would be. Something? That would be if you did a huge partnership with the owner there, Mr. Bakta, and basically you brainstormed and you remaster planned this whole area. You know, you might tear this down. It comes back as a new civic, you know, new civic space. You know, that it's it's it would be a massive partnership. Yeah, just a smaller building behind the library to expand your offices here, just right across the parking lot behind the library. Well, we really need we need we need connectivity. We need to be yeah. under the same roof. Okay. Yeah. All the departments, <clears throat> at least that are here at City Hall, we do a lot of right. I mean, we're in each other's offices mm -hmm. daily, all day long. Okay. Daniel, for your EMS stuff. Can you tell us, did more people stay in a hotel or did more people stay in STRs? I'm just wondering in conferences where they bring families. Oh, for the floor conference. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have an agreement with um, the Hampton and Best Western. Okay. And both of those, I don't know where the room block is exactly. I think they do like 20 minutes each. And then after that, it's all like STRs. Do you yeah. think it's because of family or just a group of people got together and rented a house? A lot of people bring their families. Would you envision the type of conferences we have because we are a destination before a conference area? That cities would be families sort of stringing it together. Um, the, the question is, <laughs> would they bring their families? Well, yes. as opposed to we're going to have a, a convention in yeah. Dallas, industry convention in Dallas. Yeah. Maybe families come here in this type of setting. Do more of them bring their families? Yeah, 100%. The wife's going to go, okay. right, the husband's going to be like, hey, I'm going fishing. Or I'm going to right. go. Right. They're going to go do beach. stuff. You know, so, yeah, 100%. And staying on both ends. Staying Early or late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Conference. Oh, we're coming back next year yeah. in the summer because they had such a you know, good time. So, a conference center is great to have. It's a destination driver. Or did all of us. I mean, they, they came in, our conference was three days and they were staying five to seven. Five to seven. Some people were coming the entire week. Some people were coming the weekend. That's all we used to be only on the weekend or we moved it to a Wednesday or Friday. And then they stay the extra Saturday, Sunday. So I mean, uh, yeah, and then we have our, when our, like our beach event, it's not just we, we invite families to. So it's going to be kids running around, there's tons of family, and it brings in a lot more people in it, all the fishing and yeah. uh, golf. And so a conference center could get utilized a lot more. Than a 250, I mean, the 250 room hotel could be for anybody staying. Plus, if there are convention people who want to stay in a hotel, yes, if given the choice, yeah, it's going to sell out on you know spring break weeks and right. things like that. You know, so okay. I think it's it's really looking at how do we continue that business through April, through March, and, mm -hmm. and you know the summer months are going to be you know. Up. hotels are you know don't sell it all quickly as our sdrs though you know so i think there's a shift in some of the demand but i do believe the type of hotel project you're looking at here is going to be probably full service um you know hotel that would attach it so you're talking about nice rooftop bar a nice um nicer brand um it's going to bring people in with a full service restaurant probably attached or some sort of um, addition. But don't you think, um, and it seems like if I, I remember from this study, if, if you build a conference space, you do a conference hotel and whether whatever kind of agreement that is, city or private partner, you know, but because those conferences want that, right? I mean, I know we have other options to the Daniel's right. point and they can stay at SDRs or whatever, but you can't put on a conference without saying 
we have guaranteed rooms, rooms. Yeah. right just and like all the ones we all go to right on site or close by yeah. or whatever yeah. 75% of meeting planners just say pass we'll, 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 we'll go to all right wherever so that's why we need us i mean that's why it's got to be some kind of space that has that ability to have exactly. that hotel connected. And then they work with that hotel on room rates. They got the blocks. They know they've got enough space for everybody. Mm -hmm. they don't have to contact 30 different hotels or property management companies. Right. To, to mm -hmm. so, yeah. Somewhat close. I mean, every conference we all go to anything, but right. River Center, very awesome. Parking and attached. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so as far as the items go, for item W, you're going to come back with some mm -hmm. kind of hybrid, yep. scaled down, type, different version. X, we talked about saying that's going to combine W and X, maybe. Yeah, yes. And then Y, we're going to wait for the RF, or we're going for the study to come back and then kind of lead into an RFP, RFQ. Correct. Okay, any other questions from anybody? All right, item Z we talked about. So we're going to go into double A discussion on broadband improvements, comprehensive plan goal TFS 1C and TFS 3A. Getting good mileage out of you today. <laughs> nice <laughs> to I know. See what you meant? <laughs> you just start. Um, yeah, you started all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. The, um, so, Connected Nation, we contracted with them. You guys have that wonderful plan now that um, outlines all your broadband. You know, the core issues are still where the service is coming from the south, and we need some input from the north. So that's going to take some long, heavy lifts, but there's some short-term wins that we can do in negotiating and, and in contacting our cell service providers, cell service providers, as well as some of the broadband companies in town. So we know we know there's a problem, right? They came out and did the big study in March, and, and we, they were deplorable, and you know, our latency, uh, which is one of the things they measure somehow it needs something was you know off the charts horrible. Um, we even had the sell on wheels, which they call cows that came in off 11th street to help T-Mobile was still horrible. And then we have the over the dunes, the whole beach side. We have an issue to address there for signal reaching you know, the actual beach road and some of those things. So we have a, a nice report um, that I've shared with Wendy and David. I do think um, you know, we just need to start plugging away. We can hire this company again to do it, although I think there's some connections we could make and we've already made with AT&T to kind of continue those conversations and Hunter can help us uh, as well as our representative to push forward through some of these companies that he has dealings with as well. So I think, um, you know, there's a path, there's a couple of paths we can take, but we just need to take them. I don't know what kind of budget you need for that. Yeah. Um, no idea. Been fighting that a long time. You know, under emergency services, you can get barrier a lot more reliable on internet. We go over the big companies, all radio systems, have an internet base. You got to have that access. You got to have more of a system, wider uh, bandwidth, at least for basic communication for emergency services. Mm -hmm. The other thing they pointed out on the fiber and the of the internet was coming through um, North Padre, the, the expansive drive ones they're going through. It's still all the same line, right? right. <laughs> it's still got to split it up somehow. So, I mean, we've got some long term issues. Um, we can definitely fix some problems quickly and maybe get, you know, cell service finally out at 361, a little bit further out in our homes or in our offices. But um, the broadband. You know, you, we just need more fiber, obviously. And we do have a company coming in now, and I forgot their name. Right Speed. Right Speed is doing all fiber 100%, you know. And so they're wiring a lot of these new developments, new construction things, you know, having a great um, standard. But it's still a lot of need lot for of improvement, gaps. a lot of gap. So, well, I mean, I think from the city, we can continue to reach out to those partners, those providers to feel out their ability to help us, even like the nodes, putting in the beach nodes that they talked about. Yes. So which would be the, helpful. Yeah, one of the solutions to getting signal on the beach was figuring out where we can actually put cell, mini cell towers or things that would go on access roads or other things in the dunes or around them that would project it out there at certain places. Um, also just looking at the inventory of what is available inside the city limits that can shoot out a little bit further or partnering with county pier not to put you know 
Sam Castle on the Hook or some of those um, <laughs> high rise condos and Bill Shores and those things, even outside of those, that could push um, additional cell service um, down the way just a little bit. So I think. I think we're going to need a little bit of advice from transportation moving forward. Yeah. I am not. We, um, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I've been an ATT guy for a while. I was rising before that. I had T Mobile too. And I switched it out because you know, none of them are perfect. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to need a little bit of advice from the professionals, anyways. But I do think we have some powerful moves that we can make um, as a city in the next three months, really, two, three months. So as far as a budget item should be, I mean, I think we should figure out a reasonable placeholder for that. And then if we can get Connected Nation and they get in touch with AT&T and some of the other providers in the next 60 days and see what some of those short-term solutions would be, I think that would be good, at least for this budget cycle. And then I don't think Connected Nation costs a lot. You know, no. I, so I'm not even thinking that's... Not even six figures, so that's like less than a hundred thousand easily to four women. Um, but, yeah, to find a lot, uh, <laughs> to find a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we the first round of, of this, and it was somewhere around 27,000, I think, 30,000. So I can imagine it's somewhere in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. But I do also think the bigger things are going to be those how you work with the cell providers mm -hmm. and partner with them to build something on the city's behalf as well as their behalf, and it's some sort of, I don't know, kind of how that works. That's where I get no idea. Well, AT&T was very interested in helping with the first responder system. Yep. So I think that's definitely the first step that we need to jump into to make sure that we get them what they need. And Verizon, I mean, and all three cell companies need to have a meeting in the short main cities. Here's, here's how bad we are. What yeah. are you going to get? Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that's where Connected Nation can help get them to the table. Right? Yeah. If Hunter can't. You know, if you just have this model, like they can improve the way that it's work. Right. Otherwise, so I think there's strategies to do it, but I have no idea what we're talking about. You know, the city cell tower or what, you know, what know. that means. Okay. But everybody's on board with putting something yes. in the budget to try to make yes. that an improved. Part of the city. You're saying for Connected Nation or Dr. Moore? Probably. Yeah. Uh, more. <laughs> 30. <laughs> we can always back down. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, if it's, it's, it's great. But I think it was um, And we're happy to help co sponsor some of that. All right, way. we'll work on it. You want to co sponsor it? You say all of it? I, <laughs> I didn't say that. Oh, some. <laughs> he said co sponsor. I was oh. doing my hot <laughs> That's right. That's right. But I do have private sector dollars in there. We do mm -hmm. play around with. So well, thank you for bringing Connect the Nation to the table and paying yes. for that first part. So yes. that made, made <laughs> a difference. <laughs> okay, A B discussion on reorganizing and reallocation of funds for the beach <laughs> parking sticker program. Okay, this has come up two years in a row, or maybe yeah. So there is a <clears throat> kind of a we're discombobulated with Corpus Christi on the money allocation. I think they get about about forty four percent. We get thirty eight point five percent. Yeah, I know exactly what we get. And then, we get you told 40%. you quoted this earlier today, right? That, and then, that exact breakdown is in our books. You, didn't you, you already send a letter to Zanoni? Oh, letters. yeah, we did. I thought that was part of the beach parking permit. And I think they get forty six. Are they at 46? They're at 44 or 46. Right. The county's at, I think, Fif seven. No, they're at 15. They're 15? Yeah. Well, we're at 38 and a half, so. <laughs> and yeah, Corpus right. never took it to their elected officials. No, the, yeah. So Corpus, when we, we sent a letter to Peter Zanoni about, no, uh, it was probably February of 22. And we said, hey, we're gonna we're gonna pull out of this thing. We want to realign the the monies. Basically, you keep what you sell, we'll keep what our we sell, and we'll both give the county, you know, their fifteen percent, which doesn't change their dollar amount at all. So he kicked it down to one of his assistant city managers. We worked with them for about four months. Um, they responded in May of twenty two and said, hey, we we 
you know, we took it to our um, economic, um, we took it to our, what was it, some economic audit board and they declined your, you know, your suggestion. And I said, well, the agreement says the suggestion goes to city council. So, you know, I, I don't care what your audit board said about, you know, our ask, you know, you need to take it to city council. Um, so then they said, oh, well, we didn't read the agreement. I, I guess we'll take it to city council. And then we didn't hear back for a couple months. And then we finally heard that the assistant city manager either fired or got or left. So <laughs> it died again. There's a, <clears throat> there's only a, there's only about a <clears throat> two month window for us to pull this off because <laughs> you need to do it around July, August before the end of September, because you have to be, we would, if we're on our own, we have to be able to have enough time to order our own stickers and have them show up by January 1. So you can't just get out of this deal at any time mm -hmm. of the year. We don't want to do it too early because we did it like in May or June, you might not have any stickers. So now is the time to make this move again. Um, the GLO is somewhat involved. They don't want to see a, they don't want to see three individual sticker programs in the coastal bend. They don't want to see the county with their own sticker, mm -hmm. Port A with their, they, you know, they want everyone working together. That being said, they, after seeing our numbers, they were in agreement. They were like, yeah, that's kind of a raw deal that that you know you guys are giving three hundred thousand dollars to the city of Corpus, and you're outselling them just because you're outselling a whole lot of stickers more than they are. And it, it the original agreement was based on mileage of beach, and Corpus has about one mile more than the city. So the the thought was, oh, they'll have more beach maintenance. But the fact of the matter is, is that they have less beach maintenance because they choose not to do as much beach maintenance as we do. So it's kind of a double whammy because we get less, but we're spending way more on our beach facilities than they do. They have a worse trash program. They have hardly any skiddo cans. They, they don't do, do nearly the, the, the beach work that we do. So, you know, I don't know where they're stuffing their money, but, it, they get two percent hotel motel tax yeah. back also. So it's kind of a raw deal that we're getting that we're losing out on, you know, two hundred and fifty to three hundred grand a year, just because of this twenty-two year old agreement that's in place that's based on miles. The agreement can be simply um, reworked and signed by all three parties: the county, the city, and the city of Corpus. So, I think it's time to resend the letter and say or we we could just give them the 90 days and just say we're we're out um we'll be you know because that's all it takes the agreement is all all you need is a 90 day but we we've, we've brought it to their attention they're basically just ignoring us the GLO would want one sticker yeah so we'd have to print our stickers the same as their stickers and we could have our own sticker and just say, "Hey, we we'll, we'll accept the we'll honor your it, yeah, we'll honor your sticker if if someone's parking on our city beach and with a corporate person. sticker." Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I I was talking to David about this too. I mean, I think that you know the the previous discussion was let's increase the price. Well, that was what the <laughs> Nueces County and Corpus price. wanted to go up to twenty. Obviously, that's just a bigger piece of the pie for them, and no work. Right. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. And so, I mean, I think, I mean, we could, and, I, and honestly, $12 for parking on the beach all year is cheap, you know, in the grand it's scheme of things. Dollars. Right. <laughs> but I mean, if, if we said, okay, we're going to keep all the same uniform sticker, but whatever we sell is our $12, whatever you sell is your $12, then, I mean, that would be one approach, obviously, if they'd be agreeable to that. Now, they may not like that because the way kind of doesn't sell any stickers and and they don't. Yeah. I mean, they $17,000 worth, I think last year. That's why our, our um, proposal was for the County to keep the percentage that they were already yeah. getting. 
you know. Yeah, their dollar amount wouldn't change. That we would we would get fifteen percent of what we sell to the county. Sixteen or sixteen, yeah. whatever the person is. Yeah. And then city of Corpus keeps theirs, and we keep ours. Yeah, and I think we would give them just a small number for managing the the, the sticker part of the deal. We pay them now for the actual cost of the printing of the sticker. Mm -hmm. You know, they they provide us that invoice, and it's percentage wise proportionately split by our percentage breakdown of the, the yeah, sticker. So they program. still do that. Mm -hmm. They don't have beach. <laughs> but they don't have beach. <laughs> they don't have beach. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. I mean, the right? I mean, they do they? I mean, but I mean, they don't charge anything. Mm -hmm. No, they charge so to get in their do. beach parking to get area. In the, yeah. To get in that yeah. base, they do. But they're not going very far. Yeah, they're not. They got a gate. Yeah. Yeah. It's gated. But we'd like to send the letter. Yeah. I that's a good idea. He ignored us last year. He yeah. did. I mean, I remember you called him when yeah. we were sitting in there. He didn't even know anything about it, really. Yeah. Oh, he did. <laughs> well, he was playing like he did. Well, what letter are you want to send? Just the notice to the city of Corpus Christi, giving them the 90 day that we're going on our own. Okay. Unless they redo the agreement, we'll just, we're going on our own. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go that. Yeah, I do. Without any kind of discussion? Uh, I, I think I think you give them the 90 day and then you say you stuff. you write the letter yeah. unless you agree to an alteration in the project. But here's the 90 day notice. I think you at least got to start the 90 day notice clock to bring them in to bring them to the table. That would force them not to ignore the system. Yeah. Go. If they ignore you, do you start printing them in July and August? Yeah. yeah. Well, don't give well no, 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 no. We'd start because no. they're good for the year. Yeah, I mean, if you give a no, ninety-day notice, June, June, July, you know, so, you know, yeah, October first, you're on your own, okay. and we'd order we our still own. Still printed by October. Yeah, 1st. that would be a lot of work to have to do. I think they're going. To it is a lot of work. The only thing we I don't mean, do is print them, and then everyone's going to have to go get the new sticker for the last three months of the year. Oh, no, no, no. We, we started January 1. January. Okay. I was like, why? Yeah. Did you no, we have enough. Yeah. We have a big enough stash to last us, but right. no, we'd start January 1. Are we able to change the price then if it's just us? No, no the price is set by the yeah. coastal management. Okay. All right. If the price is high, especially if we're getting the full amount. And, and the county still gets there. So we yeah. We don't agitate them. No. They send a letter. Hey, they got a mayor. I know. And we I'm, got a mayor. I, 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 know. I personally would, I personally have no, I have a good relationship with Paulette and Connie. So I have no problem talking to both of them about it. And I don't yeah. think that they wouldn't be receptive to it. So, I mean, I'm not opposed to sending the letter, but I, I feel like good community relations, I should reach out to them both and tell them that the letter's sure. coming. Yes. Rather than just yeah, having to be yeah. a letter. Yeah, that's true. They're both very they reasonable. Well, yeah. I mean, the letter was already the letter was sent yeah. a year and a half ago. Entire council. No. And and I have a very good relationship with the city of Corpus Council representative for the Padre. Well, no, I think it did go to council. Here's why. Because I was I was told by one of the council members that they went running to the general land office and cried foul to try to stop it. I thought he was on the audit committee. That's why. He no, no, it, it was a council member. So they knew. But some council members are on audit committee. Yeah, oh, they are. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's how you're structured. With a few on your audit committee. Yeah, they, they definitely whined about the revenue and how it would lose them departmental money. And I don't know what they're spending on. Well, just happen. It, it has to happen quick because this window is real narrow. Okay. Did we need a resolution in order to do that? Um, 
because that's that's just a discussion item. So is that something we can no, do I can't, until no. July? You guys passed the resolution a year and a half ago. It still stands. Still in progress. It's still in play. I mean that that council vote that you guys directed me to already do this. I don't. We don't need to redo that. You guys already directed me to renegotiate the whole deal. So that still stands. Okay. I don't know. I, obviously, I wasn't here, so I don't remember what that said. But if it's the yeah. same verbiage and the same wording. Yeah. Then... It's summer of. It would have been in 21. 21. Yeah. February early. Yeah. Yeah, we'll f I'll find it, but I mean, it still stands. I mean, it was a council directive to me to renegotiate the the parking, and if they didn't, then send out the ninety days. So, I mean, okay. it's still on the table. Okay. So, everybody's in favor of that in general. Okay. Do you still want to talk to them? Yeah, let's yeah. give the mayor. No, I mean, I, yeah. I think that's the right yeah. thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And my, you know, the letter saying you more time. Right. So we'll yeah. Revisit that letter. Right. And sure. Conversation saying, hey, this was sent originally. But yeah. Never heard anything. Exactly. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, because you, I mean, I, and right. we had a different county judge at the time as well. So sure. that's correct. Players. A lot of new players. Yeah, sure. New people. Is our beach wider than theirs? Hmm. Better. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. better. I'm just wondering if there's a lot of square footage of beach or something. No, it just needs to be you. You, you sell your yeah. You, you guys make ours, your yeah. effort to sell tickets, yep. and we'll do our effort, we'll and we'll our both beach. benefit from we'll said effort beach. put out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So discussion on maintaining permit for the proposed sixty-seven acre marina, Com comprehensive plan goal LHC three B. Okay. So. In case you guys don't know, the the 67 acre marina site is located out out Port Street, and it roughly does something like this. That's the that's the rough. That's kind of a rough outline of it. The marina basin, it, it would have a jet, it has a the the permit. So the, the core permit's good for five years. The core permit has been redone and reapproved in 1998, 2003, 2009, 2013, 2018. So there's been, I believe five versions of it um the basin kind of comes in like this kind of dog legs comes back goes like that so we just met with the core um the current version of the permit is about it it's about at 95 percent completion right now so it's it's almost it's the core said it's to the finish line it just needs to take that last step so it's it's extremely close. Um, we gave them an updated boat slip count um, two weeks ago. Um, so they just need some final information on some of the details of the actual slips and the actual layout of the of some of the um, of the um, of the docks of the floating docks. So. They're getting really close to having everything they need to make their final determination letter. But um, we were thinking that probably within about four months, we could have the permit in hand. So we've been working on this for about three years now, this last update. And so once we get it, it'll be, it'll be a, another five-year um, permit. As it grown from the date of issue no it's pretty no it has not grown i mean the site's the same um through the years the the first three versions were just basically all we had to do was submit a letter 
and it was a very simple, simple process around the around the 2009 version. They requested an updated wetland delineation, which wasn't which wasn't a hard lift for us. Um, the 2013 version got a little bit um, a little. They wanted a little bit more. We ended up doing the marina study in 2014 as um, backing evidence. They wanted to see what a um, they wanted to see what the um, tanker ship effect would have on the marina and um, what the shoreline uh, bathymetry was doing in the area. So we, so in 2014, for that version, we, we did a very detailed study of the marina and the shoreline. We submitted that, that was enough to get us, get us that version of the permit. This version has basically been a brand new permit. That's what's taken this one so long, is that <clears throat> the days of just getting a renewal letter you know, one page. Oh yeah, here you go. Here's another five years. Those days are, those days are over. Now they, now they look at it more on more of a regional le level and they want to analyze, Hey, there's X amount of marinas going into the coastal bend at the moment. Is this needed? What's the, you know, you know, so it, they, they take a much harder look at things now um, than they did 15 years ago. So this, this latest version has is almost like we just started from scratch so it was a, in essence a brand new permit and it's taken multiple years but we're almost there so the next question would be is if we get it what's our you know what's our next step but we'll at least have the permit in hand So we'll basically have a jetty going out just like you've drawn there. Yeah, similar to that. Similar. It's 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 I think the design would be somewhat similar to the um, you know, it it might change the angle, but it would be similar to the um island moorings um piper channel entry. I don't think it would be a big, you know, like that one there. It has, you know, rock rock towards the shallower end and then um it's a it's a piling and sheet pile based um jetty system so it would be probably similar to that that would be the most cost effective um the angle might change um you know the shape you know it might have you know it might have like a dog leg or something in it you know built into it like you know depending on um when we did the when we did the uh, ship tanker study, uh, we did three different shapes. So the engineers will, will analyze what shape did what. The other issue that we we'll, that we're also addressing was, um, you know, when they modeled this, there was um, on a on an outbound heavy laden tanker. There was a lot of movement in this basin, a lot of wave action from the sucking out and then it's shooting back in. So there's there's they did a couple different studies where they rounded the edges because the 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 other marina had like real kind of 90 degree corners on it. So they did a they they analyzed what it would do to soften the soften all the corners and bring down that that wave movement inside the basin. And then the thing we discussed with the core yesterday was the possibility of um, of having in the where the where the basin kind of comes back would have some a, a, a water exchange um, in the back corner where you had like a you know a certain size culvert you know a box culvert or several several round culverts that. As water sucked out the main jetty system, you know, you know, would having some type of connectivity, um, you know, a couple hundred feet away help that wave movement within the basin. So things like that need to be ironed out. Um, but we can do that on the fly once we get our permit. It would just be a minor adjustment to the permit to round your edges, 
you know, at a at a water exchange, um, you know, but those those can be done on the fly. What what kind of depth would they dig that out? What do you? Um, they they would. I mean, it would probably be. You know, a couple things would come into play. The um, the the corpus. You know, the the Porta Corpus Christi um, is going to have a say on how far out the jetties go, what their shape is, what they look like, because that is all their jurisdiction. So that, you know, they would have a say on um, <clears throat> depth wise. I think you're, you know, we're looking at having pretty sizable boats get in and out of there. So 15 feet, 10 feet. Or mm -hmm. feet. Yeah. Yeah. What's the depth, Kelly, when you come in? Through the jetties of our current marina. Yeah. It probably starts out deep and then ends up around the 10 to 12 mark. Well, I think maintain the permit is the first step, yeah. which is important. So yeah. we'll keep doing that and then come up with the next steps. Yeah. Okay. After that, any other discussion? All right, item AD discuss on funding for the repairs to the animal shelter. Yes, Mark, I hadn't seen the uh, rendering of the plans for the animal shelter or. Yeah, so the okay, so give you the what page is there? 124 is just where the city oh it's in the back reported. Yeah. So last year we budgeted uh two hundred and eighty thousand dollars for what was called kind of a, a a refresher project to get the offices looking good and to do do a you know to do a general cleanup as far as the money would go. Um we also re-sat the animal shelter board last year. So they finally had a full, a full crowd and they started meeting. Um, they went through a bunch of rounds with the, you know, the animal shelter work group and Lawrence was involved and the scope kind of grew on them. And the late the latest version that i got from the architect her estimate it was over a million dollars yeah it, we were, it, well we had seen that building that <clears throat> somebody wanted to sell that had kennels yeah and we wanted to go off to side with those but then it just went to the engineering yeah so it definitely ramped a little bit out of control so it so we kind of put the brakes on it it was it was that kind of happened in April. So we were like, Hey, we're right around the corner from goals workshop. So we just, we tapped on the brakes and just kind of put it on hold until, uh, until the goals workshop. We had somebody that was trying to write some grants and stuff, but that didn't work out. Right. Chief. So, um, I don't know. Well, is there anything in the works right now to, just like clean it up or shape well, it up or do anything. I mean, we we've been we 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 stopped spending money as far as this budget went. So Lawrence and a small group did a did a a really good general cleanup about what a month ago. Um, so that's all we've done until you know until we got this number back to you guys. Yeah, we've still been cleaning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But um, their yearly budget, though, what is their yearly budget? Well, they're in the police department budget, and I'd say they've probably got about 20000 25000 Oh, five. Oh, five. Yeah. But it's you get about 20000 in donations, too. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't had to increase the general fund budget for it. Now that's just uh, supplies, or we count utilities and personnel and all that. That's covered outside the general fund facilities fund, right? 
Well, no, it's covered in the general fund, but it's not in a specific, you know, it's in the personnel budget and utility budget. Or, or that's what I mean. Those yeah. particular items, yeah. not, a, not a separate line. Not a separate so line. So the $5,000 is for food. supplies. Okay. Operating. Operating. So operating. Expenses. Okay. Not, not for the <clears throat> police officers. Yeah, per, yeah right. Yeah. Or building utility. Yeah. Vehicles. No capital outlay. Got it. Okay. That, Utilities, insurance, nothing. Right. But the, just, the, just that, that budget's coming up later. This okay. is this item is strictly on the the on construction. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's where we're at. We're yeah. Just kind of trying to figure. I mean, the the original idea was to get in there, do a. It was kind of a. We knew that two eighty wouldn't, you know, wasn't a complete, you know, top to bottom renovation. It was get get the office space better for the worked for the two workers and then you know clean up paint uh expand small office off the, off that building the, the actual office space is inside the children so we're gonna separate yeah yeah we were gonna yeah but i guess the guys said they would rather have the kennels instead of the um i'll speak a little bit to it just a little bit more detail. Yeah, so 288 was budget, last budget goals. Uh, I wasn't here for that. Um, but the way this grew a little bit through the, the scope creep, you know, the board net, I think kind of net since uh, COVID. Um, a veterinarian who inspects places in the board. We have other people that also support the board. Mm -hmm. um, and it was advised that we need a treatment room specifically spraying these animals treatment and then let them drip dry so it needs to happen so it kind of went that direction and then also a meet and greet room for the animals you know keeping the time with them sit so uh, all these things were discussed and that's why we kind of put the brakes on it but what it what it really breaks down to um what we have uh figured out and what i want to call that that preliminary design with them is um Five hundred eighty-nine thousand six hundred three bucks. If we were to face this in two different budgets, um, for a renovation of the inside. Second phase would be new construction. That's new kennel addition, a new addition to the building. That cost would be six hundred twenty-nine thousand four hundred dollars. So that's just an option if you wanted to break that number up. Um, but this is not the only option. I did a little bit of. Um, Digging to see if there was a way to outsource what we're doing. Um, kind of in the thoughts of what's going on with the police department where we're just holding facility and uh, basically all of our inmates or people of interest get sent to the county for holding. Uh, ran across this article that St. Pickwick, they signed an agreement with Wilson County No Kill Animal Shelter for housing stray and abandoned animals. Uh, it's a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, and I'm reading the article that uh, the statement was made that 700 dogs go through the shelter a year, with an average of 60% being adopted, 40% being transferred out of state. Uh, so they signed an agreement with a different city for the services for a set amount. Um, I got their mission statement pulled up, but essentially they're a 501c3 nonprofit, 100% volunteer. Animal animal rescue, they assist with law enforcement, a lot of volunteers, fostering, adopting, uh, sheltering, and spraying, neutering, uh, educational things, uh, providing general veterinary services, uh, and all those sorts of things. Anyway, the discussion with the um, president of this 513, we, we've been going back and forth. Uh, there is interest if we are interested in doing an agreement with them. And again, thought is what I offered is maybe we can shift our facility from just being a holding facility, but we're riding up there once a week to deliver animals to their facility. Um, because that's kind of eh, roughly what they're doing with other uh, cities. Um, they are located in Floresville. So so yeah. Over there. Yeah. Sure are here. See that that happens with weekly property delivery animals. They do a fantastic job of marketing their animals. They have all the software and networks to do that. Read to do a little bit of their statistics. 
they would actually care for these animals and get it adopted out. What they told me is uh, they pride themselves on being a no kill shelter that 90 to 95% of the animals are not killed there. They're actually adopted out. Uh, the less than 2 percent that do get euthanized or um, they have behavioral issues that cannot be solved or uh, health issues that can't be resolved. So that's kind of, other than that, they do a fantastic job of morphing these animals for all these different means. So anyway, um, waiting to hear back still from uh, this person that we did talk the other day. They have a board meeting being called this Friday to discuss us and if they if there is interest in doing services with us. Uh, but so far, so good. And I hope to bring you guys some good news back of that as an option. Um, but they are working with Headway at a cost of ten thousand dollars here. We're providing these services based with housing the animals. Wow. Hmm. What is the so I would imagine being Wilson County because I know their operations of their, I mean, Floresville, all those surrounding communities kind of that Wilson County is kind of the you know county seat. So that's where a lot of their operational, you know, city type stuff comes through. And I would imagine they probably have a pretty good, a larger amount of animals than what we have. So what is our current, like how many animals do we have on average at the shelter and how long do they typically stay? Great question. So 2022, we had 132. Dogs were 80, cats were 62. Uh, this year, currently, we have a total number of 96. Uh, total numbers of the shelter now 15 dogs, 15 cats, three cats in foster, two dogs in foster. And just we're... had one leave. <laughs> so, in theory, what, and, I, and I'm, and, I'm trying to process this because I, right. I, I don't know much about it. But I mean, in theory, the, if that if we had this agreement in place, the 15 dogs and 15 cats or whatever the number is today, every Friday, someone would drive them to Floresville, take them all, and then we'd be at zero for a day until 10 or Little three or two or more, you know, came through. And like you said, more of a processing center than a true shelter. Right. Um, then, yeah, kind of like more of a holding facility yeah. to work that out. Maybe we can go more, maybe we can go less. Um, but it goes back to you know, our at the animal um, advisory board meeting. There was a policy brought forward uh, specifically from our veterinarian that you know, we need to be doing all these critical intake care measures, kind of upping the bar treatments and uh, policy creations of how we do all these different sorts of sorts of animals. Um, I don't know if that can be alleviated through this method, you know, maybe we're, we have to do less of those things and then get them out. I'm not quite sure that's something that we can alleviate with this group, but obviously there are things like this uh, organization, like the, those kind of considerations that we, we will have to go through uh, with the terms side of on once I hear back. But so far, the talks are good. So, so I understand this. So, if they decide to accept us, they're charging ten thousand a year. I, I, I asked them a number. Just I need to ask this to be you know, not a hard number, just to share with you uh, the council and how many animals I did. I did. I'm saying Headwood. Yeah, we yeah we didn't get a number. No, she he said how many from St. Headwood. Yeah, um, it was like three hundred and thirty yeah. or something. So this is from the news oracle that I'm. I'm St. Reading. Headwood's a little. Uh, yeah, St. Headwood's uh, city council Sorry. meeting actually. Yeah, it's great. Uh, but it's uh, its own country. Yes, but it's, 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 it's the country. basically seven hundred dollars go through that uh, no kill shelter went last year for ten thousand with an average of sixty percent being adopted and forty percent being out. Oh, but state. that's not just from St. Headwood. Yeah, we don't from the whole that's area. everybody. Yeah, so the, uh, that's them. That they were contracting with Headwood, St. Headwood, but also. I don't know if they may get some animals also from Bear County. They're right there next to it, but they're not in Bear yeah. County. Right. Right. Um, I bet it's Elmendorf, Laverne, Laverne Floresville, exactly. all those little towns. Exactly. So they contract with Floresville, Lavania, yep, St. and agreement as it. I guess they're also looking at possibly Stocksville. Stockdale, yep. Coast, Coast yep. Every county. Mm -hmm. And so, um, 
Uh, did we get in so we we did reach out to the county, Nueces County. They, you know, at one point they had a a four million dollar proposed facility that was going to go out uh, near Robstown, but um, it got scrapped. Um, in discussions with the 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 commissioner, one of the commissioners, it was um, you know, I said, well, why did it get scrapped? And there, you know, the response was, well, we're not going to spend four million dollars on an animal shelter. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're back to the drawing board, um, looking to spend a lot less. Um, uh, so nothing, nothing in Nueces County on the horizon. Would Okay. But that, I mean, so that wouldn't be an option if they had some kind of similar facility that they don't have something. Yeah. Like. But I think, uh, BJ was going to work on some kind of, what was that? He was going to get uh, some kind of uh, program for the computer to reach out to rescues and, and everything like that. Right, that there was a couple other things. Did he get that, Chief, or or or, or Lawrence? Did you? Yeah. So we had to have a, the vet said we needed a quarantine room. When you bring one in, you have to quarantine it. And so, so then there was the <laughs> different things which we were trying to figure out, but we have emptied the front room out with all the cats. They're all in the cat room now. So that whole front room, when you, when you walk into the office, it's empty. And the bathroom, that's totally empty right now. Well, if these, uh, if this uh, Wilson County accepts us, we wouldn't really need a larger facility yep. here then would we we yep. could just clean ours up and it would be mm -hmm. adequate which would save a ton of money even even ton. just reaching out to other rescues and stuff and just trying to move those animals would help a lot we just mm -hmm. haven't kind of been doing that and so now bj's by himself but that's all i did was start asking mm -hmm. people I said, yeah, but I did. there was a new kitty yeah. when i went over there they moved <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I bet but there's a kitty every day. <laughs> if we could get a couple more dogs spayed or neutered, I think we can move a couple more dogs out of there. So we've got two gone this week. So I mean, I'm just kind of picking at them and see if you can move them. So I don't know what really the process. How how long do you think we might hear back from them, Lawrence? I've been here since Friday. Uh, she said that they were trying to have a board meeting this week. Something happened, so they're gonna to have to meet this Friday. I saw the call. I'm hoping to hear some good news. Uh, they may have questions, you know, and I have our providers phone number. Same thing, we have your questions about number. I basically passed her would give us a number, and call terms after it. So we can hear back from that. The 10,000 is what the same kind of way tags. I was on their last month agenda. I emailed the city manager there and the superintendent uh, contact. Yeah, I mean, I think if that's an option for us, then that would go a long way. And then we could re do the budgets for what truly is needed at the animal shelter to make it more of a temporary mm -hmm. holding transfer facility than a full time sure. shelter. And maybe some of those things we can get done this budget cycle <clears throat> obviously because we already appropriated a lot yeah. of money to do that but i mean we can make make a lot of headway hopefully in getting that done sooner than later yeah i think it's just a then we could just uh, add a couple small things you know and clean it up sure well, whatever's think, needed yeah, yeah. thanks lawrence for finding an yeah. alternative solution or possible alternative yeah, awesome. solution Thank you. Yep. Good job. Thanks for your efforts to move the animals around the building. No. <laughs> Which is shifting, shifting, moving and shifting. Okay. All right. Item AE discussion on funding for the construction of a parks and recreation maintenance building. David, call Okay. In. So we need a couple homes for some um, one for the gas and one for parks and parks and recreation maintenance. So, so here's our police property right here. And you have 
Um, the old building is gone. That guy's gone. Here's the temporary building that they're in now. The new building almost sits where the old one does. I mean, it's it's really close. It comes out a little bit further than the than the old building, but it's kind of right in this zone right in here. Um, once it's built and we move everyone from the temporary building into the new building, we will demo or sell off the temporary buildings and we will build the uh we actually lease oh that's a lease yeah okay so they go away hey we can sell them um (laughs) i'm thinking of the fire station so so we re so once that once they're moved into the new new building we will then finish the out front parking and landscaping one thing that is in the way, and that's probably about 18 months away. One thing that is in the way is this building right here. That is a 1950-something house from the 50s. Whose house is it? Yeah, that's the Bell's house. It'll probably be purchased and moved somewhere. So. Um, <laughs> That houses the gas department and the parks and rec maintenance department. They're both, they're all in there. The gas is in kind of this back half back here. Parks and rec is in this part. And then parks and recs, all their their maintenance shop for all their mowers and everything. That's in this little white building. So they are both going away. They're both in the way and need to go away. <laughs> where we where we put them, we're, we're kind of limited. And since we're talking about Parks and Rec at the moment, where I'd like to put them um, is very challenging for sewer. Where we'd like to put them is over in the community park, there's this hodgepodge of outbuildings. And we'd like to find a home over there. However, the there's no great option for sewer. Um, you do have to have a restroom in there. So um, that's a challenging part. I'm working with Scott Mack and Jim Urban on how we could possibly um, find some sewer uh, out there to, you know, Right now, what our sewer does is that um, uh, we have we have a lift station right here at the pool, and so the bathrooms from the little league come over to it, and then the bathrooms from the pool come into it, and then it flows, it pumps up and flows over into Corpus Christi Channel ties into their sewer and comes all the way back. So because there is no sewer out here on Ross. So we gotta figure we gotta figure that out, but we think we could come up with something. If we can figure out how to, you know, you know, the ultimate place for this building that is on that that following page, um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty basic building. It's mainly um you know, like three pull through garage, um, <laughs> garage door, you know, big bays, 12 footers, some repair areas, some storage area. I would grow this just a hair because we would also put nature preserve maintenance in here also. Um, so it would grow a little bit, but it, it's pretty bare bones. It's a couple offices, a restroom, some lockers, a break room, little, you know, a little break kitchen. Um, so that's as small as I could scale it. Not sure what the cost on that would be. Um, most of it is on, you know, on air conditioned space. It'd probably be a metal building. Um, the, the gas buildings 
very similar. It's almost exact same size and shape. Um, and that's it, I think, in the, the next agenda item. But we definitely got to find a home soon um, because of this conflict of our that our new police station is going to have. Is that maybe, what is that? 2,500 square feet? What are, 12, 12, 36, um, I think it's about a, it's about probably 50 by 25. Oh, no, no, no. No, 50 on the width. It's probably 50 by 100. Okay, so 5,000 square feet. Or 65, let me see. That's 12. 44 plus. Yeah, it's probably. 70. Yeah, it's probably about 50 by 70. Uh, 75. Easy, probably half a million bucks. Yeah. These prices. <laughs> yeah it's not cheap i mean the goal is to put it on city property um we're very limited on where we could put it um i don't think we want to compound the problem and put it over on port street over here I just don't think we want to tangle these guys up with the ferry. So we it need makes to sense to be out at the community yeah. area. So I mean, I think, yeah. So your sewer, I mean, we're redoing Ross. Yeah. So could we not get sewer from that? Well, there is no the problem is that there is no sewer. I, I know, but they're yeah. they've got to put in sewer to redo Ross. No. I mean they no. could. I mean, oh, I'm just oh saying, could they? They're, they're I don't know. I'd, I'd have for, for why would you yeah. put it in then? Um for some reason the sewer all comes down sixth. All the sewer that's heading to the the it's all coming down. It all comes back behind the backside of Leeward Sands and goes out, works its way over. So that's the dilemma is that there's nothing, there's nothing on Ross. Would they want to Put something in there. I don't know. I'd have to get with Scott. That's what we're trying to work out. Yeah. Now, if the small too small, yeah. So if if the rec center venue goes in there, then you're definitely redoing sewer. Yeah. But this is something. Obviously, the rec center venue is not going to happen this budget cycle. Yeah. Even if it gets approved by the voters. So, but this building could potentially. Be yeah, this building could, yeah, this building could. Yeah, this building could be this year. So. Uh, so I need to come up with a fix. We talked about, you know, is there enough fall to tie in to, over here to the, you know, because it's only one bathroom. You know, could we somehow tie in to the um, baseball field uh, sewer line? So that's something we're looking at so th that might save us or we just come over this way and tie in the chuck's house or something he's got a gate i just go through the gate <laughs> yeah just leave it door door door. Door. anyway so we're, we're still still working on it but we got we got to get moving on it okay but you're going to put that yeah. in the budget yes out the yes so, okay. yeah <laughs> all right so lifeguard building a f uh, lifeguard building, we have budgeted this multiple years. Unfortunately, um, this building is kind of placed second fiddle to the fire station. And um, finding the fire station's exact correct spot on the earth is super critical because it's, it's, it's lining up trucks and everything. So until the fire truck design or fire station EMS building is permanently drawn in exactly where it goes and designed and out to bid, I do not want to build this lifeguard 
uh, building, which goes right on the corner because I don't want to be tearing something down that I that I built. You know, we did get them the little home right over here, so they're they're sitting tight for now. Um, but that's what keeps delaying this this build is that the fire station civil because it, it, the the biggest issue is we know where it goes now, but the biggest issue is is that that dirt where the fire station is this is about at seven feet. The fire station has to be the the new BFE for that piece of dirt is nine. A fire station has to be built at BFE plus two. So you are looking at an 11 foot finished elevation for the finished floor. So you are on an, an anthill and you have to be extremely precise where that, where that building sits on that lot so that you can still drive your 55 foot ladder truck out on that steep driveway and it doesn't bottom out in between the wheels or the nose doesn't bottom out or the tail doesn't bottom out when you come down and hit Ninth Street. So it, it, that's what is taking so long is, is to get that absolutely dialed in to where um, that building is exactly where it needs to go. And until that happens, the lifeguard station just needs to sit tight. I feel like I asked this question, but the bay for that truck, can it be at a lower level? Yes, it can be a foot lower. Um, so just the bay, though. Just the bays. The fire truck bay could be a foot lower. The EMS ones, we're not worried about it. They got a shorter uh, uh, wheelbase, so they're going to be fine at the eleven foot. The other, the other thing is, is that coming in from Avenue D, we're gonna, we know we we can ramp up there. So we got a nice long ramp on the avenue uh, coming in from avenue d which is going to line up perfectly with that with the ladder truck bay it's coming out and down to Knight street is where we get into a bigger pickle so the the civil is having to redo all of Knight street so that Knight street slowly comes up a foot and so that we gain a foot in the middle of the street right in front of the fire department and then as it approaches e it goes back down so it's it's very complex civil design because we can't raise night so much because you got all these you got a lot of homes on the on the northwest side we can't just build a big a, a dam with a street so we got to take take into account you know those lower properties that are across the street on ninth also so a lot there's a lot at a lot at play and um that's what's holding up the design so we need to Rebudget the lifeguard building again this budget session. Okay. And that is out of the beach minutes. Yeah. Gas department. Gas. Okay. okay. So, gas, you'll notice the building very similar to, um, very similar to the, uh, the needs of the, of the parks and rec maintenance crew. Um, we had hoped to, to fit, gas over near the new public works and but there's just there is no room on that particular lot it is it is maxed out um so we looked at you know do we want to purchase property over there off of ninth street there there are a couple vacant lots but they're very expensive they're probably in the 700 to a million dollar range um, so we said, all right, let's look at let's look at options on city property. Um, we looked at temporary, you know, because once again, their building is in the way. So we looked at, you know, can we move them <clears throat> into our new golf storage maintenance building? Um, you could temporarily move them in there for a little while as an emergency. Um, Why wouldn't you make it permanent? Well, because I think, you know, the reason we got that was for a fire station. And compensation. For a fire station. Compensation for a fire station. Um, and the thought was um, by that city council was that at some point we would sell that asset 
and roll it into the fire station because we knew we we're going to come up short on fire. So um, whether or not we still do that, I don't know, but um, that day is coming soon. It's not, it, it's, it's way too, I mean, it, that thing is like as big, big as a football field. You could almost play football inside it. It's, it's way too much building for the gas department. It's also extremely beat up. All the electric is either half, it's halfway stripped out of the, out of the place. So it would need a huge, it would need a, a very massive um, renovation. In an emergency, you probably could use it for a little while, but I mean, ultimately, you know, we, you know, looking around at, at, sit, at city property, the best fit that I could come up with is basically putting them very near where they are right now. And if you look at, um, zoom in right there. So there's the police station. Here's their current home right here. The new police station is going to have an access drive off of 6th Street that's going to come right up here and go behind the building. Other than that access right there, this portion of this, this lot right here, this two-acre tract, is city-owned. So... Currently, this is gas. This is their shed over here. There's their office. So the proposal that I'm coming up with basically spots the gas station building right in here. And it would be, it would have pull through capabilities by coming off of, you know, just coming right off of six, pull through the building come back around through a parking lot and it would have access to Avenue A. So that's the that's the cheapest place to do it. It's city owned. It's got utilities. Um would police ever need that? I, you know, personally I don't I don't think so. I think I think the police have a if if the police ever needed outbuildings, there's space behind the police station. Um, there's, some, there's some grassy area over here for potential outbuildings on the new design. And then they can also um, access this property back in here is also city. So there, you know, we'll, we have part the parking lot, the new parking lot is going to be about this big back there. But there is some, some growth area in the back of the PD um, that will allow for you know, outbuilding growth. But so personally, I, I think that this is probably the best spot. Um, definitely the most economical spot to place the gas building. You just said too, correct? No, that would be storage. everything. That would be everything. Well, because you got the storage. Here. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, it's zoned commercial, so it's zoned properly. It's where they are now. Um, they're a pretty quiet operation. They don't, you know, they're not banging and beating on stuff. You know, there's residences around there, but I mean, they're, they're, they show up, show up to work, park, get in their cars. They're, they're in and out, but it's, it's a pretty quiet operation. So I think being nestled into that, into that location, I, you know, I don't see a problem with, with um, placing that building there. Council have any thoughts, comments? So in the budget, then you would have a proposal to build that building or some building similar to what you've yes. seen on that site. Yes. To be complete during this budget cycle so that you can get them moved before the police station's complete. Yes. Okay. All right. Well. Nothing further on that. We'll move to item seven, which is policy items for consideration. Anything else? 
before we move to department requests. All right, how about we take a five minute break before we get into all the department? All right, department seats get three minutes. <laughs> There's uh, 18 departments, so 18 <laughs> times five is. We already did it. Yeah. I've been waiting six hours. Yeah. 26 seconds. That's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> Have we run out of money? Oh, we <laughs> out of money yeah. yeah. The dust we got. <laughs> Darla, how many departments are there? So many of them are actually going to like, oh, he's got like five all together. Your administration have a little bit more. You just oh yeah, Colin is just but she's like next to the Lawrence, except for throwing in on the government. After charging public work, oh, yeah. There's honestly not. I don't think anyone had a discussion except for Collins. 
Library has nothing. Why does the extreme heat advisory thing go away? You get those up, updates all every day. Yeah, <laughs> 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 so, then I'll throw it to you. But that pretty much covers it looks like a lot of our we counted how many cameras we think we would need. I think it covered like your new building is camera. Yeah, that was and the harbor restaurant we need some more for dogs. We want linkage of this company. In the recording, I'm thinking it's a 30 day roll on calendar. You don't pull it within 30 days, it goes away. If I remember correctly, you can set up whatever the criteria you want, or you can just have it downloaded. Peggy said, "Spread the color." Family. We want dispatch to monitor all eighty of those cameras at once while they're dispatching. Well, they were getting from the school district too. We got access to their stuff. They're going to have like three hundred cameras. Yeah, I can do that, and I can scan through three hundred. And answer not they have superpowers. Yes. Of course they do. You better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, LT. Let me judge that. <laughs> oh, just going through work emails real quick. Oh, I do you work. <laughs> I'm not making sense. You're not meetings right now? Huh? Meetings now? We can go Friday here. Right now, we're they gave us a free until she got a couple of times. All right. Now, they're like, this is our quick thing. Really? 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 What's she saying? Sarah Prince from Oklahoma is so much cooler here. Well, it's from it Oklahoma. Oklahoma. That's what they're saying. It's cooler. Um, <laughs> I had to drive to San Marcos and back yesterday, and it was interesting to watch. You know the. Mm -hmm. Temperature gauge in my car. The hottest was three rivers, 109. Wow. And that's what your car was reading. Wow. So, you know what life would have been? That's what they said on the news last night. Yeah. Uh, that's that's why you don't want to park your car. You need to keep driving so your tires don't melt. Maybe the same way. Yeah. It's your effect. I take a year of property in there. That's hot. Yes. Was the humidity just as bad or as hot? I've got them. It's less humid. Yeah, I feel like, you know, when you get up and up in that, but but we just are so fortunate that we have that breeze. I mean, 20 degrees difference, you take them, I mean, seriously. Not to get so hot, but it's not one of the Oh, that's right. I didn't look at the this number here, that was from the original resolution, but it counts as at least it to the under. Did you see okay. that Nathan and them started on the Thank you. Yeah, well, I've been down there checking on it. I've got a good yeah, council for uh, 300 back on Thursday, but I've been going down there. He's so excited. Go He's so excited. He talks about it all right. Man, it's coming really good. I know. I'm like, ooh, then you'll get me out there. All right, we're ready. Um, you know who lives? Oh, she lives in Beeville. Um, yeah. Is there Kim Sayer? I don't know if they did her. Mm -hmm. Kathy Sayer. Mm -hmm. Do you want yeah. Rick back? No. Nope. Well, he's out on the phone. Okay. Okay. First is the administration. So take it away. Darla. I have a feeling you're going to say that. <laughs> um, so the City Hall Civic Center generator sits Old right faithful. back here. <laughs> it is from the original 
when this building was built back in 1981. And as David put, he had me type in that sentence. So I it saved our butts in Harvey. I said, is that how you want me to put it? He said, yes. <laughs> and he is correct. It did save our butts during Harvey. Um, and it did a great job. But it is really in need of replacement. Top of the tank's really rusty. Parts are getting very hard to get. Um, Doug Turner's been working with an electrician, came out and did an evaluation. Right now it's a 200K generator, but he thinks that 250 would work better for our needs. Um, estimated cost probably around 135K. He told him 120, but bump it up a little bit, 135. And I think he could do 60, 40 split with um, general fund and facility fund to pay for that. So around 81,000 would be general fund. So, but I think it's definitely gonna be a need to put in the budget. Um, Enterprise fleet management offered to come back, but I don't think that we left with a whole lot of questions about administration of that system and possibly going that way and trying that for our fleet, but I need your feedback because it makes a big difference for budget. So I put that on here. We just need interest and guidance to this approach. If you are interested in it, we would have legal start um, reviewing the documents and bring him back probably at your July meeting to move forward with registering in the program. So I did not know council's thoughts on that. But I need guidance. Were the mileage estimates that he had on there? He had like four of our four by four Tahoes that we were getting. Annual mileage is a thousand miles. Is that correct? That's how much miles we put on our Tahoes. One thousand miles. In Tahoes probably no, because those are police vehicles. Correct. So, is are there mileage overages? No, there are Do no mileage overages. It just yeah. made a difference in uh, resale. They try to rotate yeah. them at the best time to maximize your lease dollars resale of keeping your fleet to where you're so, maximizing sell time with so if it's purchase for time. And I have a four year old Tahoe and it has 4,000 miles on it. It's worth a little more than something that has 30,000 miles a year. It is. So we might want to just look at that resale. Because everything else was driving like 7,000 miles and the Tahoe's were 1,000 miles. And I thought but you do have to look at being able to replace the vehicle and different things like mm -hmm. that. And they help maximize Just, that. It might cost mm -hmm. more than we thought if that's what he was using in the calculations on the spreadsheet. Yeah, I don't have the Whatever spreadsheet that in front is, of me. It might be more. I think you'd rotate through them more frequently. Would yes. be the deal. Instead of four years, you do it two and a half years or something. But the resale value of just getting a thousand miles on vehicle a year is going to be higher than that. Yes. I didn't see any that had a thousand, but I have to look back at it. I don't understand a thousand. I don't either. Oh. oh. <laughs> no, no, I didn't no. think he had any that no, low. Because I asked the question, oh. he said it does. There's no mileage overages. Right. Yeah. Not on the resale. I think he would just throw the number out there, but. No, no, yeah. it's a, it, it would end okay. And then everything else was like 7,000. <laughs> okay. Which might be for a small town. That might be a 10 and then 7,000. Just to check yeah. to make sure if that's yeah. a, But there are no overages in mileage okay. or anything. That's good. So I did not know how do we feel because we do have vehicles that are going to be needed in this next capital budget. We don't go with <laughs> enterprise fleet. We'll need to budget those vehicles in the budget versus the lease. The lease is, it has a 0.1% um, admin fee. So on a $50,000 vehicle, I think it's a $50 admin fee. And then the lease is at night, time of delivery, 90 day T-bill rate plus 350 basis points. basis points. So three and a half percent, which is about seven and a quarter, depending on what the... Maybe maybe a little less just depends. Right. Since the Evo rate has gone up. Yeah. It's gone up. Be on it. <clears throat> a year and a half ago, it would have been 350 basis. Yeah. <laughs> maybe less. It's a negative. It's a weird <laughs> negative curve. 
Um, what were y'all's thoughts? Did y'all like the presentation? I mean, I would imagine it's staff's recommendation or request to go to fleet management during the leases, right? So is that a try? So I'm in favor. Just like to try it. I mean, yeah. yeah I'm in favor. I think long term it sounds mm -hmm. more economical. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. We will move forward with that then and probably have him come back in the July meeting, right? Okay. We're moving forward. Okay. Laser fish document imaging. This is a citywide approach. Right now we have laser fish and it is the most important server we have <laughs> that if Harvey happens, it's going with us because it is not cloud-based at this time. Um, so what we're looking at is getting new laser fish um, licensing where you would have separate repositories for EMS, city hall, finance, Public safety would have a complete separate repository that only they can get into is locked down. And you would be able to, we believe, have some public access to certain documents for open records that are accessible for open records. And Peggy and Sparky have kind of been working in conjunction on this. Um, I had down that the approximate cost was 75,000 for the first year. We actually got a better bid. It's 57,000, but your annual cost is about 33,000 a year versus 17. So, but I tell you that post Harvey, when Harvey hit and we had to have all these FEMA, um, FEMA documentation for maintenance, mm -hmm. improving that we're taking care of our items the way we're supposed to, our grant reimbursements. We have switched in finance to imaging every single mm -hmm. check that we write. And we went back, I think we were able to get five years pre-Harvey in the system now. So we're going back to about 2012 mm -hmm. with every check we've written is in the system. And it has made our job a little faster and easier for audit. I could just download them and ship them off to Broadus for reimbursement for audit. It's been great. So, um, and that server, if anything happens to that server, we're, we're in trouble. Bye. <laughs> no, <laughs> it is being backed up, but it, it would really be good for that to go to cloud-based. I think that's I think needed. 100% cloud-based. You know, you'd have to ask the tech person if it's 100% cloud-based. Um, you don't have to have a dedicated server for it anymore. We have a, we have about three servers back there right now. Actually, Encode's gone cloud-based, so we're, that one's not being utilized. But we would not have to have a dedicated server for laser fish. Yeah, basically, it's on another server out there and another. I do both of my business, so I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing a lot now. Things are being backed up. And we also like our encodes in the cloud now and it has redundant backups <laughs> and different things, but which is our finance software. He's in code like I know what it is, but um security camera systems. This was alluded to about citywide security. Um I know LT and Chief can speak a little bit more to this because they did a presentation. LT told me about um about this, we're looking at about 168,000 for a five-year license. This is quite a few cameras. We may need a few more, we may need a few less. We'd have to survey everything in the city. There's where you can log on and monitor um, for yourself the cameras that you want to see. Um, so different departments could have different access to different, depart different cameras. Um, dispatch could have access to everything. There is recording capabilities. And I believe download abilities where it can be can dump down into another server, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably. But if you have specific questions about that, um, that would mainly be, you know, Harbor would pay for some that there's that was for the docks and different things like that. But the new Harbor Master Building and the new Public Safety Building do have camera systems already in in their budget in their budgets for the construction. But this is would all of our non-new buildings do not. But obviously, we would want them to be all integrated on the same system. If, if same the same, same vendor, so they're not pointing fingers at each other right. and have problems citywide. Right. Access is much better. Yeah, you don't want to not be able to have that. Okay. No, and so this is kind of a one vendor. If, of course, it's 
first shot and estimates for budget, but. How much reporting capabilities do the system have? It says 30 days. Um, and LT was talking, I don't know if it can be, if you want to download, you can download it and save it. Or if you can, he's, he kind of acted like you could set it up and download it continuously to one of our servers. Yeah, the way, the way they have this one set up is what kind of what we were looking at when we went out and got this quote. This is actually the vendor that uh, provides the cameras is is used a local installer to provide the quote for us to kind of go go by. So this quote also includes some labor and installation costs, which is going to change once once we know the exact scope of what the project would be. But these cameras are a variety of stuff. I think we've got some standalone solutions to where you can have some solar power, like for the parking lots uh, that we have over here up on Port Street. We can don't have to have uh, power to it. We've got some of those solutions built in there. And yes, you can pull data from the cameras and store it and download it if you need it for, like if we needed it for an investigation, we would be able to pull it and hold it. Uh, but it is all cloud-based type of stuff. And these cameras actually have storage on board. So if if it loses connection to the cloud for whatever reason, it'll still be able to store it locally on the camera. And when it reconnects, it's able to, to push all that data back up. And this the, the reason we were looking at this is because it also has uh, uh, access control solutions and stuff as well. Okay, great. Um, last city council meeting, we had um, a couple of resolutions, or it was one before, for the Kepper grants that would assist us with the bulkhead at Charlie's Pasture Pier, and then I believe, um, not Charlie's Pasture Pier, but Charlie's Pasture. Um, I put in here, required grant matching funds not to exceed 130000 but I believe that was raised to 300000 for engineering and design, so that would be raised. Um, Firework. Fireworks have gotten out to be a lot more expensive per shell as everything else has. And of course, fireworks come from China mainly. We've had a $20,000 show in the past, and that's actually where we're going to have this July 4th. <clears throat> $10,000 at the city cost. HEB at the, um, has donated $10,000. Um, I don't know if HEB would increase their contribution because we haven't asked. It has been this for a very long time, um, but I think we definitely need to raise those city funds if we want to keep the show at the level it is now, because it's I, it's probably, a, I think it's a smaller show this year. It's going to be smaller. Mm -hmm. Just because we, the price of shells went up and when we signed the contract and it wasn't in the budget at that point. <clears throat> so we think we need to kind of know what kind of show you're looking at, how um, and talk to Brett, might have some hotel funding that might be eligible for this. They pay for the majority, the, the New or at least half of the New Year's. Is that the current budget? Like, we don't, the city doesn't, or right? The city's not putting anything in for the New Year's show. It was sponsors, chamber and sponsors. Originally, mm -hmm. Beth went out, got every person in town to pitch in. Still, mm -hmm. still, still, still doing it. Okay. I remember I pitched in. Um, but, but, so this is just 4th of July, like you said, HEB and then the city have kind of gone in partner for, for the 4th of July show. And this is what this is for. <clears throat> so I don't know, I don't know how many shells were down this year compared to last year. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen the layout, but. <clears throat> well, I can't really relate to shells. I'm not really sure what that means in a show, but how about, the, how about time? How about, let's say, do you want a 45 minute show or you want a two minute show? Yeah. Like, let's start right, that. Well, you could do a, you can have 10 shells and do a 45 minute show. Or you be, could have <laughs> 10 shells and do a five minute show. Yeah. Okay. If we have a spectacular shows. show, can we, we we don't want a two minute spectacular show, but we probably don't need a forty five minute spectacular no. show. So yeah, but you've been in the twenty five minute yeah, range. Twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah, right. with so, with a with the grand finale that wows everybody. Yeah, wow. That's we can have what I like. A couple of small ones. Could be the. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a great idea. Park, and after sitting, they look at, I don't know if it's a high altitude or low altitude. It's a 
And it's just big as a bank. I mean, we had complaints. I think ours are lows. They're low right now. We want the boats to feel like they're getting on fire. No. <laughs> but they're all sitting there, right? Like this. Yeah. It has happened. How many boats you got? There? Yeah. Right. North Padres show last night. Last year didn't happen because of that. Oh. There was because a fire. Of what? There oh. was a fire. That's right. We, we don't want that. No. So they all blew at the same time. Yeah. It, they, I know it's caught the Miller's house. Oh, they're they're one one fire. So, okay. So, <laughs> what, do you think that's a substantial cost savings if they're low, or do you think they're already low? Already low. Well, I think you think those are low? Yeah, they couldn't go any lower. Um, they, could, they could. Well, I'd like to add to it for next year. Yeah. Budget. But yeah, if you're looking yeah, at, we don't want to skimp on it. I mean, yeah. right. we're probably going to get a lot of backlash this year. No, no, Tanya, don't I'm say. Sorry, just say in our beer. <laughs> who's taking? Who's taking the blame? Not the mayor. Not the mayor. China. <laughs> no, because in Corpus, it is the Mayor pa Paula, oh, Paulette Wajardo's right. 4th of oh, July is, Spectacular. So. Yeah. If it gets about two-minute show this year. Well, didn't you see the advertisement? No. What we named it? No. It better wait. Mayor, <laughs> it better, better, better. Mayor, mayor Moore's Fire Circus Show. show. <laughs> no, it's a one beer mayor show. Mayor Moore's Short Low Altitude <laughs> Fireworks Show. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We need to well, add that for next year, right? Make sure we have some. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on funding to keep it at least at the level that it's been. Perfect. If not growing a little bit, because I already talked to Brett, I think that we can put some hotel motel money towards this and not general fund. Yeah. So that'll. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Um, last year, you know, we had a big cost of living adjustment to the pay scale and to the pop scale. Mm -hmm. So we're proposing no um, cost of living adjustments, even though the CPI has gone up massively, but um, did not feel that after last year, we could come back to you for that. Ooh. So just staying with our um, step and grade, which is a 3%, and that would also be so the pop scale would not adjust at all. Their scales, their steps are between two and 6%, I believe, depending on where they're sitting on their scale. They're on a completely different scale for peace officers pay whatever pop stands for. And the um, four people that aren't on the pay scale now are the three ACMs and the police chief were proposing a 3% increase for them. Of course, David is contracting y'all are in control of that. Health insurance, we have no idea. We have gotten feedback that it's going to go up. Um, I'm saying 20%. It may be more than that. When do you already do that? What month? We, October. Mm -hmm. And we just, we changed last year. And so last year we actually had a price drop, which was great. But consequently, they've had us for a year now and it's not going to be a price drop. Oh, yeah. And to go to anyone else, it's not going to be a price doing. drop. Yeah. I think we do door. have yeah. a few. I'm more hopeful for next year. We've had some bad health um, cases this year, and I think a few of them will be coming off this next year. One did for certain, and the other should too, our two biggest. So, yeah, that may help us next budget year, but not this budget year. Okay. Any other admin that weren't on the cheat sheet? One department down, municipal court. So municipal court, um, this is something LT can also probably speak more towards because he has seen a demo, but electronic ticket writers, um, software training and purchasing of the equipment is approximately 85,000 for the first year. And then 8,000 after year. I believe that was for 22 units, correct? By the. I don't remember the number, but yeah, probably somewhere in there. I have the bid. I think that's right. Yeah, you've got a couple of handhelds, and then the others um, actually attached to the MDT terminals that are in the units, correct? Right. This would interface with our, um, they would have it to interface with CSI, which is the police program that they use for reporting and for dispatch. 
And ENCODE is our software that we use for municipal court. So it would assist and download tickets to where they um, drastically drop down on their data entry time, which we, we have. Citations yeah. Right. And then it goes to the police department and we enter in our system to the municipal court data. That's too much work. It is. Oh, yeah. It's redundant work. They don't speak to each other and they, um, especially parking, this, the handhelds would scan the license plate. Mm -hmm. Still doesn't give you much information. When you get a parking ticket, the only thing we have is that license plate. We don't know where it goes, but you know, it, it might give us a little bit more information. But because I've been on ride alongs with the police, you know, and they're like handwriting that like a, you know, um, for golf carts and stuff like that. So that they, they scan it, it spits out a ticket and they put it on the windshield or wherever, like the normal. I did with my previous employer. Uh -huh. I write a citation went from almost 15 minutes to less than five. Wow. I'm on traffic stop. Well, I'm, I'm a vehicle stop and put it all the back. It's a no-brainer to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's no-brainer. Does it scan their driver's license too, and just the yes, yeah, we barcode, and then it'll bring up all that front. Okay, that's the beauty. And if you're if you're a data inputter, <laughs> which is a very technical <laughs> term, but if you're a data inputter and you're trying to read all these different officers' handwriting, it's not pleasant. <laughs> I've done, I've helped them with it. It's not easy. <laughs> well, they're in a hurry. And when we've been with that, a court clerk, Brad and I have tag teams and had to enter in it's like yeah no, these guys can't write and that stuff is i mean as soon as it's budgeted you can order it to have it and try to get it implemented in the fall don't tell me it takes 10 months to order these uh, it should it should uh when we talked to the vendor he came out and did his presentation i think that the only concern was going to be with the type of printers that we ended up going with they they recommend a couple of different ones and that i think he was saying 90 days and i think the software integration would need to have some tweaking I, for both of the software they, systems they from what i understood uh iep with both vendors so it's gonna it would be internal configuration on how often we would upload the information and, and stuff like that that would need to be configured but i i don't think it i think we could do it all in the winter and be ready for spring break yeah there you go. I think that would be the goal, right? Yeah. Good. Barring nothing has changed. We did this presentation a couple of months ago with the Digi ticket, and they that was the case then. I, I don't but the estimated that. cost was last week, so right. no, it was very updated. Was last week. Yeah. Good. We got yeah. updated. Okay. Great. City Secretary. So um, my request for this year is gonna be the $80,000 to fin finish out our document imaging. Um, we had RCI pick up um, our documents back in February. They cleaned out our whole back storage area. So took everything down. They currently have them now. They're scanning everything in. It's, pretty uh, it's really nice back there. <laughs> so uh, they, we were able to store to destroy 237 boxes um, and they were able to label everything for us and get it going. So this $80,000 will finish out the remainder of that project for this next fiscal year. Um, we are also requesting um, fuel management and reporting system, a new one for um, out here right now. It's um, deteriorating very fast. It is five years old. Um, the card reader just is it doesn't work very well um, and uh, they're kind of phasing out the whole system so we're looking to go to um, a cloud-based system um, new card reader or new reader it's going to be a key entry reader for the um out here and it's going to be about eighteen thousand dollars we'd really like to get one on the diesel tank to you right now our diesel is by mm -hmm. hand yes and we don't like that yeah okay so you're going to put that in there Add that. okay um, friend, the eighty thousand dollars that was budgeted. So, how much of that's going to have to go into the next budget? Half of it, or uh, the eighty thousand should finish out the project. Oh, oh we had eighty, 80 this year, eighty next year. Yeah, we did eighty oh, okay. this year, and then we'll do the eighty thousand next year. We finish out the project. Okay. Any questions? All right, library. Miss Stephanie. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, we like short. <laughs> now we just like to uh, change my part timers hours from twelve to twenty. That's well, that thank you. So, <laughs> yeah. Done and done. Now, I would like to say Sophie's doing an amazing job. Uh, okay. We are changing databases, and she's just gung ho about. You know, she wants to put on a class for her patrons to mm -hmm. show them our new databases and everything. And with these additional hours, she'll definitely be able to do that. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. All right. Airport. Where's that new airport manager? Yeah. We told him we'd cover it for him. What happened to him? He is He's at the airport. <laughs> Fine. He's Maybe. mowing. He's mowing. He's weed eating. In the heat. Too, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he didn't know what time. <laughs> no, we, we did tell him there wasn't really any big lifts, so we would oh. do it. The biggest lift, of course, is our TxDOT aviation grant that has been going on since Forever. 2012. We're going into the 11th year now for that. The original cost of the project was a little over $5 million. State, um, state funds were about 4.6. We were only looking at about 538000 the state has not um, gotten back with this this year, I do not believe, about the construction portion, but originally it was at 2.8. This time last year, they said it was going to be around 5 million, so that puts an additional match lift on us of about 214,000. Um, we have spent quite a bit year, um, on this project to date. We just have 171,000 due of our original match. So if you add the 214 to that, you're looking at about close to $400,000 match that is going to be needed to complete this project. Don't know if they've given any timeline for. They were saying forward. by June. To go out for bid, right? Yep. Yeah, that's it's it's yeah. on the schedule. It's close. I'm getting yeah. I'm watching the emails tracking back and forth. So they're getting close. So you, it is a real project to be funded this, this year. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I don't know if they're going out for bid in June. We're probably not going to know the exact dollar amount needed right. for the grant match, but we will get closer than what we are now. Okay. And so that'll, yep. that'll help move us forward. Um, the only other things in there are the... Um, Office improvements, they mm -hmm. would like to get a little new furniture, TV, a new desk, and a computer that's set up for the pilots to look at a flight plan when they go in, approximately $6,000. And, you know, we have a ramp grant with right. TxDOT that pays 50% of our Perfect. airport operations. So only 3000 would be out of our pocket. 3000 would be out of the state's pocket. Good, good. Restarping of the taxiway, which is also ramp grant eligible. Approximate cost that Chris has gotten is around 19000 So that would be split 50-50 with us in the state. So only 9500 out of our pocket. And airport expansion, can't really speak to that, but the engineering preliminary cost for that um, that David gave me was 50 k for that. But the other things like the lights and tie downs and things like that are just come out of the normal operating budget, right? I mean, that doesn't, they're just normal repairs, they normal repairs he that he's doing anyway. Right. These are just um, the mowing. All these things in the yeah. departments that we've asked for are or bigger dollar yeah. items that are, that are extra on top of their normal operations. So that's kind of what we're bringing. The fuel project's done, right? We went over that last week. Correct. Yeah, it just got finished. Um, looks great. It's back online. They finished it last Wednesday. It was back online after that date. Um, they are proposing a few more add-on pieces, and it really shouldn't be down more than an hour, although it might be a day or two of work. Um, so I, I'm getting a cost estimate on those additional little pieces to add on. But right now, it's going to be good. Very cool. Good. Okay. All right. Animal shelter. By the way, the police department here. Sure. Uh, Y'all know my, my career is kind of winding down and in luck to my last pleasure hearing. So oh. this year going in, uh, I'm sure the of operations that were ongoing. I pretty much turned the, the budget over to LD while I was still here to, to consult with him. So he did about 98.5% of this. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, things look, look really good because he did a bang up job and if things screwed up, it's because I missed his own review. So 
Um, I want to turn over to LT to do the presentation. On the animal shelter part of it, I think Lawrence has kind of gone over all of the stuff that, that we had on there for, for the previous. I personally like the, uh, the Wilson County option. So, uh, I think that would make things a lot, lot easier. On there. And then moving into the to our police budget, there's some recommendations that Chief and I have kind of over the years we've had several discussions since Harvey on things that we wanted to do and when the right time to start kind of doing those. Um, and with the new building getting some real traction and starting to move forward, we think that this is the, the right time to start implementing some of these these goals and things that we've had on the books for several years. Um, we, we've come up with a pretty good transition, uh, I think, plan uh, coming into this budget cycle. It's We're seeing some huge cost increase that cost the board on everything that we're getting. Um, our, our part of our project, and I'll just kind of tell you, the body cameras, and dash cams, we were paying about $6,000 last year, year and a half ago for, for a unit. It's $13,000 this year. Wow. wow. So, I mean, that's the kind of cost increases that we're starting to see. Um, and it, it's it's making things a lot more expensive. Um, we'll kick off with the, with the vehicles. We're kind of the last council meeting, we had the the amendments to the budget for the four tacos that are up in Dallas. We're, we're moving the ball forward on getting those rolling and getting them outfitted. Um, and we're requesting to do an additional three this coming budget year. So that would be a total of seven. Um, we're trying to move to a take home vehicle policy with the police department. We think that there's a lot of advantages uh, for this policy. Getting the vehicles off the island and out of the environment that they're in on a day to day basis will help. You know, we don't retire cars on mileage. We retired on rust and wear and tear. Um, and we think that this take-home car policy will, will help with some of that. We also think that having a take-home car policy will help whenever it goes to construction time because where the old PD sat, if you go by there and look, it's full of cars. That's, that's our big parking lot. We're going to have to move all those cars somewhere. And where we've been moving them the last time that we've had to back, move out of there, is over here to City Hall and City Hall doesn't have the space to, to do it, especially since we've got the municipal court going over there. If the officers have the take home cars, then that eliminates a lot of that parking and it will limit it to just a handful of daytime personnel that would really affect City Hall. So that's another advantage of it. It's a great recruit tool uh, and retention tool. That's probably that's in the top three questions that we get when we interview potential police officers. Is if they have if we have a take home car policy, so we think moving forward into that that it's going to solve a lot of issues uh, if we're able to to do that, and that's why we're asking for for those. I know that the, I wasn't here for the presentation with the fleet, so the cost that's in here is the cost of the vehicles plus all of the equipment that goes in there. Um, the amount of equipment that goes in the police car, the prices have gone up on it. Like I said, it it's going up tremendously. We're paying about as much in equipment as we're paying for the car. Some cases more. Well, that's what the lease program is supposed to eliminate. Some yeah. Of that. So, but that's that's kind of where we are on that. Um, the cost of the vehicle, depending on where we go with the fleet, is going to. I mean, that that number is going to change. But based on the numbers that we had for the four tiles that we've got up in Dallas. And the three that we're asking to put in, try to put in the car with some new numbers, 541,420 uh, is what we would be looking at. Just want to confirm you're you're talking about increasing the fleet by three yes. with a tech come vehicle policy? Okay. Because the four were approved last week, so the three is addition to fleet. Right. On uh, communications, we started a radio system project several years ago. We actually started this project 
back in 2015, uh, 2016, when we were doing an upgrade from our old system uh, to the digital system that we just installed this past year. Um, we actually had it on the books to get started in 2017, but of course, hard to get them kind of threw all of that off, uh, off pace. We were able to get that upgrade completed uh, this past this past year. I think we did it in May, May of last year. We went to the digital digital site. Uh, we are in the process of connecting our site with the rest of the coastal bend. I know you guys have kind of heard me talk about the long-term plan of having a big network of police uh, or emergency services radio systems that's going to go Corpus, San Patricio County, uh, Claybird County, Brooks County. We're talking with Alice about coming on. Uh, San Patricio County and Corpus are in the rollout phases right now, uh, and we should be connecting hopefully by the end of this year, if not the beginning of next year. That's kind of the timeline. They've, they've run into some problems that they're trying to work through. Um, so some of this upgrade is going to be to some of the core equipment that we have. Y'all heard about the broadband, the fiber lines and things like that. Part of this upgrade is going to give us the ability to operate independent. The way we're set up right now, we've kind of, in order to move forward, the vendor kind of Frankenstein a uh, server together for us. And it's not intended to operate this way indefinitely. But during this process, we've also seen that we've had a lot of fiber cuts and we've had some connectivity issues that can cause some, some problems. So we've kind of adjusted our, our strategies for that. And we're looking to do some upgrades that will allow us to operate independently, indefinitely, if we become disconnected from the main server in Corpus or even the rollover server in San Antonio. Um, their, their way we have it set up now is there's a there's a server in San Antonio that can handle all of the coastal bin radio systems together and allow us to continue to operate if there's a catastrophic failure for the one in Corpus. Oh wow. It rolls over to there. But that all depends upon our connectivity back to us. And with the majority of the fiber coming down 361, that's one way in, one way out. So if we have a problem on there, we don't have a redundant way to go. We've looked at microwave solutions. We've looked at some other solutions that just don't seem to be able to get us to where we need to be. Um, so that's part, a big part of this is to allow us to lose that connection, sever that connection, but also be able to stay up and operational uh, and be able to support any outside resources that will be coming in to assist us such as EPS, Parks and Wildlife, uh, any of these other entities that can come in, we'll still have a way to bring them onto our system and talk and, and so kind of like we did after Harvey. We're looking at another Harvey type of situation where if we're cut off from, from Corpus or the mainland. What what options do we have? Uh, some of that is going to be also into hardware equipment that's going to go in police cars and on the hips of the police starting in the first phase of it, and we're going to start to leverage some cellular and, and uh, Wi-Fi signals. Part of this upgrade allows you to have a server connected that allows you to download an app to your smartphone or to a computer device. We're now into our police radios in the cars and on our hips so that if you lose contact with your with the tower, you can go out over a Wi-Fi system or over an LTE signal and stay connected and still be able to communicate back with your homes. Um, so that's yeah, part of it. It also gives us more flexibility to bring more entities on there. This is, and when I say the radio system, this is encompassing police, fire, EMS, lifeguards, parks and wildlife. Um, we can bring on the school district we built channels and stuff in for them. It's very cost prohibitive for them to come on board the way they would like to because, I mean, a portable radio is almost $4,000. Uh, so it's expensive. Being able to put a, an app on their phone gives them the ability to put somebody in a bus where they can talk back. As long as they've got a cell phone signal, they can talk back to four day, no matter where they are. Uh, so that's some of the technology that we're trying to leverage in that. 
Um, there are some other upgrades that are that are going into their their feature codes for the radios and for some of the stuff to be able to utilize this technology. Um, I can be more detailed in it if you want me to. That's it. I see people's eyes kind of start rolling. <laughs> I talk about this stuff because it's, it's very technical and it's kind of kind of geeky and and this is my area. Uh, I kind of like it, but. Uh, it, it gives us the ability to leverage that, and of course, there's always software stuff that you have to add and, and buy to be able to, to do some of this stuff. There's some encryption features that we're trying to get included in there for some secure communications. Uh, anybody have any questions? It's a huge price tag on this one. Uh, I was able to talk with the vendor and get uh, break it out into over a two year period, making four payments. Uh, of $120,000, uh, 613 and 76 cents. And there's kind of the, the payout scale on there. It's about every six months starting in November of, of this year. Uh, the grand total for the for the whole thing, if we wanted to do it all in one, was $482,455. There's any price reduction for paying everything up front? Uh, we might be able to get a discount if we're able to order that stuff, stuff in bulk, but we were just trying to get numbers together for yeah. the budget, so I don't, I don't know that for a fact. But we can, I can certainly go back to the vendor and, and have a discussion. <clears throat> See on five board. Yes, HGAC. So the system we just replaced was our console and all of our radios. We did, we did. No, we didn't do all of our radios. We did some handheld radios for the police department uh, because the LG and fire and fire, but and uh, that was a separate. What well, was separate, but yeah, we spent right. seventy thousand on them. Yeah, um, part of this is feature upgrades for the LTE stuff. The LTE is is a newer technology that allows you to, let's say, if you have a the school is a perfect example. The school buildings are built, you know, with a lot of brick and mortar. It's hard to get a radio signal through there. Even with the digital technology, you lose some of that. But cell phone signals seem to work really well. So. Using this technology, you're able to do a couple of things. Number one, you can put a SIM card in your radio that allows you to have access to uh, a cellular provider to be able to get your broadband service that way. The second thing you can do is you can have predetermined Wi-Fi uh, locations identified and programmed into your radio. So we've talked to the school a little bit about this. Uh, they have a kind of like an administrative Wi-Fi network that is locked down to admin staff that covers all their campuses. We can work with them and pre-program that into all of our first responder radios. So if they do lose radio signal because they can't reach the tower, they can go out over Wi-Fi or over the cellular link and be able to still talk back. So God forbid we ever had something serious pop off in the school. And we can't talk out of it because of the building construction. This gives us another layer to be able to get that kind of communication out. Um, we're looking at rolling that out to EMS next as well. This would be something that they could benefit when they go into hospitals a lot. They lose connectivity, not being able to live here on their radios. This would give them the ability to do that as well. So uh, some of that is we're going to have to upgrade some radios. To get those LTE features put in there. Uh, and we're proposing to re outfit the police fleet right now as step one with new mobile radios to be able to leverage that. Okay. $482,000. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is the equipment Next. pretty readily accessible if you order it's available? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you can just pinpoint I think we've got. Probably is another night. Oh, what? Radios? Most of that, that, some of that is mm -hmm. going to be feature mm -hmm. console or yeah. console upgrades, feature code for, for our existing console and prepping for some of the stuff that's going to be coming as we move into the new I Well, yes and no. <laughs> I've got a chunk of money set aside to be able to. We're going to have to send some equipment to the four vehicles that are sitting in Dallas waiting for a PO uh, out of this budget, the 23 budget, because 
I can get the equipment delivered to them and get it installing before the next budget cycle. But then there's part of that cost is in the three additional ones that we're asking for. The radio cost is already built into the cost of the uh, network request. Uh, another one of our projects that is that's kind of become a, a very important piece of this is, is replacing our body worn camera. Uh, the vendor that we've been using for dash and body cameras over the last several years was purchased by Motorola Solutions uh, the last year or so. Um, and the camera that they had previously offered, they are no longer offering it. They have migrated to a Motorola camera that they they like better. Of course, that. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> and it's not compatible with course the not. server yeah. and any of the software that we use to, <laughs> to manage the, the stuff. So, we're not looking at replacing the dash cameras uh, at this point, but we are looking at upgrading the server to be able to accept the new body cameras and, and redo it all of the body cameras along with a few spares. Uh, and this is going to be a cloud-based solution, and this is also a five-year uh, storage and uh, device licensing and all of that stuff with a three with a a refresh on the body cameras after three years. So they'll come in and they'll refurb. They'll give you refurb stuff for anything that you have that's old, out of out of date or damaged after three years uh, in this. So there would be some retrofitting of the cars because you. Your body camera syncs in with your dash cams where they all work as one continuous unit. So there would be some retrofitting that would need to be need to happen in the police cars. And there's some equipment that would need to be changed out in the police station. But we wouldn't have to maintain the server any longer. It would all be a cloud-based solution. All of our, our video and stuff would go to a cloud and they would they would be able to store it. And there's no limit at this point on the amount. We don't have a storage limit. So it's not like it's a terabyte or two terabytes or anything like that. It's whatever we are reported, what can they store for that? Uh, and that project is two hundred and six thousand dollars, two hundred and seventy-five. But well, yes, that's the cost for the equipment and the five-year plan for the storage with the three-year refresh. Okay. Uh, our in-car computer. We're looking at replacing those. Uh, we've been kicking this can kind of down the road a little bit because we just don't have the infrastructure to be able to support a lot of this technology in the current police station. Uh, we're getting to a point that we're, we're, we're able to start leveraging some of these cloud services, and that's kind of where we're trying to migrate and move a lot of this stuff to. Uh, but the, the in-car cameras or the computers, the plan is that we're going to, we, we currently have 11 and everybody just shares computers when they come in on their ship. The idea behind this now is if we can get them taking their cars home, then we're going to ride into our security plan that everybody takes their computer home. And instead of buying a bunch of computers for the new building, we're going to buy docks and that's, that's going to be their piece of equipment that they're going to use for all of their police work every day. So it'll go from the car to their desk. Correct. Got it. And that way they're using the same software yeah. and connecting and we're not having to do two different things. And we think that's going to be a, a better solution uh, for when we move into the, to the new police facility. Okay. Uh, Makes sense. I, I think that we're going to be able to do a big portion of this uh, if we're able to take some of the money that we were going to use on some of the car equipment and things out of the 23 budget that we're rolling over into 24. If we can repurpose some of that, I think we can get a big chunk of this project done. Um, the only reason I think that we're not going to be able to get the whole thing done is because we're going to have to purchase some of the vehicle equipment out of this budget to send up the dollar. Before the end of this budget year, to be able to get them outfitted and back and back to us, if we want to keep on the timeline of by the winter of next year or the winter of this year, with the delivery time that's the before that we got all of it.
All right, you're at a million in tech. Are you oh, yeah. yeah. We're you're at a million. Oh, yeah. Five years. Five one more. Years. Cameras, one more. Uh, a million. Well, and then uh, the camera system that we talked about, the 175,000 set for the, all the city facilities. We didn't oh, add okay. that in. Yeah, <laughs> that that wasn't added in. So, I don't uh, think. And we, we got that kind of thrown at us at the last minute. Peggy said, hey, we want you to do this. And then she said, no, I'm going to put it over in my, my budget over there. So that was, that was why that got tucked in there. So that number's not in the cost of the public safety building? The 175? The 175 is what I talked about, the different. Yeah, that's the different. The, oh, okay. That's cameras, the cameras all over. That, yeah. All for, for everybody. Oh, okay. I was like, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's it. <laughs> now we know why Chief wanted you to do that. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because our new cameras, I mean, our new radio system that we just bought was what? Uh, about 600, wasn't it? Uh, that, included, that included radios and that included, I don't think it was quite that much. But it was 80. Yeah, it was two years. It was around 600. Three years. Three years. Yeah, it was about 600. It was, I think it was two years over quite two payments. It was the same kind of financing as, the, as this one. It was two payments a year over two years. Yeah, I think it was. Might have only been about 350. Yeah. I think it was about 86 a payment, 88 a payment. Yeah, it was something like that, 85. And then we had to buy the fire department radios, came to about 65 or 70,000. The fire EMS box radio radios. radios. They had on the truck. Right. I would tell them. Oh my gosh, you're next. <laughs> well, and lifeguard. <laughs> okay. And on the broadband part of that, mm -hmm. we have been working with FirstNet mm -hmm. on because we've been having connectivity issues. Uh, seriously, and my guy Sparky mm -hmm. has been up there rear end with a microscope and kind of he's been coming in and doing an analysis on what power we're on and what we're doing and so they're they're doing some engineering for the public safety side of the house mm -hmm. uh, that hopefully will be resolved in the next few months good to know this budget includes the infrastructure for fire ems and library so we've got to buy the hardware right in themselves all the infrastructure okay Okay, anybody have any questions for all that list goodies? Your tax dollars at work. Okay. <laughs> all right, thanks, LT and Chief Daniel. You're either gonna look really good or really bad. <laughs> it's really mine, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine's actually a very small list this year. Uh, as y'all know, the past year, the year or so, I mean, I but that's all kind of company grants and so uh it's, it's, that's really been beneficial to us currently our we are we are completely revamped over there I mean, our equipment is top notch and should be good for years to come um so right now the only thing that i'm really asking for is my new condo should be coming in within the next four weeks and the current condo that we have all I'd like to do is uh, try to keep it in good shape. You know, go put a little TLC in it, put a new light bulb on it, and get the people to paint it and graphics to match the current suite. So then again, that's going to be possible. So, uh, After our branding? Well, it's kind of branded a year or so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All our cameras and everything going kind of one direction. Uh, we might use your fish. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's a brand new. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that way it just matches, you know, the, the last combo, this combo, this current one, went through the hurricane, it's got a bunch of little chips and things in there, and it can catch the very little amount of rust that's on it right now, and you still need to get it painted, and things like that. Yes. It is? Yeah. Is it worth putting money in? Oh, yeah. Really? That was the one that What's Tim that had over at know? UT, and we that's the one we drove, me, Rick, and a Abel, and Tim drove back to here. The windows got popped yeah, out of it. I mean, at that time, it was brand new. You know, it was a 17. Yeah. Year, like, we probably just got it a handful of years. 
And so they decided at that time it was still worth fixing. And so they went to place all the electronics in the windows, which is just what I But we've been, we've been riding dirty with a bunch of chips. <laughs> riding dirty. That's going to be nice to uh, make it look, it look a little better. It is low mileage still, and it does run good, and, and it has very little memory. Uh -huh. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, I think 22 grand looks like yeah, lovely, we're happy right. with that. Elliot showed us the new you get a good um, star for your question. Yeah. <laughs> You're the prize shop. Elliot showed us the new, he brought it and showed us the new uh yeah. yes, that was awesome. very nice. Uh, as far as you know, depending on their radio project and everything else, and how far we go forward, um, we have replaced a handful of radios, but I think currently two of them, and I have you know, able to replace place two more next year, and we just kind of go on a slow pace until we have to for every facility. So we should be doing that. Good. Okay. okay, facilities. So um, this is kind of 50 50, Sylvia, and Lawrence can take the community center rehab lead. But um, Sylvia is requesting these 13 high bay lights, two by two in the Civic Center to switch those out to LED. She has already talked to electricians. It's only about 12,000, so that would easily be um, absorbed there in the Civic Center budget. The Community Center needs some help. Um, Lawrence can talk about that. <laughs> yeah, so it was reported that there's issues going on out there and I was investigated. You know, there's water infiltration. Water leaking in at the windows, doors have rot on them. So, after a little bit more investigation, I think we did have some roof work done on it after the hurricane, but it wasn't a full scale roof replacement. I think, per what we tried, now we know we, we need to do it. I think a full scale roof replacement was a recommendation I got from talking with contractors. They equated it to uh, a pair of you know, bad tires, you know, it's just at some point you got to replace it, not try to glue new credits on. Um, so coming to that justification for all the water infiltration we're finding in there, you, you'll see where the ceilings are sagging, like the, the uh, sheetrock where the water is coming in and just making it sag and bust through, and coming in in just various spots. So um, looking like we're going to need around roughly the $60,000 mark for a new roof. A replacement of sheet rock. Going to try to keep the windows, but uh, do some caulking, uh, replace door uh, doors, and then also we have um, pergola attached to the building. I don't know if that mm -hmm. it's got signs of rot on it. Also, that may have to be um, addressed. That might include, you know, flanging that material off. I think everything's just been caulked essentially, and, and needs more flanging to keep the moisture from leaking in at different areas. So hopefully the 60,000 mark will do it. So the other things that we talked about, like Civic Center, like repainting and stucco work and all that, where where is that? Are you just going to- We already talked that? about that one. <laughs> well, so a facelift- no, Oh, you mean the total facelift? No. Yeah. I mean, we obviously we talked about being in the budget to redo the facilities adding on, but just the general, like the stucco work and the briefing. Yeah, we had, and, yeah. yeah. It would have to be divided between city to between general fund and facility fund because a lot of your stucco work is really on the city hall side. Right. And it would probably, we usually hit about a 60 40 split. Okay. Um, we would have to get some numbers for that. And your facility fund has about 1.8 million in it. But the, the rest of, some of that would have to come out of um, general fund for city hall. So is that- you get Wood around windows. And in, right, product. but I mean, is that in the project wise? Are we, are we, were we- Well, I've got it down in my notes. We didn't put it here. In department okay, that's what I'm asking. So we're, it, it'll go in your notes. So that you can include it. It was. Let me hold on. I understand that. It was the, a, I understand that has to be split. You know, between facility fund and general right. fund. It was that. one of the discussions. It was. Yeah, it was yeah. item X. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was thrown in with the expansion of city hall, and we also included the renovations. 
So that's going to be. A, yeah, that was. But an even item if we don't do the expansion of city hall, I want to make sure that yeah, those then, things. Are yeah, done. We, we would do the we would do the renovation. You're going to do those regardless. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At least to a certain scale to get it better looking. Sure. Yeah. Now, Trim, stucco, yeah. Uh, paint. Now, if we didn't replace this building and sometime architecturally it needs to go with our rebranding, that's a whole nother cost of a front facade. We wouldn't be going there yet. We got to match the cross the street. They're pretty. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Someday. Someday. Soon. <laughs> um, last year we talked about the whole uh, tarpon structure out front and moving it and doing something with that is that in your report colleen or we haven't quite got there yet <laughs> still here colleen's favorite project <laughs> uh, yes that too so the art center should have been up over here mm -hmm. uh decided they don't want to launch it so i the official thing to do is... Papaha. How old is it? 86. Uh, Sesquicentennial. Okay. It's historical. Uh, According to the Texas Art Commission, the proper thing to do is officially decommission it. You can give the plaque to somebody that you feel is appropriate and take the plaque. Um, traditionally, the artist's family, so the artist would pass the artist's family would have first right of refusal mm -hmm. art piece. Um, we did make contact with the daughter and let them know we were in the process of figuring this out. They did not receive it well. I think mm -hmm. this is right after a similar situation with the same artist took place at the airport. Um, one of the pieces failed out there and they had to be decommissioned. So the family is not really excited to hear that another piece is coming down. Um, Our airport? No, of course. Oh, of course. Oh, I was like, we had an art out there. We missed that. Can we, Can we move it to the airport? <laughs> Would that be appropriate? Uh -huh. But uh, that's as far as I've made it. We need to figure out the logistics of it. Actually, it's going to be the, yeah. So I talked with the uh, city of Corpus Christi has a public art official, mm -hmm. uh, and she said typically when you take down a piece of this age and condition, it doesn't survive the yeah. take it down. So we just need to decide what we want to put in its place and take it down. Yes. Well, okay. Maybe that's a further discussion. I, don't know. I have money in this year's budget that we need to facilitate to do something if we want to. Okay. Okay. Fire. Um, okay, I'll fire. I'll jump on the fire. So capital outlay for fire. Um, Generator changeover switch for the fire station. It's um, eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. Um, it uh, recently the fire station has gone out for extended period periods of time. Um, basically, this this will help get the garage doors open, so it's not a huge huge outlay cost for uh, mm -hmm. a, sm a small generator. Eighteen thousand for that. Um, the electric vehicle battery fire suppression tool. This is kind of their, of course, this is their wish list. Um, Corpus, th these are for the new, oh, yeah. if, if you have an electric car yeah. and it, the batteries catch on fire, they're basically extremely hard to put out. They will keep burning and burning and burning until they just burn right through your street and down into the dirt a couple feet. So um, there is a special suppression tool that you slide up under the car directly underneath the battery if you can figure that figure out where that is and then it shoots this dart up through the up through the battery and then it just puts water on it for as long as you can supply water i did call corpus they do not have these yet they have, they have yet to seen uh an a electric car fire so it's not in their arsenal at this time either. So that's 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people are. Yeah. Yeah. I saw one out on the 35. Yeah. Hours. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, rescue vehicle, 675,000. Currently, our, our current rescue vehicle is a 1999 model. It is still running good. Um, we could get more years out of it if we needed. However, it is approaching 25 years, so... It's it is a little little dated. Um, does not have four wheel drive, so it is limited as far as getting to the beach. Um, and I think that this one they do want to have some water carrying capability on it. In discussions with some other fire chiefs at other in other cities, they do not put water on their rescue vehicles. Because it's just they it takes up a lot of space that you need for um, tools. So a lot of cities do not put water um, carrying capabilities on their rescue trucks. So um, fire gear, um, ninety three thousand five hundred. A lot of this is uh, um, you know just replacing ten year ten year or older gear from the inventory list. And they are getting some good numbers that. What's that? And they're getting new fire Yeah, and yeah, they're, they're they are getting some pretty good numbers on recruiting. Good. So sure new gear for that. Gear, yeah. right. There's um there, there's no more ladies fire auxiliary group or EMS support, right? Neither one of those groups. There was a group to stand up, yeah. All right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh oh. oh. No, I got it. Oh, we'll, we'll, okay. So let's, we'll jump into the, the big ticket items on gas. So, um, big. yeah, they're all pretty big. Um, one of the, you know, of course we had back in February, we had the, um, gas source issue where our, our isolated gas system lost its source, which was at that time, a single offshore well. Um, that resulted in a pretty catastrophic issue with the city and that the entire system went down. So for two days, it was completely down and then another four days to get everyone back on service. So major, major issue for the city. Um, we've been looking at um, two, two kind of issues, a source backup is issue number one. Um, but when we did reach out to our engine, our gas engineers that designed, like for example, our new FEMA system, that they designed the new, you know, the $8 million, you know, high pressure line that came down the highway. And they've also designed the $25 million uh, distribution system replacement. So in discussions with him, I said, hey, you know, we had this crazy outage and, and, and he kind of just shook his head and he said, that's not going to be your next problem. He goes, we do gas all over the all over Texas, and your next outage is not going to be from your source dropping out. Your next outage will be from a backhoe ripping through your main line. He goes, you guys are extremely vulnerable because you have this 13 mile long one way gas main that feeds the city and he and he said with with bayside being starting to develop he goes that'll be what will take you out the next time so there's so that kind of was like all right we, we got two issues we have one we have a source issue that got us this this last time two regardless of how good your source is at the south end of the island we're still extremely vulnerable for a mainline 
mishap. So, so we're, we're looking at two different, or we're looking at trying to fix two issues, the source issue and being vulnerable to having just this super long one line that feeds town. So we have, we've, we've looked at a couple different options. One option of course would be, you know, what is the possibility of, of a source from Aransas Pass, which is the opposite end of our source. That would be the ultimate, you know, like the water district, they have the San Patricio line that comes underneath the ship channel and they have the, the water source that comes, you know, down the island, AEP under the ship channel down the island. So that's the, the ultimate fix would be to somehow get over to Aransas Pass and, and tie into that system. AP does not have their own city run system. It's run by Centerpoint Energy runs their system. Um, that system ends uh, over in the in the in the HEB area, you know, kind of near Popeyes. So <clears throat> to to tie in over there, it you have a that's a difficult road to hoe. You would have to drill under the ship channel, put a line, put a high pressure line in under the ship channel, um, which would probably be to a depth of about 110 feet. Um, then you would you would you know you would come up to surface and then you would run the length of the highway. The, then you would run the entire length into Aransas Pass and have to you know which is many bridges. Um, a lot of boring, I think distance wise, it's you know, it's a seven seven plus miles to tie into their high pressure line. Yeah. So that has a that has a very hefty price tag. You're probably looking, I mean, our eight mile line or excuse me how long was our our line our main line from area 51 to fish pass was it's eight miles yeah almost nine miles so that line itself was about nine million dollars and that's with no bridges no going under the ship channel so get so getting back to Aransas Pass is extremely expensive. Um, that would be for a second source. One idea that we are working on is that there's there's two potential backup sources that we could that we could use that are at the other end of the island. One one option is tying into Corpus Christi's gas system. So currently. Corpus Christi comes just over Packery Channel. It goes to Lively Beach with a, a smaller service line. But that's the that's the probably the quickest source issue would be um, to tie into Corpus's system, which is approximately about 2.64 miles. Uh, maybe it's a little bit further. That oh, that's Corpus Christi Pass. There it is. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was at the wrong at the wrong location. So it's about yeah, right at five miles to um, Fish Pass to, from the Fish Pass City Gate which is where our gas starts um, back to tie into Corpus. So that would provide a second source. Now, another backup that is in the works is that the one of the, one of the, so there's two, there's two well owners on Mustang Island, TR offshore and the one that we purchased from, which is Aqua Tranquilo. Um, TR Offshore is attempting to tie into 
and get to Flower Bluff? That's kind of the million dollar question is that is that TR and Aquacantrio are trying to get their gas to what is called like the grid. And because they lost connectivity due to the due to the 54 foot dredging under the ship channel, they lost their connectivity over to the Portland area. And they're instead of a new line replacing that, um, they are looking into somehow getting to the Flower Bluff, um, which is the main grid, and you know, getting both of their well systems tied into the grid and Flower Bluff. If they do that, um, that would give a that would give a, a better backup source to the city because they could flow back to the back to their uh the aquacantrilo um condenser and then provide the city gas that way so that's a that's a second source option um they are tr is also attempting to sell gas directly to corpus and if they did that they would tie directly into the corpus um lines you know right down by the burger shack so there are a couple source options that are playing out. They've, they've, they've been making progress in the last couple months and they are close to getting um, that TR is, is close to getting tied into the flower bluff grid. We're in direct conversation with Corpus. We told them that we were just in our, our goals workshop this week um, and that we were going to lay this out to council and see what kind of um, direction council wanted the wanted staff to take on that. So so tying in the corpus would be an option, um, and then waiting to see about TR's uh, tie into the Flower Bluff grid. So those are your down south options. Now let's talk about redundancy. What can we do to improve the the very long line that the city has um, from Fish Pass all the way back into town. One option we could do is basically have two parallel mains coming into the city. So they would both, you know, one, one line would leave Fish Pass and it would go down to about the, the where the Corpus Christi fire station is, which is approximately about one and a half miles. So we would have one line coming back and then right at the right past the fire station, you would have a you would you would tee off and you would have a a you know the the, the existing high pressure is still on the bay side. It comes all the way down to the city. but you would tee off at that spot, go under the highway and get on the beach side and run a second parallel high pressure line all the way back in the town. So that would give you, and then it would come all the way down to area 51, which is the island moorings tie-in. That would, and you would have valves to where you could isolate any section that was damaged within that seven mile stretch. You'd be able to isolate it and keep flow to the city open. <clears throat> not a cheap, not a cheap option, um, probably about Lawrence, I think we got a bid on that one. It's about 5.4 million. And it would be six inch steel. It, you know, it's the same line that we just put in for the high pressure system. Um, and that would give us some redundancy. Your only bad section would be that one and a half miles from the from the start of the system until you jumped to the other side of the highway, which is, you know, right there at the fire station. But that would give you somewhat some some redundancy to our system so that if you have a break somewhere in that remaining seven miles, you'd be able to isolate it and still run gas back into the city from the beat side all the way down and it would still provide provide gas to the city. Um, other than that, you're looking at your Aransas pass option, which is I think could be double that cost. But definitely our isolation is is problematic. 
how how long before we know about the tying into corpus second source? Probably within a couple months. So we don't really know an estimate. I mean, th they've already given us the green light. They've said sure. we can do it. Um, we but, would have to negotiate, you know, of course, negotiate a contract for, you know, cost, you know, gas cost. Um, we've tried to work with them to see how far down they'll come if they would come a certain distance beyond um, beyond Packery, but I don't think they're really committing to coming much further. They'd rather us come to them. Both and of these options we could bond for, correct? It would need to be a revenue bond. Revenue bond? We wouldn't have. Yeah. Revenue bonds supported by gas. Um, be income, be yeah. Income, which you definitely would have to have. A rate study would be required for one anyway, and the rates would sure increase. So do you want direction on selecting one of these? Do you want, I mean. Um, well, I don't, I really don't want to budget anything until I hear back from. That's what I was asking. How Corpus and TR. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we did something, we'd bring it back to you guys and. And, and just bond it. Yeah. Make a budget adjustment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have, especially if we're going to do both, we don't have eight, nine million. Sure. And so gas. Why don't you jump on the cross at the police, at the fire department out there? Why don't you just do it at the source, jump on the bus the highway? Um, what is the reason behind that? Well, we've, we've, put, we've already put some of the crossings in place. But I think. I mean, James, TechStop would allow us to immediately jump across, wouldn't they? Yeah. Down at Fish Pass and eliminate the, you know, you would just add a, you'd add a mile and a half of more line on your line, but then you'd really eliminate. The only, the only good, the, the one reason we didn't jump right across there is because it's state park and there's no construction. So the, the risk was lower. So we said, well, let's just, Let's go down to where Mitch had installed crossings um, earlier in anticipation of this, because Mitch had designed this already for a redundant source. Um, so he he does have a crossing already in at the fire state. It, it's uh, what's that little sub? What's it called? Frontside Drive. Yeah, Frontside Drive. But because it was state park, we felt the 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 construction issue was. The risk was pretty low. And even if we're going to tie into corpus, we're still going to need that. Redundant. So so the, the corpus solves the source issue, mm -hmm. right? Not so much the line breakage issue, which is really the greater fear of our gas engineer or designer. He's like, he goes, I, I worry more about a breakage than I do your source shutting off. He goes, Statewide, we usually, you know, the source thing is kind of rare. Breakages are is what's way more common. And he goes, that's that's your vulnerability. He goes, you unfortunately, you need to address both. Sounds like we've got to do that regardless. The redundancy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So should we budget for that? Um, Engineering? Yeah, we could. I mean, because we know, you know, to Kelly's point, I mean, it, you know, we really need that regardless of what Corpus says or tying in yeah. to, to TR. I mean, I think that that's the, I think, I think we, we need to. It's either that or, or, or pay to get to Aransas Pass and Centerpoint, oh. but it's extremely pricey. Well, I don't think that bad. I think, but over mm -hmm. ten, shit channel. yeah, it'll oh, yeah. be more time consuming too. Yeah, shit Seems like it, right? Yeah, that'd be super time consuming. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. Because you got a lot of you got all the, all the bridges getting getting past tech stop for all that yeah. design yeah. issues. You have a lot all of water over there. You have a lot of what? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. environmental. Oh, environmental. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you're 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 boring, a lot of a lot more core issues. Whereas if you know the highway stuff, yeah, it's textile. 
think these two probably should be. Okay. So puts so maybe are y'all in an agreement to put some money in the budget to at least to start the engineering process? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you need more people. <laughs> yes. We are staying in. We're trying to do one more kind of help with the ongoing project that we have now mm -hmm. and then all our regular work. Right. So additional staff is a third journeyman position. Um, and then mobile drive by meter reading. So when you say that, drive-by meter reading i mean they a lot of gas meters are not drive-by i mean you're still having to get out of the car and go and shoot it no all of them are gonna right we have certain gas meters that are in backyards yeah that are extremely time consuming to read yeah uh, but that unit also does the new incentive system meters with being in stalled and that's mm -hmm. they've got a whole slew of uh safety Built in. Mm -hmm. They've got flow valves built, built into them. They have oxygen sensors built into them. So if there ever was an outage, that meter shuts off automatically. No more calling 30 people at nighttime trying to scatter the city to lock them out. It's built in. Uh, so that unit also kind of it, it will take any error codes in that meter and it'll capture all the data. Um, flow data. So if Gloria ever calls, hey, why is this guy using so much? I can look on the you know, their daily log. Well, you should have between eight and 12 to feeding their pool. You know, you know. Uh, so that unit does a lot. But we already have the meters being installed. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just the next, it's it's another portion of that. It's hardware to put <laughs> yeah. in the truck. So when a truck drives down the street, the new meters that are going in now for the Eclipse project, mm -hmm. they're, they're new style or not. Manual read, it's auto read. So we need the hard work for the truck as we drive down the block, and it'll automatically start pulling into that unit. So when you, so, so when I, I, yeah. you don't have to necessarily be right at the meter. You can be 50 yards away or something like that. Okay. So the Eclipse project's paying for the meters, mm -hmm. but not the, the hardware. No, I, I that makes sense. Yeah. No, I just didn't realize that you could just literally drive by and not have to physically go up to the meter and take a take a reading. So technology, I mean, that signals are sent to City Hall at the latest. That's a big Wi Fi network. Yeah. Still, still um, battling the supply chain issues on the meters and the regulators and everything. It's getting better. Good. Okay. Anything else for gas? All right, Harbor. Rob's missing his first. Rob's thing. missing. Rob's gone. So Rob has in here, he has an additional office clerk for the marina. So there are four days a week in office that only has one person present. So a lot of emergencies and it just helps out with their uh, ramping up and with the new facility coming online in about four months, I think it'll be a big, um, a big help to Madison to get, a get, get some assistance in there. Um, especially if Madison takes any time on it. Yes. Next year. Yeah, that's coming. Uh, picnic tables for pavilion. Uh, we're replacing the 12 footers. I, I personally like them. I think that the wooden ones are, they weather good and they, they held up forever. So unless you guys have some want to go back with something different um we're recommending you know getting replacements for the 18 that we lost is is there anything that would be more resilient or well we've gotten great usage out of those things i mean i, th I think those things are 15 plus years. I mean, that's pretty awesome. I mean, that's yeah. gonna that's gonna outperform. I mean, and they're great because they're they're wind resistant. So you don't have any light like these white, you know, these yeah. would these would be a disaster. Right. Setting these up and down, they they wouldn't last. Um so portability, I mean, that's the only drawback is right. that, you know, 
you are locked into those things. They're they're beast mm -hmm. for sure. You know, they weigh they're probably hundred and I don't know, a couple hundred pounds a piece. Yeah. So you you're you're locked into the fact that they're there. Um hard to move, but going to some lighter, I don't know. You guys have probably been in there more than me. They take a lot of abuse. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, almost all the events in there use the tables. Oh, yeah. Sure. I don't know. You guys got a little bit of time to think about it. If you'd like to see something different, let me know. Okay. And a boat. Yeah, this was budgeted before. We just didn't. I think he opted for. Uh, he switched. He, yeah, he didn't pull the trigger. He switched it over and did a golf cart, didn't he? Well, he did that last year. Oh yeah. This year he just so, boat, so instead of trying to budget. rush and get this bought by October first, we just punted till the next budget year because it's currently in the budget right now. But so if he found something, he could do that, and then it just wouldn't be for next year. Yeah, right. but it's just it's everything. Every, nothing sitting on the sitting on the shelf right now yeah okay okay public works no doug he was he came for lunch yeah oh, he did. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 we'll, we'll, we'll get it um Ooh, so exciting. all right so this cycle this budget we're really wanting to up our game on drainage. Mm -hmm. um, we really have no way to clean out drains, never have. We have a little, little wimpy two inch, we currently have a little two inch line, we use, or we borrow the water district's pump truck and they have a little, uh, a, a little jet, but I mean, it it doesn't do it. We We have, we have, yeah, we have eighteen. We have eighteen-inch lines that get packed full of sand, mm -hmm. and they may they're underground, and they may run two hundred plus feet from, you know, manhole to manhole, and the and there is no way we can clean them out, and so you lose because we don't have any fall. Our water lines don't have a whole lot of velocity to scour out your drain line every time you have a rainfall event some cities you know their pipes are at you know seven degrees and every time they have a rainfall that water's cooking so fast it, it picks up all the sand and it scours out your lines we don't have that our water moves so slow during storm events that sand is heavy enough to drop out because the velocity is not moving quick enough and so you just get as the blow sand works its way from the beach blows up the streets, enters into the first manhole, and it just continues to do that day after day, year after year. And you get to the point where you have so much sand in your drain lines that you lose uh, you lose the carrying capacity of water. So that when you do have a, a bad rain, your drains have 50% of their capacity. So you become worse and worse as you go on without doing proper maintenance. So two things that are in this budget. One is a is a camera. It's a little it's, it's a little four-wheeled apparatus that's on a on a line and you can crawl this thing up into your drain lines and you can visibly so you're not guessing, you can visibly inspect and look at um, look at what work you need to perform on that specific drain line. That's the first tool. Second tool, and this is a big lift, it is called a Vactor truck. And what this thing is, is a, is a oh wait, do we have a picture of it? Yes, we do, yeah. Yeah, if you go towards the back of this packet, your Vactor truck is a, is a beast of a truck and it has two compartments on it. One's a big water tank, because when you're 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 cleaning out these lines, you do it by blasting water uh, into the sand. 
which one could be small. so you need a you, the the truck has a large water tank but then the specialty why it's called a vector truck is because it has a nine inch giant vacuum nozzle on it so this thing is a giant industrial vacuum and if you stick this thing down into a manhole with a bunch of sand and you add water, that's the key ingredient, it'll start sucking everything out of it. It's probably would suck your head into it. Okay. So this thing is, it, that's scary. <laughs> this thing's a monster. So, so if, if you look at, if you look at this, this picture right here, you'll notice on the front is this, super heavy duty um, red hose. And it has different tools you can put on it, but basically what you do is it'll it'll shoot its way up into a drain line and you let it go about 15 feet and then you stop it. And then- Sorry. Showing us how it does. She has a little Try to do the Yeah, so you, 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 <laughs> the demo. you snake it up a lot, you snake it up a drain, not all the way, about 20 feet. And then you turn on the blasters and they have reverse blasters and it just starts blowing all that sand and water back to your manhole. And then that's where your vector truck is. It's sucking it all up into the, into the holding tank. And you just systematically keep working 20 feet at a time and you get all the way down and you get your line cleaned up. Then you make a run to the collection station, dump your sand out, go get more water, come back, keep working it. This is the only tool that will clean out our drain lines. And Colleen's going to be the new driver. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to be on mute. But... Yeah, so. It's pretty impressive. I could, I could screenshot it up to the big TV. Yeah, see. this thing is. Um, you just dump the wet, wet sand somewhere? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you take it to the collection station, we'd reuse it, but cool. But reuse it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Repurpose. just take it down to the nature preserve, fill out the blowhole, yeah, fill out the blowhole. <laughs> oh, that's me, start filling it up. So, that that's a it's it's a monster lift. It there's no magic money to throw at this thing, yeah, it's pure. Original. Can we finance that? Can we lease that? We could finance it. And, you know, we, you always have a choice, um, whereas Mark McClaney and Andrew Friedman had recommended when you go over a million in capital, you can um, use the tax anticipation note mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, arm mm -hmm. versus just paying straight out versus just, um, when I use the term lease, it's just payment over time. Mm -hmm. That's how we used to do our vehicles. But um Yes, there's, you know, you could finance it versus paying cash, especially depending on what all we can make in the budget. I mean, you've got a million dollars just in technology and PD, and I don't see how we could do all that in this. And it's it's a lot. <laughs> well, let's talk about the half a million dollar dump truck on top of that. So what I mean. <laughs> now that's beach beach funds. Oh, I know. Oh, but still, yeah. it, that's, yeah, I mean, I'd, come from where did a, that's an expensive dump truck. From the beach. <laughs> Yeah. Where does the sand come from? <laughs> well, it's, it's, to it, yeah. beach sand maybe. <laughs> it's beet sand. That's what I thought. I watched it. <laughs> but the law states it's to clean and maintain the beach. Not the drainage. Orange is not the new plant. What if we return the sand to the beach? About reclamation of Texas coastline. Surely we have to do something for that. <laughs> And there's not, I know I asked you this before because it is such a big lift and I, I'm i I'm super excited about it because I think we've got to do something to be um, more proactive about keeping our storm sewer lines cleaned, you know. Um, so, but the, as far as outsourcing on a contract basis, would there be any cost savings to having someone just come over and do that for us? Is it going to be, does it work out to be the same number? You know, like if we have somebody come over once a month and hit the town. Well, the problem is, is that we have to hit all over town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I don't know if there's anyone that would even do that. I could find out by the next meeting. What I will say to you is that you do have healthy reserves. You do have that CDL that added to our reserves with the tax anticipation notes used for the public safety and fire. I'm proposing we, pro we are not gonna come to you with the balance budget. We will be dipping into sure. our huge excess reserves and this is something that could, could dip into reserves. <clears throat> I don't know the life of the truck. Well, here, I, I do know the water district, or yeah, the water district paid a consultant to come out and clean some of their lines, and it was astronomical. Also, if somebody's going to do a major development, you know how we put up those little stakes and that black thing that lasts a month or two, <laughs> and then they fall down and the wind blows and it gets in the street. Then they take their water truck and they go down the middle of the street back and forth and put all the sand. We could utilize this if somebody's doing development that they're responsible for paying to clean out those storm drains by their properties. Because it's to their value too, because they're going to have clients um, and their place is going to flood because of the construction that was on. And are we allowed to charge people to clean it out if there's a development or set up a fee? After you're done building your stuff, we're going to come and check the storm sewers where you contracted because they were clean yeah. before you started building. Or if we put them in, then we can come out. Or even in other, some of the subdivisions that are responsible for their own stuff. I mean, it's a source of revenue for the city. Are you allowed to have a source of revenue for a city like that? Rick, what's our new impact fee? Yeah. No, but I mean, didn't we develop a um, drainage. the drainage one? It's the drainage impact fee going to end up being very minimal. <coughs> Maybe we need to increase it. Can we help? Well, it, it, it's all based on what your, what your anticipated expansion and enhancement mm -hmm. kind of like our roadway use impact fee it's surprisingly less than what we kind of it has to be addition to, to the current average. system of what yeah the new yeah, the cleaning, impact fixing. and how much extra staff you got to have to run this thing how many extra what yeah. staff. no we'd run it with the street crew i mean tip typically Can they train them how to use this yes thing? Yeah. In this price. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah. they're just gonna alter typically I mean sweeper, yeah storm drain. It's like Monday will be street sweeping yeah. day, Tuesday. No. This is like us, you know, like we, we used to farm out the skiddo can. Mm. You know, it just if you want really good custom service, you just do it yourself. You do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think everybody would be happy to have a have it. Oh yeah, training. Are you kidding? Awesome. Nobody's yeah. gonna. How often think. would you have to do it? There's so much drainage. Yeah, yeah. By the it time would take finish, a while to get a, a yeah. Yeah. Right. right. By the time you yeah. finish that in, we're right back over here. Huh? Uh, rain. Right. <laughs> now would be a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It yeah. 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 rain. Yeah. Oh, of course. How long is the lead time on the trees and bushes? Um. What, 18 months to no, 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 uh, uh, no, this one, this one was, I think, um, I think they were thinking like four to six months. Yeah, it's a Texas company. The, the, it, you, you buy the chassis on buy board and then it's outfitted, um, by this company. Um, is the, were they formerly Timco? Uh, it's the same guy. He no, I, yeah, it's the same guy, but I think he left. Maybe he's working for them. So yeah, he's working for them now. Okay. Because there were a lot of those at the TML. I was going to say, yeah. I felt like I saw yeah. this truck at TML. Few of they are. I, mean, there. One. I forget what city they were out of, but they're, they're a Texas, um, Texas company. And so they would build it. <laughs> I 
Well, I'd say put it in the budget. Yes. Yeah. Try to find. See if we can make it. Way to pay for it. Oh yeah. The dump truck's only hundred and twenty-five. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Was yeah. that yeah. was really. I took. I took it. Like I, I, I. That there is an articulated dump truck. I mean, what kind of sander was that? I I typed the five sixty again. Ah. Okay. Okay. Now. Look, we already it's found four hundred thousand dollars to pay for it. Look, right. except it's in the beach. No, I know. <laughs> it's in a different what, what was the dump truck? One twenty. Okay. God, that's a trick out dump truck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, like I said, I mean, I don't. All right. Not even articulate them. Maybe they might be a better thing. Cool. Okay. Anything else for public nope. works? Parks and Rec. Oh my gosh, small print. Look out. Big list. You got five minutes. Bigger no, than BDs. Yeah. No, you're yeah, perfect. this is worse than LT. All right, here we go. And nature preserver on this too. You're so good. We have we lots of projects. Departments within parks and rec. Um the number one thing you guys already talked about would be the sporting venue recreation facility getting that process started. Hopefully an election passes and we can get engineering and programming underway. Um, it's not a budget ask, it's an administrative ask, I guess. Um, holiday decor we touched upon already as well. So I have 35,000 for the contractor and then 12,000 for additional supplies that we need for the um, choreographed light and music show. If we were to add on more pole decor or having that pole decor taken over by the contractor, that would be an additional cost. Um, quick text messages today, he is willing to do it. So I just need how much it would cost. Um, I think the pole decor addition that we got last year, just the lights for the poles was $10,000. So that plus the labor of putting them up would be ballpark. Um, shade at the um, pool is failing. The metal structures that hold up those canopies, um, it's rusting from within, it's powder coated steel. Um, and then the fabric on the canopies is also failing. It was re uh, covered after Harvey and the seams have all disintegrated. So we are making it work. We grommeted and laced <laughs> the ones that are out there just to have something survive. Um, the same thing is going on with the ones at Roberts Point Park. Those were not grommeted and they're just gonna be uh, taken down. Um, there's no shade at the splash pad, so that would be a nice addition as well if we're looking at shade and bringing more out there, um, shading that area for parents that want to sit on the bench, watch their little kids play, it would be nice. Um, the community park parking lot uh, is in rough shape. It's mm -hmm. real pebbly. It's um, got really big potholes in the back right corner. I have some money to patch those potholes uh, this year, but resurfacing and striping it. Um, I don't want to put too much money into it. If we do get the sporting venue, you know, I don't want to totally resurface it and then tear it up. So I just want to kind of make it usable and, and stripe it. Um, pool needs a new heater. They have three heaters out there and one of them um, needs to be replaced. And they're asking for a second full-time lifeguard. We've it's kind of funny, we saw a big spike in surf rescue and then we saw a decline in lifeguards at the pool. So we're never fully staffed with lifeguards, but a full-time position with benefits is definitely an easier sell than a part-time limited to 30 hours. You know, um, I think we were short staffed, so we were letting staff work as much as they possibly could. Then when we got fully staffed, we brought their hours back down to meet labor requirements and then we lost staff because we weren't scheduling them enough. So now we're understaffed again. So gosh, you can't win, huh? <laughs> that would give it's us four full time. Okay. Yeah. It's so there's pool. manager, assistant manager, and there would be two head guards, which we could run the pool essentially on winter days without any extra staff. We need staff in the summer for swim lessons and camp and all the other activities we have going on, all the visitors we have. Um Okay, youth programs, they have a van, they love it, it's wonderful. Um, this year, the ACE program uh, is totally gone. 
And so the amount of students we're anticipating is upwards of 70 students at our program. Normally we have 50. Mm -hmm. So shuttling to the pool, shuttling to the birding center, uh, it takes a lot of trips. And so a second van could be helpful with that. And um, we have a site coordinator. It's a new position that you guys funded last year. They're part-time and they have been so helpful. Ken is requesting that they be changed to full-time. So something to consider. Um, because of the additional students and all the different activities they're doing, I think. Um, Who is that? Hmm? Who is that person? Liz Pape. Okay. All right, moving right along. My number one uh, ask for this year is a replacement for the um, playground and shade at Roberts Point Park. Um, I already have a design scope of work in place that's ready to be signed um, from half. They're the ones that did our open space master plan. So I have a little bit of money left over in this year's budget from um, the demo of the playgrounds. It didn't cost as much as I thought it was gonna cost. So technically, if with your permission, we could move forward on design this year with that remaining money. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about the heat that I'm gonna get uh, from having no playground out there. But unfortunately last year was predominantly spent planning. And so we didn't get into the details of what a playground would look like. And so now we're gonna have a little bit of a gap between the playground needing to come down because of safety. The uh, corrosion out there is just beyond repair. Um, so ideally, if I could demo it before September, which is the plan, um, we could do a three-month design, a three-month fabrication, a month install, and hopefully by spring break, have a facility out there to replace it with if we really fast track it. Um, if we use a contractor off the buy board and we jump into the design phase with half who's on the HGAC, um, it will help speed things along. So um, it would include shade. It would include possibly, a, I'm calling it a cooling station. It's like a water component. It's not a full-blown splash pad, but it's a, um, you can see on my like packet on page yeah. eight, there's yeah. some mister type um, things that you can do out there. It would include all safety surfacing. So the entire thing would be wheelchair ADA accessible. We would go back with better materials, no steel. Um, it would either be recycled plastic lumber or on my computer. Page seven at the bottom, Misty oh. Jets, or well till. Oh, I'm sorry, my page numbers are different. I'm working off of marked up older copy. Um, so all the playground components are highlighted in here. None of this is a specific design. This is all me pulling from the buy board contractor saying we can get this material <laughs> that I think will do well. Um, and so looking at elevations in the play surface, playing with some hills and slides that go down hills as opposed to slides that have metal ladders on them. Um, the little rescue boat and the shrimp boat, that's an example of this uh, recycled plastic product and you can buy something like the pirate ship where it's out of a catalog and you have this big play component or you can go more um, individual components that are maybe more affordable to replace um, like the Santa Monica example. It has like a bunch of different rope climbers and rocks and so this would be all figured out in the design process, but I think we learned a lesson um, to move away from powder coated steel in such a coastal environment. Another product that works well is the um, fiberglass reinforced concrete. It's the, what's the whale is made out of and the fake rocks, um, the flamingo, all the themed concept things, the turtles, the waves. So Parks Board could probably help steer the, um, or, or DC could help steer the design components of it. We would get the community involved. Um, you know, hear from kids on what they want to see out there too. That would be part of that three month design phase. Um, 
but yeah, I think going without a playground out there is going to be hard. And I, I think putting something back that is iconic and really makes a statement. It's one of the first things you see when you come to Port A. We've got busloads of kids that use that for field trips, end of the year parties, things like that. So I think it um, doing it right and doing it um, with the intention of including all um, is what we should be looking at. Um, any questions on that? Uh, Colleen, um, Darla, is there not anything we could do in the current budget cycle to expediate that process? Obviously, if it needs to come down in September, it needs to come down in September. And I know, I mean, I get the probably, timing, but is there yeah, something possible. that we could do now so you don't have to wait? If you wanted to move forward with half, couldn't we put that on the July agenda for design? Because that money's coming out of RDC and the money's there, I'm assuming. It's coming out. RDC has about 1.1 million. Um, your park dedication fee, this is also all in your park master right. plan. So it has about 660,000 right now. And of course, Hotel Motel Special is eligible for parks. Mm -hmm. So I would think you could get a resolution for half and get started moving on the design because to say start in October and have installed, oh, yeah. spring break isn't going to, it's not no. feasible. Okay. You're ready, right? To do that? <laughs> to demo, I, I have half's contract ready to sign. Okay. So could we put that on the July agenda to, to do that? Yeah. I mean, because how much is it? I was just thinking about that. It might be under 50. Oh, well, then what are we waiting for? No. Budget amendment approval. But if it's under 50, we don't have to do that, right? It's right here. No, but you don't have a budget in. Okay. Okay. 49, 500. 49,500. Right under. <laughs> so we have, I'm anticipating having 30 left over in my demo fund. We'll look at your budget and see. Okay. So if that's the cost, it doesn't need to come to council. Okay. Is that okay? Are you all okay with that? Absolutely. Yes. I just hate to see us not have a... Yeah. I mean, every yeah. month we can save that we can get a playground back out there, I think is a huge... Mm -hmm. I looked into um, getting like a quick catalog playground, just something to put yeah. out there in the meantime, and it still takes three months to fabricate, even if it's the red, yellow, and blue, you know, schoolyard playground that everybody has it doesn't really speed anything up yeah okay good thank you um maintenance facility david covered um i don't have anything to add there the truck if we move forward with enterprise i think we just like a truck designated for us we have a truck already ordered so this might be one of the ones that they would purchase from us um it was just a time lag for some reason that Caldwell Country for the um, grounds truck, they can't guarantee it'll be here before the end of the fiscal year, even though we ordered it as soon as we were eligible to order things. Yeah. yeah um, that PO went out in October, November. David Lown was on it. He was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to order this right away because we learned the same thing from the last year with mm -hmm. the chip shortage. It's just, it was awful. We actually ended up our city office vehicle we went with a local dealership instead of doing the buy board thing and lucked out that corpus had one mm -hmm. um replacement cart one of their golf carts rusted and fell apart in the parking lot and so this is a replacement <laughs> for that um one of the mowers they'd like a better mower for the ball fields it's just better for turf management and then the mower that they're currently using for the ball fields would move to the mobile route and one of the mobile route mowers would be decommissioned. Um, every once in a while, it's good practice to have a professional company come out and grind the lips of the ball fields. It's a safety concern when the dirt builds up in the grass. We try and maintain it the best we can, but um, we got an estimate. It will probably be less than 18,000. <clears> That's a generous estimate. Um, one of the things grounds crew has been doing is watering like new palm trees and flower beds and things like that. We have a new gardener who's really um, making things look good. And so he spends a lot of time watering 
He has a 200 gallon tank that goes in the back of a pickup truck, but a 500 gallon water wagon. It's like a trailer. It comes with a pump and a pressure washer. So we could pressure wash areas that don't have water, like the skate park is an example of that. Um, so this could be a, a nice solution for less trips to fill up the tank and uh, more places that we can get a pressure washer. Um, I talked about this at the RDC meeting, seal and striping for Roberts Point Park. Um, we might not need to seal it because we're not going to do the roadway. We might just need to stripe it. So um, I'm getting, I have 30,000 penciled in there, but I think it might come out lower than that even. Are there any um, potential roadway improvements projected for the park after all the construction? I don't think it was included in any bond. No, not included. But it needs it. It needs it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where we fit that in the budget, but it needs it. We might have some. One option would be when the bids come in for the street and drainage bond mm -hmm. to um, we have a little bit of money in streets and. The small street. So we're, we're going to use we, that for the street cuts. <laughs> no, we won't use that for street cuts. <laughs> we're going to use something else. Something. But we could we could find if some. It is a bit I'll, I'll yeah. turn it to maximize the realization of, yeah. of them already doing streets. We were hoping that the that the street one comes in with that would leave you guys with some alternative um, options. Which so could be all over be town, but I, I just think that we need to look at that because we're going to have this brand new, beautiful arena yep. facility, docks, yeah. and those, I mean, that I can't think of the last time any kind of street. We did J.C. Barr Boulevard in 2009, I think. Was it not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Which asphalt has about a 15-year lifespan here, so we're at 15 years. I would hate for you to strap it all in a minute, not. I mean, maybe we can. I put, well, I had the whole shebang in there and then I heard that it was more of a streets project thing. So I yeah. took it out and I said, well, at minimum, we need to at least stripe sure. it because right now you can't see anything and the curbs aren't striped well either. Um, but I'm happy to fit it wherever is most appropriate. Um, next on the list, self-watering planters. I think a lot of us saw these at TML and they're big 40 inch diameter planters. They have a basin in the bottom you fill with water, you plant plants in the top and it's supposed to keep them alive until you refill them in two to four weeks, depending on the size of the planter. I did just see something yesterday that um, said sometimes it's hard to keep plants alive in them. They get root rot and then, cause you have a water basin underneath. So we need to be strategic maybe contact some cities that already are using them and find out what is staying alive in them because I had not thought about that. But the water trailer would help fill these. They could go on busy intersections. They could go possibly in medians. Yeah, um, we want to incorporate that into our yeah, it's landscape I think so. design person. So maybe let them decide where they Yes. Go. I like yeah. that. Trying to sign <laughs> off my list, please. Um, uh, additional palm trees at McDonald Field. I believe there were some that we lost after Harvey that didn't get replaced and there's room for four out there. Yep. So we'll, we can stick those out there pretty easily. We'll water them with our little water truck. Um, I always get requests for more shade at the dog park. We have planted trees out there, but it's going to be a little while before they get <laughs> shady. So um, just looking like at a little pergola or, you know, nothing crazy, but some additional shade over the picnic tables there. Um, the neighborhood park I have on the list as uh, $800,000. It's hot tax eligible. That's just the estimate for sod, irrigation, landscaping, walking paths, shade structure, uh, parking. Yep. Surf Rescue. They grew by leaps and bounds this year, unexpectedly. I was shooting for 20. I was hoping to have 20 guards. We currently have 27. 
Um, they all went through a two week rookie course. Um, so they're trained to be full lifeguards after two weeks, they can guard on the beach on their own. If they don't make it through that two week course, they don't get to be on our team that year. And it's amazing how well they did. So they have enough staff to build three new towers. They would put them at C 13 and 17 that puts towers about at every three markers along the beach. So this would fill the gap in the bollards. You'd have stands every three markers. Um, an estimate for price, we haven't gotten back with, contractors haven't gotten to us yet. They're supposed to give us prices. And so I think 20,000 a tower is enough. I hey, before the lifeguards leave for the summer, will you make sure you get a team picture? Yeah. We need to do that before. Yeah, well, summer really kicks off the, before we yeah, lose them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, that's not yeah. very oh, often. Yeah. We need a now photo. <laughs> yeah, with all our equipment in it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They wow. started doing that. They have a couple in the building over right, the good. doorway. Okay. Um, the new buildings in there. You heard about that earlier. Oh, let me back up. I skipped uh, vehicles on the beach. They've been having a hard time. This. They they switched over to these Landmasters, which was a new brand of golf cart UTV and they've been in the shop more than they've been on the beach. Oh, yeah. So we're having trouble getting parts for one currently. So they were saying, maybe we move away from the Landmasters and we go towards brands we know like Polaris or Kawasaki or Can-Am. So there's two in there with more staff. We need more vehicles to get the staff to where they need to go. Um, and then this, I crammed into one item because I was trying to keep everything on one page, but radios, um, this is uh, Sparky's estimate, 10 new radios. This would be um, for the staffing increase, for the towers, for the vehicles. Um, we anticipate needing 10 to have a radio at every tower and every truck with the manager. I get one. Um, the same radios that everyone else is on, right? Yeah, we usually take the hand-me-downs, but at some point, I think our hand-me-downs will not work with the new fancy system. So Sparky, I've trusted him to tell me what I need, and he's saying I need 10 of these. Okay. <laughs> um, rescue boards. We have a line item for rescue boards, and these are all under 5000 a pop, but together, it's five of them, so it's 12000 um, and then with the new towers, we have AEDs at every tower. So I need three more AEDs out on the beach. If we, if we want to continue to put an AED at every tower, they're in jump bags um, with a bunch of other medical equipment. I think that's all my stuff. Ray's here to talk about nature preserves. So I'm going to leave that to her unless you have any questions for me. I tried to be fast. <laughs> so you did great. Good luck. Thank you. There's a lot. It's because we planned for a whole year. And so we got yeah. all these wonderful ideas. Right. Time to implement. Yeah. Okay. Ray. Hello. Hello. Hey, we're almost done. No. <laughs> um, okay. So there's one thing missing on Colleen's little list, but I had some pictures on at the end of all the parks and rec stuff. But so the, the first thing is uh, birding center enhance, enhancements. So this is, you know, very heavily used nature preserve site. Um, and after the construction of the boardwalk um, there, the uh, water district owns the property between the parking lot and the, the next private residence. And, um, after that was all mowed and packed down from all the construction staging, people just started parking there. And then, um, so Colleen and I started a discussion with Scott Mack about what their plans were for that. And really that he seemed to think, you know, they just bought it for a buffer. Uh, they bought it in 1998, which was after when the birding center was established. So um, they're, they had a board meeting, I think today to finalize adding that to our lease. So um, that's kind of the pink, square which isn't fully it it goes all the way back to the where the yellow is but we thought maybe the parking would just be on the front edge of it but we'd like to um add that to our lease it's not going to cost the city anything extra and um but 
making it into a parking area will. <laughs> and so um, the estimated cost, I've been working with Urban on that, would be um, $250,000. And that includes some um, uh, landscaping curbs. And it would uh, increase our parking from probably 15 spaces to 63 or more. Um, currently, like in April, when the migration is in full swing and the or in the winter, when the hooping cranes are here in the winter Texans, people are parked all the way from the burning center all the way to the dump. Yeah. Um, the all the trucks coming in, um, going to the dump, it's kind of like a collection. safety hazard. Oh, collection. sorry, the citizens collection station. <laughs> 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 when I call it that, no one knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, should be proper with you all. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's also a safety thing too for our visitors. Um, and then. Um, the kind of the third thing on this list would be we would like to add a permanent restroom so that would be somewhere in either our current parking area or the new one. Um, currently there's a porta potty like kind of over here across from the. Um, entrance to the wastewater treatment plant i'm not sure when that appeared why it's there, <laughs> but <laughs> our visitors use it pretty often it's you know it's clean it's nice but. A, uh, oh man, it goes way back. Given that it's our, you know, premier site for birding in the area and a restroom would be nice. We can actually have water there with a water fountain um, and sinks, obviously. But um, so that it would look like the one at Charlie's Pasture, but would be tied into utilities and would have a water fountain flushing toilet. Um, but that cost of that facility that's out there with, um, working the land a little, you know, leveling the land is about $120,000, which blew my mind. <laughs> is that where you'd put it or would you move it over to the new lease land? Well, there's a few things. Scott is talking about removing that sign, the Wilcox sign that's there. Um, oh yeah, relocating it. No, not across the street. It, it would be in the parking area. So that way we wouldn't, no one would have to cross the street. It would be there in the parking area. Um, oh, that one. That. Yeah, the the concrete one. This thing. Yeah, we have removed those trees from it and put flowers and power washed it. But um, there is discussion to relocate that sign within their fenced area, or maybe they get a new sign. Um, and so that could be either more parking or a restroom. You know, like the whole area yeah. could be kind of um, redesigned. That too. I don't we know. We could make a combo RTA skiddo can. Yeah. <laughs> facility. Yeah. So um so that would just, I guess, kind of would figure out toilet next to the water treatment. Yeah, it's gonna have sign explain <laughs> watch what happens now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is why this is so beautiful now. here. <laughs> <laughs> to watch and then hurry out to the burning center there it goes yeah that's uh, gross, Dale. <laughs> close your mouth while you walk <laughs> um, oh man um so the other thing included in this four hundred twenty thousand dollars is uh completing the final leg of the trail connection um so we have boardwalk that was built after Harvey that goes to the left. There's a concrete path that's in there, the white looking. And then um, the last little bit uh, is about, I think I have here, maybe, I don't know, so like five or 600 feet, I think. Uh, so finishing that last little leg there. Um, so that was estimated about 50,000. We think we could hopefully do it just a concrete path since that's um really durable and requires like very little um maintenance is it what is it well is there or is it there are some do concrete but so i had other plans we wanted to work in this area with the restore grant we have but because there are some wetlands back there they were told we were told it would be like two more years of um working with all the agencies the other thing we had planned for back here might have been like a little observation deck. I'm really worried about putting in pilings 
because there's so much stuff underground. Like if you walk back there, you think, oh, let me pick up this little concrete chunk. And it's like huge, forge. I don't know what's under there. I'm a little, I don't know, but we might have to put some kind of little boardwalk, but that would definitely increase the cost because there might be a lot of debris removal. Yeah, these were all back in the day, all these, um, yeah, all this area like landfills. was, this was all dug and filled. These are all cells. Yeah. And that, most of that is private property. So really yeah. we are restricted to that little service road where we, it's open now. People are walking through there, but parts of it are uneven. Mm -hmm. um, we have signs that say like trail improvements coming soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, I, I actually, there was a guy on a motorized wheelchair back there and he was getting through it fine because it's so packed down because it was the service road kind of, um, it's not soft, but there are pieces of concrete and kind of uneven surface. So, um, but lots of people walking through there, not just the birders, runners, you know, just regular people getting exercise. So it's getting utilized pretty good. Um, so yeah, there's some pictures there. So the other, okay, so any questions on that? Okay, the next thing is the Kepra uh, match that um, we discussed in May. So the Nature Preserve is requesting a 240, we haven't heard about the grant yet, but if we get the grant um, for our match for design and engineering for the restoration of the lost land in Charlie's pasture. So that information is just what was in your council packet a few, few months ago. So our match would come out of Hotomoto Special? Yes. Okay. And again, that grant, because it's a tier one project on the resiliency plan, the anticipation would be when construction occurs, they would cover it without the match. So, and that's going to be millions of dollars. So um, yeah. it's a Good lot, deal. but it's, um, yeah. if you add in all that, it uh, helps with the cost. When do you think you'll hear back? When was that? About a month ago? Did you get an email from anyone? No. Okay. I didn't uh, sign it. I signed it like a month ago. I didn't ago. either. Yeah. Um, because somebody who was uh Kelly Brooks is another project manager. She sent some emails to people, but I assumed Thomas Derman would be like our lead. So, but I don't know. But the money, the funding would begin in October. Yeah. Okay. So well, contracting. Yeah. That could take a little while. Um, okay, so the next thing is the um, nature park at the southern end of the city limits. The, the um, conceptual design is here for a kayak Ooh, launch. Yeah. Um, so this was, uh, we're working with HALF on, a, um, on this conceptual design, and we worked with my advisory board, um, but Kind of, I think what would be a good next step is um, we could apply for a boating access grant in February with Parks and Wildlife, and um, that would be design and engineering this year. And then they said too, if they pick you for a design and engineering project, then anticipation would be for construction, you know, a year or two down the road. Um, so I have the eighty-four thousand here, but that's just the the maximum you could apply for for a match. Uh, I mean for planning and design. I'm waiting on trying to get some more concrete estimates. Um, so, cause you could ask for 250 from them, plus the matching requirement would be 84 total project at 334. Um, so that would include like just the road, uh, the kayak access, potentially restrooms, like all the things involved with the actual launching of a kayak. So uh, then the next phases would be what they have on here, like a play area, um, walking trails, like the boating access isn't going to fund other things, other recreational uses, but could be a good way to just start phasing in and getting the kayak access, which is kind of what we've been lacking the most mm -hmm. within the city parks. So um, and we have a whole plan with this, but um, that's the conceptual design. Um, and then uh, this has been kind of getting kicked every year, this automatic gate for Port Street. <laughs> but 
I thought I'd be get it done this year, but now they're saying, I don't know, September or later for, for completion of the construction. So I'm assuming we need to move this to the next fiscal year uh, again. Um, and because uh, I was told not to put the new solar gate out while construction is going on, it makes sense to me. So, <laughs> um, so we had 15,000 and I'm based off the costs Thing, I think maybe 20,000 for a gate there, which allows for, we have it at 361. It's opening and closing at like daylight and dark. So, uh, okay. So last thing is something Colleen and I have been talking about. We were, uh, we get a lot of complaints about people breaking all the rules in the nature reserve. Um, and <laughs> I know, uh, we talked about a code enforcement uh, officer or, you know, but then we looking at the, this is right here, what you see is a state park program. They have a park host. I think we could really easily fill a position with a winter Texan. I don't even know if this is some, I haven't talked to anybody. We haven't talked to anyone about this, if this would be allowed, but the state parks, they allow, they pay, they pay for basically person brings their own RV. They stay, they have campgrounds. So they stay in the campground and, you know, they're, they're living kind of their rent is covered um but we don't have a campground but there is a campground right next to the south entrance which is where a lot of the um you know people are entering that that uh trail there they're scaring the hooping cranes all, where all the concerns are going fishing in the ponds but um so like i guess you could put a contract together with someone to an agreement to while they're there for three or six months, you know, they're required to work this many hours, patrol the park, answer questions. It's just kind of like a conceptual idea at this point. Um, but we did call the some RV parks around town and it would cost about $1,000 a month. That sounds, sounds like a fun job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've met Renner people. Texans that are park hosts <laughs> at other parks. Yeah. And now they just oh, come oh, visit. Right. And, um, you know, they take good pride in it. They'd probably be like um, real vigilant. Yeah. <laughs> you know that park home. This is what we need some some Minnesota eight year old from Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> Chasing you down. What are you guys doing in here? <laughs> so. Somebody's out there to educate folks on what the rules are. Like, actually, you can't bring your fishing poles or your dog in here. And yeah. you can just stay on the phone. Yeah. Most people want to do the right thing. It's yeah. parents that. I don't know. I like it. Uh, I think yeah. that's a good idea. Especially in the winter, I, yeah. I think it would be easy to fill that position. I yeah. don't know about the summertime, but um, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Good chat. But not least, okay. Development services. Yeah, I guess we saved that for now. Oh, <laughs> not, so much. Not, not very needy. Uh, so uh, the, the first item I, I just sent over, just kind of a, a discussion, maybe to, to, to see it. <clears throat> Garland and I might try to get together. A lot of municipalities actually differentiate code enforcement. They have a senior position. Um, so that's really the, the bottom line to see if, if uh, there's some merit to do that a growth path for a, a, a preceding person and actually has some responsibilities. We're still sorting out the whole work from rentals ish, you know, how we divide some of the responsibilities up right we've got. But one of the things is, is uh my existing senior code enforcement office right now does have some training in you know, the, the property maintenance code, which is how I, I really can send her out to do the inspections for the short term rentals, which we've been real successful and we want to keep you with that. Right? Uh, we did find a lot of things, uh, illegal bedrooms, no fire things. We're just saying that it's it, been a bit. So, just uh, again, to, to maybe have that discussion with Darla and see if there's a, um, there's a way that we can separate and create a new senior position in that, that respect. Um, 
uh, I, I would ask some of these other things are just things I, I picked up where we're assigned to discuss maybe not development services specifically. Uh, the, the notification system uh, we talked about, and there's a lot of uh, uh, code red is, is talked about a lot. It's, it's uh, it just got a high lot of high visibility and they do a lot of marketing. I, I just really probably just need some direction as to, as to what we're trying to do. Um, we've got a, again, we've got a very, what I'll call a very, we're using a, a pretty robust system in a very basic way uh, right now. And, and the messages are getting out. I just kind of need to know what, you know, what exactly more we're trying to do to the messaging system um, and, and to see if there's something else. The city of Corpus Christi uses what they call, they, they call their reverse alert system. If you kind of use that, like we use the term Xerox. The reverse alert, reverse alert system is actually an Everbridge product. Uh, they're a, a primary supplier of notification system. That Everbridge system that Corpus uses is funded by industry and the county. <laughs> the county and the city of Corpus Christi have joint administrative rights to the system. Uh, we are, we are, because it's funded by the county and industry, we we can participate in that Everbridge system. We can, uh, again, if there's a reason to, 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 to utilize, we can, Send messages. We can do the same thing the reverse alert system does. The only thing we wouldn't have would be the administrative rights. Doesn't mean that we wouldn't do our own messaging. Uh, I, I reached out to my my emergency management counterpart Billy Delgado in Corpus. He's more than happy, uh, you know, to sit down and, and talk about what what that would look like. It wouldn't cost us anything. It's already being funded, uh, and, and it is that system. Uh, Code Red, you see there, the uh, for a three year subscription, not terribly expensive, fifteen grand. Um, so again, just maybe a little bit more direction for what we're trying to do, uh, besides the obvious, get a message out there. Uh, as I showed statistically, uh, the Corpus Christi, as big as they are, 400,000, and you include kind of the, the, the area all around Corpus, 400,000 people, they got less than 1% participation in the reverse alert system. Um, Realizing that probably not everybody that signed up on ours is a, a is a, a resident. I think probably the I would like to think a lot a lot of them are, but regardless, we got a twenty two percent. We got twenty two percent registered on ours. So for capital, you know, we've done a pretty good job. But anyway, just just maybe more guidance for what what we're trying to accomplish and how we want to go about it and figure out what system um, works. We certainly, don't have any any. Um, any pride of authorship in the one we're using now. It's very, very affordable. Everybody is available to us, but at no cost, we want to explore that. The big piece to the whole thing is the person, because almost all of the systems, it still takes a person to create it and send it when you need to. Uh, that has typically been me 24 uh, 7 if necessary. Um, as most of you know, my plan. My exit strategy is uh, right up from the first of the year. So no matter what system that's going to have to be discussed, but who that person is going to be. Obviously, the only other 24-7 service we have is a uh, PD dispatch that I'm aware of. So anyway, just, just things to consider with, with any emergency notification system. Um, 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 uh, I also just because of some, some experience uh, said that I take on this sound system. We have a We've got a Viboard eligible sound sound system provider, same one the school uh, school uses for their dims. We've got a quote about seventy grand. I, I don't know how much money we have in the budget. This is for the Civic Center acoustic uh, enhancements. Uh, we've got a plan. We've got the the, uh, the money. It's just I mean, we've got the, uh, the the quote. It's just a matter of if we want, we can probably get some of that done and started this year. Uh, this fiscal year be completed. I don't know about all of it, so I, I, I put it in there. Uh, but while this was going on, Peggy came to me and, and said that the community center was also in similar need of some acoustic improvement. Um, I don't have a quote from, from that project, but uh, I'm judging on the other system and what I know, probably 18 to 20 grand to do a really good uh, revamp of the community center. 
um, acoustics and audio visual. I say acoustics, audio visual and acoustics uh, and sound. I, the Civic Center, for example, is a, a big giant uh, electronic drop down screen with a projector and all. Um, October 14th. Um, we need it by October 14th. You promised, I, David. It's I October 14th. Not. Yes, you so did. Paid? Yep. He said they were not paid. No, no, David Parsons. <laughs> that is what he told me. He did say that. That. <laughs> no, I a year or so ago they said that. When I said we need to put in the budget. No, no. Okay, we'll so, we'll, we'll just we'll talk later. Thank you. Um, um, <laughs> well, we need to get the No, no, no. It's, it's in our budget. Yeah. No, but I mean, it's over 50, so they have to approve it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, so the term key deal looks like about 70 grand that you are proposing right now with a whole bunch of speakers and big giant screen, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, Deep Sea Roundup's paying big bucks. I mean, the chamber pays big bucks. Every person that comes and has an event rents all that stuff and pays big bucks. So I'm not being selfish for education foundation but we ought to get it installed as sooner than later so all these organizations that are nonprofit organizations aren't spending thousands of dollars to rent that stuff that's my whole point please um, <laughs> yeah. uh, just another thought again uh, I, I don't think it really has necessarily a budget impact this year per se uh, but again my time in the departure too I've, I've kind of taken the role um, it was made clear it was a very small part of my job responsibility when I was hired. Hurricane. It was a emergency management coordinator. Uh, so, like I said, I I'll recommend Chief uh, to go ahead and take over that responsibility. He was the deputy emergency manager. So, and he. he was sleep, um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, just just something to uh, again. Uh, but on the on the, the burner, I don't. Uh, uh, there was a time where the state was uh, was kind of rattling their saber that they were going to have some kind of requirement to do spelling. Had that position, I don't think they actually ever got that legislatively passed. But probably not bad to think about either. Words in here. Not a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> not 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 here. Here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then lastly, I had. I, I've given a guard, it's not on, on this, but I've given a guard of a, a capital outlay for a couple of vehicles. But, you know, again, the way the budget, the way I've heard it today, I uh, I could I can probably, the, the two vehicles that we have in the department, the building official, the code enforcement vehicle, uh, we could probably, maybe with some uh, additional, redoing the logos, make them up a little, we could probably start by another year. We, uh, like I said, they're getting a little rough. Uh, and I, I'd actually put it in the capital outlay project, but I, I assume to make it work for another for another year and then lastly uh again although i've been arguing for e-ticket riders code enforcement people for years and years and years police finally bring it forward and they leave us out completely so uh oh. i would like a handheld for consideration for uh, a code enforcement in our department which i didn't include and they didn't include i guess well it's hard for code enforcement to use a handheld <laughs> I don't, the other ones were attached to the MBS. So. Yeah, I just don't see how you'd use a handheld to write a ticket for what y'all do. Okay, well, because if, if you're you're getting the things from NCAD and different things yeah. that you're writing to the property owners. Well, I mean, if we're still part. We get to the point where they're going to be doing parking tickets or, or any other kind of enforcement. Just some guy. Just if, if if there's a benefit, I don't want to be doing something different because. It, we have the same dilemma writing, same all the same arguments as to why that individual kind of apply to there's there's a way to make it work this consideration that we might add another device. Um that's all I got. So this is your last budget meeting. So I set up for the sure. first of the year. <laughs> Any other questions for Rick? Yeah. Okay. Then moving on to item nine, city council comments and items for future consideration. Anybody have any? 
That's right. We put a couple of notes. I mean, he's going to be really long. Yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few things we put on tonight. Okay. All right. Hearing none, we're adjourned. I'd like to say congrats to KO. He's got a big event.